play back in the way. A reminder of the news from the top is won by Somerset who elected to bowl first so the game on the way is joined at 11. We can now bring you both sides confirmed in full, starting with the visitors, Somerset. They are up with Matt Renshaw. See David. Yeah, Lewis Goldberg. Right. 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 Hang on. George Barnes. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. Hey, testing, hey, testing, hey. testing, testing. Uh, you may yeah, have put through three. the wrong ISDN then. Casey Ingram. Then Jack Brooks. Alfie Olsen. Alfie Olsen. Alfie Olsen. Alfie Olsen. Alfie Olsen. And your last of the boxes. They are now with Nick Welch. Richard Patel. Louis Kimber, Captain Lewis Hill, Vian Molder, Aaron Lilly, Harry Swiggles, Tom Swiggles, Roman Walker, Euron Hendricks, and Chris Wright. On the line by the Swiss matcher are Hassan Adan and Phil Mustard. Match referee is Alex Swart. The scorers are Paul Rogers and Polly Rowe. So again on the way at 11 o'clock this morning. It is Sam Seth who won the toss and let's get the ball first. Okay. Can you, can you text me once we know it's live for sure? We're going to have to start shortly. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll text you. I'll text you. Thanks, Adam. Okay, Cheers. Right, and the fan is interrupting people's vision of our beautiful faces. Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. so it's nice to over here somewhere. People want to see. And we're on TikTok. Is that a good thing then? Uh, I have not ever been on TikTok, so possibly not. <laughs> <laughs> We are apparently the very first county to be streamed live on TikTok, which is a big, very big thing. Well, this is a live stream. Absolutely. Listen and watch these days. BBC Radio, Somerset. So it is, it is now, yeah. Is it BBC Radio Leicester? Yes. And are you tweeting today or anything? Do I need to mention it? Yeah, at and give. I don't think much. I'm not I have to do the writing today as well. So. For the uh, ECB reporters, he goes, he goes to the Mercury.
Morning everybody and welcome to the Upton Steel County ground, Grace Road in Leicester. BBC's ball by ball commentary on the Royal London Cup game between Leicestershire and Somerset. Brought to you by BBC Radio's Leicester and Somerset. Richard Ray, myself, Anthony Gibson for BBC Radio Somerset, and I'm really pleased to say we're being joined today by Ned Eckersley. We three will be the voices you hear throughout the day. The noise from the middle tells you that the uh, umpires are heading out, followed by the Somerset players on mass, which also tells you perhaps that Somerset won the toss and chose to bowl first on a green-ish looking pitch hoping to get a bit of movement early i'll quickly give you the leicestershire side it's basically unchanged from the side that lost against sussex at hove on sunday so nick welsh and rishi patel will open the batting louis kimber lewis hill captaining the side vian mulder aaron lily harry swindles tom scriven roman walker bjorn Hendricks, and chris wright anthony good morning and the somerset side uh, the Somerset side, I <laughs> will bring it to you in the merest hint of time. There we are. <laughs> there are two changes from the side that lost to Durham on Wednesday. So Somerset will bat Renshaw, Davies, Goldsworthy, Andrew Umid, Scotsman, making his debut for Somerset in any form of cricket. Uh, George Bartlett at five, James Rue at six, Ben Green, the skipper, at seven, Casey Aldridge at eight, Jack Brooks at nine, uh, Alfie Ogborn at ten, and Ollie Sale comes in for his first game for Somerset for two years, having missed the whole of last season with injury. You know the format by now. We'll be doing half-hourly updates for BBC Radio Leicester's uh, news programmes, but otherwise it will be uninterrupted commentary throughout a glorious day here in Leicester and uh, throughout the country, not a cloud in the sky. And I'm also pleased to say we are going out on something called TikTok, which Anthony knows all about. <laughs> I don't I'm sure. know anything about TikTok. <laughs> but apparently but that's a first. It's a first for me. <laughs> it's a first It's a first for uh, county live streaming. So every, pretty much every platform we are available on. In a two bowl comes Aldridge and bowls and chipped in the air a little bit by Nick Welsh. Didn't really come on to the bat, obviously. It was a little bit of a loosener from Aldridge. Coming in from the pavilion end, Casey Aldridge. Tall young man, big elastic bandage on his uh, on his left arm, not his bowling arm, which he uses to mop his brow after one ball. He'll be sweating. It is hot out there. Just the one slip for Aldridge. The greenness of the pitch may be a little deceptive. Aldridge is in and bowls. Welsh is working it into the leg side. Thinks momentarily about a quick single as he turned the bat face on it but coming in from mid wicket quickly is Bartlett George Bartlett and there's no chance of a single. Not many here yet are there. No it will fill up gradually. We can't see obviously the stands down below us underneath the, the, the sort of little uh, well, pretty much permanent covers it on the members' stands. In goes Aldridge, bowls, nice shape to the delivery on middle and off, leaning forward whilst defends it out into the offside. And there is no run. The two men out, well, it's usually deep square and third man. In fact, it's long leg and third man for Somerset on this occasion. Jack Brooks at mid on, the only man wearing a sun hat. Everybody else wearing their smart Somerset baseball caps. Oh no, I think there's a classic maroon sun hat at slip. In That's goes Aldridge and Bolt, thick inside edge as Welsh comes forward there. A little bit of movement back in, just, just held its own. That's Renshaw with the maroon sun hat. He's the only slip at the moment. The outfield parched, as just about every outfield will be, I would imagine, across not, the country. Not Taunton. It's and fair enough. absolutely glorious, the outfield down at, down at Taunton. And in fairness, Hove was lush as well beautiful carpet but it is uh, rock hard here at the Upton Steel. In goes Aldridge, bowls while she's leaning forward carefully. It's a good start. Aldridge, bang on the money. You got some stick, start. did Aldridge against Durham on Wednesday. His 10 overs went for 70 without taking a wicket. But uh, he has been bowling well. He's, he's, he's got better as the season has worn on, as Casey Aldridge. It looks like a man sort of 
who knows it's going to be hot work. He's not rushing in at the moment. In he goes and bowls. Welsh defends it out into the offside. Good morning, BBC Radio Leicester. The news from the Upton Steel County ground is that Leicester lost the toss and have been put in to bat by Somerset. Somerset have to win this game, really. They've lost their first three, so with only eight games in the competition, they really do need to start winning and winning today. Foxes, one, two out of three, will be looking to regain momentum that they lost at, uh, at Hove against Sussex on Sunday, where they were badly beaten. As I say, they've been put into bat. We've had one over. Nick Welsh played it out without scoring a run. He's opened with Rishi Patel, and Leicestershire after one over are none for none. Jack Brooks coming on from the Bennett end to bowl his first over. Just the one slip again. Matt Renshaw. Jack Brooks who uh, on Wednesday long school card he bowled 9.2 overs, went for 62. He's in now, bowling to Rishi Patel who turns him away through square leg for the first runs of the day. And uh, it's going to be pulled in by young Alfie Ogborn, just a few yards inside the deep square leg boundary, and they come back for three runs. The old headband warrior three. still wearing it there. Yeah, he's just had a, a signed another year's contract. How old is he now? Must be 50, mustn't he? <laughs> he's 30, 37, I think he is. <laughs> That's, which is a good age for a fast bowler. I did have a, a quick word beforehand. I said you'll end up here in the end. <laughs> here he comes again. In and bowls to Welsh. Who lets that go through outside the off stump. He made as if he was going to play at it, but uh, wisely decided against. No, he's 38 now. Is uh, Jack Brooks? He was 38 on June the fourth. So he'll be uh, 39 at this same stage next season, which is, well, Jimmy Anderson, of course, still going strong at, at 40, has set the pattern as this is played down to third man, where George Bartlett does the fielding. And uh, they take another run, four without loss. Just a hint of green about the pitch seen any any signs of seam movement so far they just left a bit on in the hope that they get a bit of carry really yeah. difficult for the groundsman's uh, ground staff these days it's Brooks like these. to Patel outside the off stump no shot well Ben Green when he won the toss was asked um, why he decided to bowl and he said almost exactly what you'd said to me earlier Richard that uh, if there is going to be anything in this pitch for the bowlers it will be in the first half an hour to an hour yeah. or so before the sun gets on it and it'll get flatter as the day wears on Brooks in and bowls and mixture of bat and pad ball trickles out into the onside Ogborn Fields single is taken five without loss just a hint of swing there from uh, Jack Brooks. Should say that the two umpires, Phil Mustard, the Colonel, formerly of Durham and indeed England, and Hassan Adnan. And the match referee is Alex Swan. And it's Brooks coming in past Phil Mustard. And I think about a single into the onside, but uh, Ogborn quickly onto it. End of the second over. Five runs from it. Five without loss. One to uh, Welsh and four to Rishi Patel. Somerset, for those not watching on the stream, sporting a, a sort of predominantly black kit with various purple and white highlights on it, or, or maroon and, and white highlights on it. It's That's fuchsia, it. I think. Oh, it's fuchsia, is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, so more pink than purple, more, exactly. more pink than maroon. Exactly. Uh, Leicestershire in what is becoming known as, uh, or the, the club would like it to be known as Leicestershire Green. It's a very sort of lurid light green as uh, Patel lifts his bat and awaits the arrival of Aldridge and then leans forward on off stump and blocks the line and length of delivery out towards mid-off and there is no run. But uh, in the Royal London Cup, the green interrupted by a, a red ish shirt with green sleeves 
and sort of white and green flashes on it. It's growing on me a little bit. I wasn't too sure at first, but uh, it seems to be quite popular. Aldridge, oh, right hand to bowls, fullish delivery, blocked back past him down the pitch on the onside by Patel. Brooks moves across to his left at straightish mid on fields, and there's no run. You will get value for your shots with this outfield. Anthony, if you uh, beat the will. infield, well, it's, 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 a long it's old chase. pretty fast outfield At the best under any times. circumstances, yeah. isn't it? It is. It is. Aldridge is in and bowls, looking to turn it into the leg side. Suggestion it's come off the pad from the appeal as he turned his wrist on it, and it did come off the pad. Umpire Adnan walks out, but then lifts his right knee, indicating it was a leg by, but looked a little bit high. But they just have straightened back into. Rishi Patel there. He remains on four, but the score moves on to six. Nick Welsh has the single off nine balls, playing himself in. I think Paul Nixon, Leicestershire's head coach, wasn't really impressed with the approach against Sussex of the batters. In goes Aldridge, bowls to Welsh, who is leaning forward and defending solidly. Back down the pitch on the onside, rolls straight out to Brooks, and there's no run. Aldridge bowling well within himself. Yeah. He's uh, tall, six foot five. And uh, his natural length is a sort of Andy Caddick type of length, which means that on a, a firm pitch like this, if it's on a good length, the chances are it will go over the top of the stumps. In goes Aldridge, again looking for the full delivery. It's played down hard into the ground, and then he, le he jumps forward and or throws himself forward, gets his hands underneath it. The implication being it might have actually bounced before it hit bat and then looped up, but uh, absolutely no reaction from Wells, or more importantly, the umpire indicating it was indeed a bump ball. Good piece of fielding there. You never know. Up the slope goes Aldridge Bowl, slightly short Welsh up on his toes and deflects it neatly away through gully down towards third man comes in and throws low to the keeper. Single taken off the last ball means Welsh will keep the strike. But yeah, just to finish the point I was making about the Sussex game was that they didn't change the, uh, their approach from the first two games, the Leicestershire's batters, when the ball was moving around a little bit. They didn't play themselves in. They went for the shot straight away and as a consequence managed to get themselves bowled out for not very much at all, 120 or so. Well, it's interesting the, the in those circumstances. Interesting the different approaches that teams take to 50 over cricket, isn't it? Some teams treat it as a sort of extension of, of 20 over cricket and go really hard from the start. And Leicestershire here today just building a platform, as Durham did on uh, on Wednesday and ended up making 340. Brooks is in and bowls, and Welsh defends out into the uh, offside. Teams should surely be good enough or wise enough to adapt the approach according to the conditions, really. And had Leicestershire done that at Sussex, then they could have made a game of it, but it was pretty much all over after the first hour and a half. I think a lot depends on the personnel as well, doesn't it? I mean, if you look at the, you know, the England top six, it's Brooks Bowles to uh, Welsh, who turns that into the onside, and there won't be a run. All natural stroke makers and quite quite happy going hard right from right from the start. Whereas uh, if you look at, well, I suppose Somerset's top order, you've got um, Matt Renshaw. He likes to go hard at the top. Steve Davis, if he gets half a chance, if he lasts long enough, as uh, Brooks bowls and plays and misses this time to Snick Welsh. And um, I guess Andrew Umid is going to. Well, Lewis Goldsworthy is a conventional sort of batsman. Andrew Mead has one of the slowest ever centuries to his uh, to his credit for, for Warwickshire and is thought of as a bit of a stodgy batsman but we will see Brooks from the Bennett end in and bowls and good ball which is angled into the right-handed Nick Welsh who is 24 comes from uh, was born in Harare did he, has he come over recently, Richard? Or? No, he's got Loughborough connections, essentially, so he's been uh, at Loughborough. But he's been around Leicestershire's first team squad for three years now, Nick, one way or another. He's been really unlucky with injuries. 
as Brooks in and bowls to him and again he slightly uh, hurried into a defensive shot he gets a, a friendly word from uh, Jack Brooks Nick Welsh scored 127 not out he did. when uh, Leicester should beat Surrey on a ground with which he's pretty familiar because he plays his club cricket down there at Wimbledon and, um, so he would played at Guildford a couple of weeks previously and played there several times so it was a, a comfortable place for him Brooks bowls and there'll be a s just the one run here as Ogball has to move to his right at uh, mid-wicket it's the end of the fourth over so a steady start from uh, Leicestershire eight without loss three to Welsh and four to Vettel the other run being a leg by it's a nice ground at uh, Guildford isn't it it is but Quite busy by the main road there. Could do with a sort of hedge or something along there, I always think. But were you up good, on the roof pitch. of the pavilion? We were, yes. Uh, 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 not under cover, no seats. <laughs> We're standing on the Mark, on the, on Mark the new Church pavilion. Always says it's like being on the bridge of bridge of a sh of an ocean liner. <laughs> but it was a brilliant view, uh, uh, essentially. Yes. But, uh, yeah, and no, I enjoyed it. It was. Uh, fun at Radlett as well yeah. but I didn't know Radlett Aldridge is ready to go and it looked as though uh, well she took that single off the last ball was ready but umpire Adnan turned and uh, Aldridge chokes off his uh, run up halfway through and turns and tosses the ball from hand to hand heads back to his mark now everybody's ready so he wanders in and bowls and it's full to Welsh. Looks to be going down the leg side to me as he looked to whip it away in the leg side. Aldridge was convinced and raises his eyes to the heavens as umpire Adnan shakes his head. Leg side-ish. Well, it looked a pretty good shout to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, from the shot that, that, that was played... So we just watch it again. Oh, I think. Well, I think that was pretty, pretty plum. Well, well, we shall have to have a right look up, on wasn't the. Um, it? Oh yeah, it wasn't going over. That, that, that's for sure. But um, we'd have to have a look at the uh, replay. In goes Aldridge and bowls a length delivery that, well, it's a little uncomfortably works back down the pitch defensively on the on side. It must have been the umpire must have thought it was going down. That was the, uh, and very possibly it was. We're not directly. Uh, no, I was going to say we're we're at long off uh, when the bowling is from the pavilion end, sort of fine leg when it's from the Bennett end. Aldridge turns, runs in and bowls full, driven hard by Welsh, but good stop at Gully and there's confusion. He's sent back by Patel, and the throw comes in. He'd probably scramble back into his ground, but never. Well, it wasn't really a misfield. It was a good stop at Gully by somebody who's very short. Oh, <laughs> but I can't uh, quite Lewis, see. Lewis from Goldsworthy. Here. Is it that Mr. Goldsworthy? Yeah. Forty-four. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he's only five foot six. Getting a chance to have a look at the replay now. Yeah, in goes Aldridge again, clipped away off his toes by Welsh down towards wide long leg. Thinks about a second, but Brooks gets to the ball fairly quickly, and it is just one. Yeah, might have gone on to hit leg stump, but there was probably just enough doubt. Well, there clearly was just there enough doubt was. in, in yeah, 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 umpire yeah, Adnan's yeah, mind yeah, anyway to, uh, um, to to shake his umpire's head. call, as they say. Yeah. Aldridge, elbows jutting, runs in and bowls line and length delivery. He's been pretty much on the money throughout Casey Aldridge and it's defended out into the offside by Rishi Patel. So a very steady, for want of a better word, start by the Foxes. Nine without loss after 4.5 overs. I think very much the emphasis would have been to the openers just, just to sort of get through the first few overs and see if it is moving around as Aldridge bowls again very straight and you heard the call of no from Patel as he blocked it out into the offside off middle and off and uh, there is no run good over from Casey Aldridge which is a very good shout in it he's conceded just the two runs from his three overs to date yeah Leicestershire are the the walking foxes so far they haven't quite broken into a trot <laughs> They'll soon be the, tr it, the, trotting, the, tr me, the tr yes. trotting foxes, <laughs> and then probably by about half past twelve they'll be up and running as the running foxes. They won't start chuntering about <laughs> wyverns and dragons yet. 
is Jack Brooks in and bowls and thinks he's got his man, but uh, I didn't see any deviation. Jack Brooks coming down the pitch in celebration, not even looking round to the umpire. So convinced was he that uh, Nick Welsh had got an edge. I think he missed it by quite a long way. Yes, it really I did, did it loads. It didn't though. bounced and left him. There must have been some sort of a noise, I think. But yeah, I mean, it was a terrific delivery. But I think that was it was just the uh, the, the swing and the the bounce that he got from hitting this hitting the seam. He's uh, just having a having a word or two with Nick Welsh as this is outside the off stump and through to Stephen Davis and given as a wide by uh, umpire Phil Mustard. First wide of the day, nine without loss. I've had a tweet from Dari who says, can I tweet a link to the radio commentary? I can hear you via YouTube, but can't find the radio link on the BBC website. Well, that may be because we're having, we've been having some technical problems. I am told it's up and running. It is up and running, is it? I'll just I'll have a check at the end of this over. That's turned into the onside and uh, there won't be a run as it's fielded by Alfie Ogborn. Not a cloud in the sky here at uh, the Upton Steel County Ground at Grace Road in Leicester. There's a gentle breeze, thankfully. Yes, it's going to be murderously hot later on. Brooks bowls and Welsh defends. This is good bowling from the two Somerset opening bowlers. They've not been offering anything loose to the Leicestershire batsmen who've been content to keep out the good balls and they mostly have been good balls just pick up a single here and there there was that three early on from Rishi Patel we yet to have yet to uh, see a boundary Brooks bowls and this is pushed into the offside by Welsh there is a bit in the pitch isn't there but uh, perhaps not quite as much as Somerset would have hoped for but a wicket or two in the power play makes such a difference and Leicester basically grafting through it at the moment. Hard to say what's going to be a decent score yet. How quickly what will the pitch flatten? I'll ask you that after this delivery from Brooks to Welsh. He's driven that in the air and he's dropped. Dropped by the skipper of all people, Ben Green, at mid-off. It went low to him but straight to him and it's the sort of catch that he would expect to take 95 times out of 100 and uh, Jack Brooks gives his skipper a consoling pat on the shoulder but oh dear it's just not what you want as a captain here's Brooks in and bowls to Welsh who flashes this away for the first boundary of the morning that was short and wide from Jack Brooks it was in the air, but uh, flying through where Gully would have been had there been a Gully. And uh, four runs go on the board. 14 without loss. Eight to uh, Nick Welsh and four to Rishi Patel. Isn't it always the way Brooks had earned that uh, chance, really, with the accuracy of his bowling and the questions he'd been asking? And there was an element of frustration with that lofted drive from Welsh and as you say I thought from I wasn't sure for a minute it was going to carry but it did fairly comfortably in the end and Green seemed to maybe misread it slightly hard to tell Aldridge in from the pavilion end bowls to Patel who's using his feet to get down the pitch negate a little bit of the swing blocks it nonetheless out towards point Goldsworthy moves across and fields it's gone a little bit straighter towards point he was a little bit wider towards sort of short third gully he's pretty much on the edge of the circle now Goldsworthy saving one two men out still long leg and third man as Aldridge very tall runs in and bowls edge caught went for the drive Patel thick edge straight into the midriff of uh, first slip Renshaw took the catch no problem at all so uh, reward earned by the Somerset opening bowlers, but it's Aldridge who gets it rather than Brooks. Patel goes, caught it slip for four, Leicestershire 14 for one. Yeah, nice delivery and just just swinging away 
from the right-hander. It was in the arc for an off-drive, but uh, Rishi Patel not quite at the pitch of the ball, took the outside edge, and a, as comfortable a catch as first-slip catches ever are for Matt Renshaw, in fact, is, is standing more at a sort of one-and-a-half slip. Yeah, there's always a risk in that, isn't there, in case it goes between, but as you say... He's Almost deserved that wicket. To him. Yeah. yeah, he's deserved that wicket. He's bowled really well, I think, Casey Aldridge. Bowling well within himself, concentrating on line and length. I think both the open bowlers have. And uh, as implied, they probably deserve something from these opening over. 6.2 overs bowled so far. 14 for 1 Leicestershire. Louis Kimber, an outstanding young talent. Wonders to the wicket. <laughs> His demeanour. He's a very relaxed young man, and uh, under all circumstances, laid back. It's a description that might have been made for him. Nothing much seems to phase him. He will go for his shots. Whether it's the sort of pitch that he can do that straight away remains to be seen. And I'm sure Nick Welsh will have given him a little word of advice or two. Welsh, 8 off 28 balls, 14 for 1 off 6.2. Kimber takes guard from umpire Adnan, looks to be middle. 68 he made at Middlesex, best score in list day for Kimber, who waits with back raise as Aldridge is in, bowls to him, no great stride forward, just waits for the delivery, leans forward and blocks it out towards Brooks at mid-on, and there's no run. You've got two brothers who play cricket as well. Mm -hmm. Louis he has. Kimber. Nick and Kimber. When we played Surrey, Nick was playing, and guess who caught Louis? <laughs> it was indeed his brother. Oh Nick caught him out off a skyer. The family were there watching, <laughs> mum and dad. In goes Aldridge and bowls outside off stump, leans into the firm push rather than drive out into the offside. Kimber but times it nicely. Good work moving across uh, from point by oh. James Root. When Surrey played Somerset down at Taunton, Jamie Overton felt he had a point to make and he laid out his twin brother. <laughs> we all heard, everybody <laughs> heard about that. A concussion, a so <laughs> it had to be, uh, he had to be subbed. Goodness me. That was an interesting conversation afterwards. In goes Aldridge and bowls. Kimber's looking to work a foolish delivery into the leg side. Doesn't get anything on it. Bounces back off the pads and Aldridge himself feels in his follow through. Jamie just said, well, it's his own fault. He didn't play it very well. <laughs> well, the Kimbers generally felt that uh, Nick had to take the catch. It was a bit of a, a sitter. And... Uh, Mr. Kimber Senior said he would have been disappointed had, had Nick had dropped it. In goes Aldridge outside off stump. Kimber goes for the drive and misses it by a lot. He went for the drive. I'm just wondering whether he did a sort of Mark Cosgrove sort of, wasn't really driving at the ball. He was yeah. practicing the shot rather. And uh, he missed it by such a long way. And indeed it was signaled wide by umpire Adnan. Philip Newman Hall says uh, not many people here compared to the fans at home in Taunton. That's certainly true. Probably two and a half, three thousand at Taunton on Wednesday. Aldridge is in driving in the air, but a good diving stop in the covers away to his right on the bounce. That was Means Andy Umid in the game for the first time. Kimber doesn't pick up a run, and Mr. Umid gets lots of pats on the back, and rightly so. Good work by him. End of the over, 15 for one. First successful over in terms of wickets falling in the game. Aldridge one for three from four overs. So at the moment, things are going rather better for him than they did last time out. Indeed. Yes, he's bowled well. Yes, there aren't uh, very many people here. I talked to one of the um, gate stewards on my way around the ground this morning and he said they were expecting about 500. So... Probably a few more than that, as I say, given that we can't see all the members. Brooks in and bowls to Welsh. Plays that to mid-wicket, where Alfie Ogbourne is waiting for it. And, uh, yes. Philip Newman-Hall is with at least a dozen Somerset supporters, including 
tractor driver who's here somewhere. We'll no doubt hear him later on. His stentorian tones will ring out across the outfield as this is played into the offside. And Umid again quickly across to do the fielding from extra cover. Fifteen for one. I assume that's a nickname of some kind. Is it always tractor, tractor driver? driver? Yep, yep. No, he's not a tractor. Uh, at least I don't think he is. Um, no. Somerset's most famous supporter. This is driven back to Brooks, who shies at the stumps, but Welsh hasn't moved and uh, hits at Welsh on the pads, in fact, and bounces out into the onside. But at the end of all that excitement, nothing is done. Now, when that happened in the Bob Willis Trophy, when Dieter Klein hit uh, Danny Lamb of Lancashire, we got a level one for that. Did you? <laughs> when he was hit him, on, hit him on the ankle. Anyway. Brooks to Welsh, who drives this to Umid, who doesn't field it cleanly. It bounced in front of him. Awkward bounce. And it ricochets away towards mid-off, and they take the single 16 for one I'm not for a minute saying that Jack Brooks or Somerset should get one there I'm just saying it no I mean it was, fair, the, uh, it was fair enough I think it, the fact that it came back so quickly to him and he took it cleanly he might have he would be justified in thinking that the batsman might have strayed out of his ground although I don't think he did but it's a sort of reflex with fast bowlers isn't it Jack Brooks Telling his long leg to come in a few feet. Yeah. He's in bowling to Kimba, who fences at that outside the off stump. Through to Steve Davis, still the slip in place. I should add that there's a third Kimba brother who plays for Lincolnshire. Yeah. So there's a, there's three of them. James. Mm -hmm. We're in the eighth over. So slow progress from the Foxes. Brooks is in and bowls, brings this one back into uh, Kimber a little bit quicker as well. Nice piece of bowling. End of the eighth over, it's 16 for one, nine to Welsh and Kimber yet to score. Nick Welsh, nine from 32. Almost up Very circumspect. Time. Indeed. There's a little bit there, though, for, for Jack Brooks and Casey Aldridge, and they've uh, bowled really well. I think they've adapted their bowling a little bit accordingly. Here comes an update for BBC Radio Leicester, and then once we've done that, we'll be, uh, we'll be swapping around in the commentary box, and we'll get to Ned on commentary for the first time. But you wouldn't make a change at the moment, that's for sure. If uh, you were Ben Green, his opening bowlers bowling really nicely. Aldridge comes in and bowls full goes for the drive he's caught behind is he yes he is they have lost their second wicket and unfortunately the foxes as you come to me on bbc radio lesser have just lost their second wicket nick welsh having rather uh, ground his way through to nine <laughs> off 33 balls went for a big drive and an outswinger from kc aldridge edged a catch behind taken by stephen davis welsh goes for nine, that leaves the Foxes on 16 for two. Rishi Patel in the previous over, over from Aldridge having gone in much the same way except that he was caught at first slip. So they're in a bit of trouble here at the Upton Steel County Ground. Leicestershire are 16 for two. And the most relieved man out on that field at the moment is Ben Green, <laughs> having, having put Nick Welsh down a couple of overs ago. It was a miss that has not proved costly. Very similar dismissal to the Patel one. Again, as Richard was saying, it was an out outswinger, quite wide of off, off stump, but inviting the drive. And Welsh went for it and uh, beaten by that late swing from Casey Aldridge. Got to be careful now, the Foxes. 16 for two, not an ideal start. And Auntie, I'm going to leave you uh, for the first time today with Ned Eckersley. Thanks, Richard. That's Richard Ray from uh, BBC Radio Leicester, who will be back with us in around about half an hour's time. Lewis Hill making his way to the middle. And 
and uh, Ned Eckersley making his way to the microphone. Good morning, Ned. Good morning. Good to be here on a lovely sunny day back at Grace Road, Upton Steel Ground, should I say. And Leicester in a spot of bother, but with their inform captain, Lewis Hill at the crease. They'll be looking for him to, to make a quick recovery. Do you want to finish off Richards Absolutely. over? Casey Aldridge is, is bowled really well. Nice and straight, nice and full. And he comes up one more time past the umpire and into Lewis Hill, back of a length, who knocks the ball into the offside with a loud call of no, <laughs> asserting himself early. <laughs> I don't think Lu Lu Louis Kimber had any intention of running there whatsoever. He only went about five yards out into the offside. Yes, I was going to say Richard did mention Louis Kimber's demeanour, but it's something I yeah I look at and it's it's fantastic. He just swaggers to the wicket, twiddles with his bat as Aldridge comes in once more and back of a length once more to Hill and he wants a quick single but is turned back by Kimber as he kicks the dust with the footmarks. Aldridge will be looking to to finish this over off. Pitch is, has almost changed colour already, hasn't it? Even in we've only been going for just over half an hour, and it's it's already losing that uh, green tinge. It certainly has. It's Aldrich. Chibi grip on comes in once more, and the ball is let go by Lewis Hill outside the off stump. Yeah, it looks a little slow from first glance. Anything full of a length, there's been no cover drives that's managed to to pierce the field, and anything back of a length and straight has been would have dropped into the offside but that's credit to Somerset and the opening bowlers who've recognised that and and not let the Leicester batters get away especially Nick Welsh they bowled they bowled superbly as Aldridge wearing number five in again once more full of a length and it's nicked and caught at first slip again by Matthew Renshaw as the Foxes lose another 16 for three and it's Captain Hill who's got to go without scoring not a good start for Leicestershire Foxes and three almost identical dismissals, you know, with Aldridge serving up outswingers just outside the off stump, batsman going for the big off drive and nicking off two to first slip and, and one to, to the keeper. And it wasn't a, a very well-judged shot, that, in all honesty, from, from Lewis Hill this, this early in, in the innings. And uh, good catch from Renshaw. It was the most difficult of the, of the three. Went quite fast and high to his right but sort of catch that uh, he would expect to take yes it was it's been it's been good bowling keeping it still pitching it up at the right times and good length balls that Leicestershire Foxes batsmen have, have tried to force away they know that they've they've lacked rhythm the scoreboard hasn't gone anywhere so they're probably looking for for that boundary to get them going so to keep the, the bravery to keep pitching the ball up keeping your slip in, nice aggressive bowling and just just what they deserve for their first 40, 40 minutes of work. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been very good and uh, Jack Brooks has bowled well from the other end without the rewards but uh, Casey Aldridge has three for three in one ball short of five overs, which is quite a performance. It's been a great start after you said last last game against Durham wasn't his his finest game so to come back and start in this fashion is is a real credit to him but it brings Vian Mulder to the wicket for Leicestershire and he has been in some good form in not only the county championship but the start of this competition and boy do they need him now they certainly do two slips in now as Aldridge bowls the last ball of his fifth over. He's up past by Adnan and pitches up outside the off stump, but Mulder is not tempted into a drive outside the off stump as he lets it go through to wicketkeeper Davies. Two slips that they were in for that last delivery from uh, Casey Aldridge, who gets a, gets a round of applause from the uh, Somerset supporters who are here, not in large numbers, but uh, good to see them making the effort to come all the way up from Somerset. Now, you know this ground very well. What, what would you say was a, a par score here today? I think they're traditionally very good one-day pitches at the Upton Steel ground. And modern one-day cricket, you're looking at 300 every time you, you stride to the wicket as an opening pair and as a team. But it looks a little slow, so maybe you could take a few off that today. And especially with this start, I think 
they'll be looking to get somewhere in the region of 250 now to, to give themselves a chance. But um, you never know, it might quicken up and, and the partnership changes everything. Brooks is in and bowls, he's turned away through the onside without timing. And Ollie Sale is in the game for the first time, puts in the slide across this parched outfield. They come back for two runs, 18 for three. And that is uh, who are the runs. I th they've got Mulder as being on yeah, well, strike. Changed it just at the right I time. Think, I it think was it was. It was I was, was going to say. I thought it was Kimber. Brooks in bowls to Kimber, who won't get a run this time as uh, James Rue comes sprinting in. James Rue, who was. Uh, Selected for the squad for England Lions against uh, South Africa earlier on this week. Very promising young wicketkeeper batsman. He's it's been a, a good start from Somerset, seeing that they've lost their first three games and they've come in needing a win with a young team. Yeah. Brooks is in and bowls, and this is turned up to uh, Ollie Sale. Timed that nicely, and Sale got everything behind it so that if he did get a bad bounce, and it wasn't a particularly good bounce, then it would uh, go into his body and not concede a run. Spectators in the shade in front of the uh, sports centre at the far end of the ground as Brooks is in and bowls, and this is driven at uh, Umid, quickly across at uh, extra cover. That's where they've been so good, that, that delivery pitching the ball up, realising that hitting through the line of the ball has been difficult. Just really squeezing Leicester, and it's been it's been a very tough start for all, all the batsmen that have come to the wicket so far. Nobody can, can get the ball away, find any rhythm. Well, we're in the, uh, the last over of the first stage, as, again, Brooks cramping Kimber for room, bringing that one back from outside the... Off stump. Just one ball remaining in the first 10 over power play. And 18 for three is not much of a return in the power play. The next interesting part of the game will be whether Captain Green gives these two some more overs than maybe he was planning on. Brooks bowls. Kimber plays this up to mid on. And that is the end of the 10th over. So 10 overs have gone, the first 10 over power play, so Somerset can uh, put a couple of extra fielders out in the deep. And uh, Leicestershire have crept to 18 for three in those uh, 10 overs, with uh, Jack Brooks conceding just four runs. Matthew Renshaw is getting some treatment, runs. looks like he has a bleeding nose, maybe from the celebrations from the third wicket, conked one on the nose there. He Could have been. Stuffs a little piece of cotton. He's one of one of cricket's great extroverts, is Matthew Renshaw. <laughs> <laughs> He's never still. Two good catches this morning at yeah. slip. Safe hands behind the stumps. As Aldridge will carry on for his six over in to overseas back to Mulder. It's full of a length and Yorker and squeezed into the leg side who will push for two. He touches and will come back comfortably as the ball is returned. And Mulder is underway. 20 for three. No change to the field, which signals how on top Somerset have been this morning. Two slips and a ring field. Putting Leicestershire under pressure. Any edges have been snaffled as Aldridge comes in tall and bowls and it's punched to mid-off. Captain Green for no run. Have you played against Somerset recently? I haven't played against Somerset for a long time. I yeah. think I only ever played one game of my career against Somerset in a 40-over game. It's the only team I have never played a championship game against in yeah. my career. So I haven't seen too much of Somerset, which will be good for them. <laughs> it means they've been doing well as Aldridge comes in tall and outside the off stump it's let go by Mulder, who just uses his feet trying to put the bowler off his length, but well adjusted. Yeah, longest survivors in the uh, first division came up in uh, 2008, having won the second division championship in 2007. Yeah, but they're been... in some peril this season. 
Of course, we don't know what the format for the championship is going to be next year. There might not be two divisions. We might have three conferences. Aldrich up past the stumps and bowls outside the off stump and it's defended back down the wicket as he picks up and flicks the ball nonchalantly to mid wicket. What would you like to see for the county championship next year? I did like the three divisions. I think they have to find a way to reduce the number of games. I think it will give everybody a chance to, to up the standard. More rest, more practice, better pitches consistently throughout the year as Aldridge comes in and bowls to Mulder who blocks to the off onside and takes a quick single to <coughs> Jack Brooks who didn't look too keen to try and stop a quick single as he shines the ball on his pants in his wide brim county floppy hat. Yeah, I I, the, one of the advantages of, of the three conferences is that each each county will play the other counties, the other five counties in their group, home and away, rather than what you've got in the first division at the moment, where you play some some sides twice and others only once. Aldrich to finish his sixth over, and he bowls a Yorker to Kimbo, turned it away, just got there on the full toss to deep square leg for his first four of the morning, taking him on to six, and Leicestershire to 25 for three. So you could have so you, uh, ten games, ten four-day games, each county playing the other uh, home and away, and then some play playoffs at the uh, you know um, semi-final and final, if you like, between the winners and runners-up of the um, of the two top groups to decide the county champions. So yeah, you totally so agree. you get twelve four-day games. I totally agree. I think it works in in other countries. I think ten. League matches plus a couple of yeah finals knockout games is the perfect amount and it just gives us space in the season to yeah to, like I say to rest and practice more and which everybody's been calling for you know people are now stopping playing in different formats of the game so it, it's going to change and hopefully they get it right exactly i mean I, I know there are a lot of people listening who say we don't want any reduction in county championship cricket at all and i absolutely sympathize with with that but the reality is that they've got to find some more room in the uh, fixture list as green is in this is tucked away by Mulder into the onside they're going to come back for a second run as uh, casey aldridge picks the ball up and uh, returns in one movement, 27 for three, and the run's just starting to come for for Leicestershire. I totally agree. I understand reduction of games from a playing side. There's got to be a compromise for for those who you know the members who who keep the game going, and that's got to be through quality of cricket, including England players coming and playing. Green is in and bowls a full length, and Mulder goes for a big shot and it comes off the bottom of his bat Somerset still keeping the uh, slip in we've got two of the, two of the men out, we've got uh, long leg third man I think that's it I think that's it, so they uh, this is driven but it's fielded at uh, mid off by Ollie Sale not cleanly, but uh, effectively enough to deter the single. I do think it's ridiculous that they're not they're not going to announce the format for next season until you know the end of September. Yeah. So, you so don't know what you're fighting. You don't for. know what you're yeah. fighting for exactly. This is full of length again from uh, Ben Green. They're pitching the ball right up. Uh, Somerset trying to encourage the Leicestershire batters to have a drive and uh, on three occasions they've had a drive and they've nicked off to slip or wicket keeper there'll be a big push now for for Mulder's wicket I think if Somerset know they can get him in the in the early stages of his innings it'll be a big dent green bowls and Mulder defends he's uh, got a fantastic average it was he averaging over 200 i think so far so far this uh, this season in the yeah, in the one day cup 116 and a 71 so far yeah. plus a couple of hundreds in the in the double hundred in the in the championship in the championship it's, yeah yeah he's he's obviously seeing the ball nicely green bowls to him and that runs off 
open face out into the offside. Lewis Goldsworthy will do the fielding, so not a bad over that from uh, Ben Green. 27 for three at the end of the 12th. Five to Vian Mulder and six to Louis Kimber. Looks like there's going to be a change at the pavilion and also as Alfie Ogborn wearing number three, left arm seam bowler is getting ready to join the attack. Double change from Somerset and their skipper Green. Yep, Alfie Ogborn is 19. Comes from, was born in Yeovil in South Somerset. Plays his cricket for North Perrot, which is almost into Dorset in South Somerset. Lovely ground in uh, where Somerset seconds play quite a few games of cricket. And uh, Alfie Ogborn bowled on uh, Wednesday against Durham and bowled pretty well. Find a scorecard. What did he bowl? Four overs for 21. It's a good time for him to come in into the attack as he runs up past and bowls his first left arm full of a length and driven lovely shot from Louis Kimber through the offside. Past the diving extra cover and it careers away really on this very dry barren outfield for four more runs. First shot of the day, which has seen real timing. Yeah, that was, that was almost accelerating away from Ben Green as, <laughs> as it went down towards the boundary. Yeah, if, it beats, if it beats the inner ring, unless the fielder in the, in the deep is within, I don't know, 20, 25 yards of it. That's why it's crucial, Les, to get a partnership here. You know, if the pitch quickens up in the outfield, it's going to be tough to defend later in the game as Ogborn, looking to reply, comes in and bowls a bit shorter and it is left outside the off stump by Kimber. Yeah, I like to see uh, left arm seam seamers bowling over the wicket to right handers, angling it across the right hander and, and just bringing the odd one back in if they can, getting it to Perhaps just hold an its angle, own. something yep. different. If you keep a slip in, again, that, that loose drive they'll be looking for for Maybe a hat-trick of catches for Renshaw at Slip, who's still standing there as Ogborn comes in left arm and back of a length that is defended into the offside and a quick single, very good running between the wickets. Fiat Mulder has been on that as soon as he's arrived at the crease just to get things ticking and you can see the difference in, in the partnership already. Well, he's, got, he's played 10 test matches for uh, South Africa. Mulder, 12 one-day internationals as well. How long has he been here at Leicester? Is it just this season? I think he was due to be there overseas last year, I think, and he couldn't make it and they got him this year. It's been a good signing. He started a bit slowly as you get used to the conditions, but Aldridge comes into Mulder and it's full of a length and he drives out to the offside to the sweeper out on the boundary. Casey Aldridge there as he throws it back on the bounce. Yeah, I think you see with a lot of overseas pros, they it's a very different conditions, very different style of cricket. Especially in April. <laughs> if they get used to it. If they're here the whole season and you have an overseas that's here the whole year. April at Chester the Street. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's an eye-opener for a few. But they've been good this year, so there might be a few more batters lining up to come to Durham. You never know. As wearing number three, Ogborn comes in to Kimber. Triggers across and drives again, and they go up for court behind. Big appeal, everybody is surrounding, but the umpire says nothing doing as he walks down the wicket to maybe warn Ogborn to get off the pitch, but that was a strong appeal. Another drive. Yeah, I didn't. Again, it didn't, didn't have me jumping out of my seat. No, it would have been a very... I, did, I thought from Stephen Davis's reaction, um, rather sort of gave it, gave it away. I mean, he joined in the appeal. But he didn't really it. instigate yes, it. <laughs> yes. Not that he ever gives too much away behind the stumps, I don't think. But a good start, a good comeback after going for four first ball from Ogborn as he looks to finish this over as he comes in and bowls short of a length and Kimber knocks him into the offside for a single. Leicestershire rotating the strike well. Seven off that over. Can that kick start the Foxes into a bit more positivity? Yeah, the first season that the BBC started uh, broadcasting county championship matches, my, my first game, this was 2013, my first game was at uh, Chester District, 
And when I drove into the the ground that morning, the temperature in the car thermometer was three degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Warm then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was viscidly cold. But uh, and it, in fact, it was pretty. It was pretty cold. The first game this season was down at the Aegeus Bowl, and that was that was blooming cold. Yeah, as we well. were we were snowed off for a couple of sessions <laughs> in Cardiff. <laughs> But the, uh, you know, by and large, the weather in April has been pretty good for for cricket. Here's green in and bowls. This is driven, but cut off at uh, mid off by Ollie Sale. Louis Kimber on 12. Vian Mulder on 6. 34 for 3 in the 14th over. Just get a feeling that one of these two might, might want to go aerial. You can feel the. Feel the pressure just building again. Green bowls and uh, Kimber drives and they'll pick up a single as Sale has to make ground to his left. Just looking around the field to see what we got. And uh, still, I think, just the two men out, uh, long leg and third man. Surprised they haven't got either a deep mid wicket or oh we have now here we are James Rue is going back to sweep on the uh, on the cover boundary I think that's that's sensible green to Mulder and that's through to uh, Stephen Davis still the uh, slip in which suggests that the pitch is still doing a bit I like this field from from Somerset. You know, it's still tempting the batters to to hit the ball through the offside for fours. You know, whether they want to take the aerial option, keeping the slip in. You know, in the batter's mind, they'll be thinking we need to put some pressure back on the bowler. Let's see who who comes out on top. Green to Mulder, who's punching that into the offside, but it'll just be a single as uh, Rue is out sweeping front of the yellow seats away on that side of the ground not many people sitting in the yellow seats because that's in the full glare of the of the sun yeah, spectators are concentrated in those parts of the ground where there is a little bit of shade also in those yellow seats there tends to be a fan with a vuvuzela oh right so i think yeah. a lot of people avoid that every game to be honest he's green in and bowls and this is played back to him by uh, by kimber Yes, I thought I, th I thought I heard something unusual earlier on. <laughs> yep, he comes to, to as many games as possible. I think he loves the football and the cricket. Uh, there's a group of them down there, and you'll probably hear them a bit later on, <laughs> as you can imagine. But yeah, he's got his vuvuzela and making a racket. Yeah. We've got one or two Somerset supporters here who can make quite a racket as well, with or without a vuvuzela. <laughs> <laughs> as this is comes off a thick edge down to. Uh, Long leg for a single. 37 for three at the end of the 14th over. Now, for Somerset listeners, tell, tell us a little bit about uh, about yourself and your own career. You started with Leicestershire? Yep. Started with Leicestershire in 2011 and played at the end of that season. I was on trial for, for the whole season playing second team stuff and played the final four or five games in the championship of 2011. And then had a, a really great eight years here. And then Durham. And then Durham. So I left Leicester in 2018 and joined Durham 2019. And spent four years up, up in the northeast, which has been was fantastic. Um, really enjoyed it up there. Very different part of the world. Um, very friendly. As Ogborn, left arm, comes into Kimber and Bowles. He's blocked into the offside and it's swept up by a field of route. And you played a lot of first-class cricket. Yeah. And um, keeping wicket at Durham? Kept wicket at Durham, kept wicket here at bits and pieces. Um, floated up and down the batting order, as you will, over a, a career. But it was such a great place to play cricket here. You know, great history. Good pitches for, for batters. So you had Paul Nixon as your skipper? Very early on in my career, yeah. I played with Nico, yes. And then he came back to coach as past umpire now and comes Ogborn and he bowls outside the off stump and it beats Kimber. Looked like it just left him off the pitch there. Good bowling from the young left arm seamer. Yeah, Nick, Paul Nixon started my career playing with me and then 
I was he was the coach when in my final year here. He must he must have been quite an inspiring figure to be either captain or coach. He was, and he just to have such longevity is is an inspiration. You know, the way he looked after himself, the way he thought about the game. You know, his, his enthusiasm is like no one else I've ever seen. It's Ogborn balls full of a length and driven into the leg side. Kimber not timing that sweetly as has happened all morning. That's Ned Eckersley for listeners in Somerset. He'll be sharing the commentary with us today on BBC Radio Somerset, BBC Radio Leicestershire and uh, on the live stream, which is also being live streamed on TikTok. TikTok, so. yes. <laughs> Maybe not, you have I'm to do a dance later for the TikTok <laughs> fans out there. I'm told that's what you do. As Ogborn comes in once more to Kimber and he bowls another dot ball full of a length. It's really, really top bowling this morning from Somerset. Young bowlers getting it right, putting pressure on the batsman. Very impressive stuff so far. So have you, have you left Durham now then? Yes, I uh, left a few weeks ago. Um, it wasn't to be for, for this year and next, so um, at the moment just hoping to, to maybe pick up something for next year, but we'll, we'll see what happens. And Trying to keep busy in the meantime and yeah, yeah. Get, get around to watch some cricket in the sunshine as Ogborn comes in. And he's nicked him again, but this time there is no slip. They have taken him out. It's good fielding down at third man to keep them to a single, but had Matt Renshaw been in his position he's yeah. been in for the last... 12 or 13 overs, maybe that would have been wicket number four. Yep, absolutely right. That was Andy Umi down there. And that was a very good piece of fielding because it's lightning fast, this uh, outfield. And that ball fairly flew off the outside edge. Definitely didn't deserve to go for four, and that was well supported in the field. Down at third man, it's Ogborn, he's got into his rhythm in the last couple of overs, bowls. And Mulder down the wicket is beaten with a bit of bounce through to Keeper Davies. Great set of bowling from youngster Ogborn. Things still happening for Somerset as Leicestershire move to 39 for three. And I'll make way for Richard Ray. Leicestershire trying to build a partnership as Richard Ray comes back into the hot seat. Thank you, gents. Did I hear you use the word set then, Ned Eckersley, instead of over? <laughs> I believe I might have done. <laughs> I can head, uh, sort it out with headphones and things as we're basically swapping places around. As in from the Bennett end comes Green Bowls outside of stump, driven by Kimber, got on top of the bounce, punched it away out to the sweeper on the offside boundary in the desert over there that the Outfield looks like at the moment, picks up a single, moves on to 16, 39 for three. Green is in and bowls. Mulder is forward this time, pushing into the gap, looks up and oh, that throw came in and hit the back of the bat of Vian Mulder. I thought for a minute it had thumped into his leg as he uh, scampered up to the non-striker's end, it didn't. He picks up a single, moves on to eight. Tough. These are South Africa internationals. I'm sure you've already spoken about what sort of form he's, he's in. Vian Mulder with the bat can do little wrong at the moment. Green is in to Kimber, who is just dabbing down on that one, on off stump, getting forward, looking to drive. Wasn't quite there to be driven, dropped it down into the offside. Thought about the possibility of a quick single. Wasn't really on. 40 for three. Beginning to rebuild, but as you've been saying, Ned, there's still a bit there in the pitch. There is still a bit there in the pitch. It's been a good partnership so far. They needed just to stop the momentum of, of Somerset. Green is in. Kimber thick inside edge. Wasn't quite sure. Maybe moved back in towards him a little bit. Managed to squeeze it out into the leg side. Coming in from sort of the mid wicket ish area is Casey Aldridge. Every bowler that's come on so far has, has hit the straps right straight away, which has made a huge difference. There's been no let up from either end. And 
I think the fact that Leicestershire are just taking the singles and are happy to, to do that just shows where we're at in this game. Green is in slightly short, pulled by Mulder, fastened on it quickly, and that's going to run away to the deep mid-wicket boundary for four. Brooks rather labours in pursuit, knew really he was never going to get there, and uh, Mulder picked the length quickly there, saw it quickly. It wasn't didn't sort of sit up or anything, but as I say, saw the length just early, and it, it wasn't too short, but it was short enough, and uh, as I say, a man in form put it away through straight-ish mid-wicket for four. Yeah, having watched Mulder, have you, did you notice a time where you saw a difference in his batting? He's talked about it a little bit. He, he struggled in, in the early part of the season, certainly against the Dukes ball, and it moving around a little bit. He's indicate, he, he instinct was to stay on the back foot, if, if you like, as Green is in to him, bowls, and he's solidly forward on middle and off, just blocking it out into the offside. But he worked hard with Paul Nixon. Nixon sort of tried to indicate to him that sometimes you do need to get a, yeah. instinctively get forward to deal with the movement and when he made the technical adjustment that was required he might just have changed his alignment a little bit as well as trigger movement um, he sort of seemed to suddenly come into his own made a, a fantastic unbeaten double century at, at Hove against Sussex century yeah. in this competition as well and has uh, looked a different player since essentially absolutely and it's it's huge for you know a team like Leicestershire to have your overseas pro it so is. reliable, you know, around young players trying to make their way, trying to prove a point. If you're overseas, can take take the burden of responsibility and, and scoring runs. He's taken wickets as well in, the, in one of the games. He's really coming into his own and looking like a, a good signing. As youngster Og, Ogborn comes in, two overs for eight so far, bowling to Kimber and the slip is back in. But a deep square leg is out as they come back for two scampered runs and Mulder at the non-striker's end is safely home with a good throw a direct hit that could have been close but they scamper back for two good running yeah that's what they did really well with Marcus Harris last season when, when he was at Leicestershire and made a lot of runs and they batted around him a little yeah. bit it's yeah it makes a huge difference and Especially in white ball stuff this year, Leicester have done done very well, and they're in a good position to to have a go at this tournament if they win this game. As Ogborn comes into Kimber once more, he drives on the offside off the back foot, but there is a man out at deep point, Aldridge, who fires that back in with a good throw. Yes, mm -hmm. if they win this game and go to three from four, it leaves you in a good good position to to have a a good crack at the rest of the tournament, whereas Somerset desperately need to win this game themselves to, to get on the board and probably win win out to, to try and get into those quarterfinals. Yeah, probably, well, five is in minimum, isn't it, to get in five wins out of eight, yeah. so they need to win their last five. They've made a good start here at the Upton Steel ground as he comes in once more. Ogborn and it's edged again, flayed outside the off stump, down to third man, wide of the slip fielder. That angle just creating a few problems for... Mulder and Kimber, a couple of edges have gone safely to third man for Leicestershire's point of view as they move on to 49. One run short of bringing up the 50 as the partnership moves on to 33. Kimber tapping his bat, hunched over, waiting. Bat now pointed to the sky. Ogborn takes the pace off and it's clipped into the leg side out to deep square leg for two more once again for Kimber who just seems to be finding his timing after 16 overs and it brings up the 50 51 for three off 16.4 for the Foxes I guess he won't have been around when, when you were at, here at Grace Road Ned but a lot of promise Louis Kimber he too had a, a good match at Hove against Sussex with the red ball maiden first class century for him yeah he's always someone who strikes the ball very cleanly as left arm up Ogborn comes in and bowls a dot ball fields off his own bowling yeah he's got a big presence he hits the ball very cleanly big future in in the game I know they think of him very highly here they're giving him as much opportunity as possible to to contribute to games, batting high up the order, especially in this tournament. And he has started, like you say, pretty well. 
as Ogborn comes past on by Adnan and bowls full of length and it's beautifully driven down the ground by Kimber. Punched on the front foot past the off stump at the non-striker's end. Finishes a good over for Leicestershire as they move on to 55 for three. He's a, a big chap, he's a strong boy, but didn't look to overhit. He, it is all about timing as well with him. It seems to come so naturally. It would worry me a bit from a coach's point of view yeah. <laughs> almost. He doesn't really change his, his demeanour or the sort of style of his batting under whatever circumstances he plays really. And uh, he'll learn to do that, I suppose. And sometimes you have to graft. He looks confident since he came to the wicket. He's been willing to, to hit strong shots. You can see that he's obviously seeing the ball well. And now maybe the pitch has started to quicken up after an hour in the sun and making stroke making a little easier. Somerset did plenty of damage in those opening power play overs. 18 for three off 10 Leicestershire. Can they recover and post a really challenging score? Well, the two informed men are at the wicket if they're going to do that. Mulder on 13 facing Ollie Sale who's replaced Ben Green, bowls on the legs of Mulder, works it towards backwards square. Man is having to scamper in from the boundary, Aldridge, but he does that successfully, gets to the ball quickly, gets his throw away quickly. That's the main thing, and keeps Kimber in his ground at the striker's end. Mulder onto 14. So he looked just a little bit weary. At, uh, at Hove last Sunday, he'd spent an awful lot of time at the crease plus all his bowling as well but he's had four or five days off he looks thoroughly refreshed they went to Rutland Water Ooh, uh, Leicestershire as in goes Sale and bowls and Kimber's working that one off the straight out towards deep mid wicket it would have been a loud shout for leg before had he missed it he didn't clipped it out towards Aldridge takes one they went to the aqua park there all the sort of water right, I, I was going to say we've before. been to Rutland water I wasn't to the aqua park I was made to cycle around Rutland water and it was me and Dan Redford delightful. there's a name from the past yeah, I remember Dan yeah. we got well and truly lost which is How? almost impossible path, I was going but to we say, did manage yeah. to do it How did you manage that so we were about an hour the big lake after thing else. is a yeah, it was a disaster <laughs> I don't like cycling at the best of times Sale is in bowls again full and looking to work it into the leg side Kimber's come down the wicket Sale quickly to the ball turns and throws the ball but uh, Kimber had scrambled back and the throw from Sale very difficult for the bowler to turn and hit the stumps it wasn't a bad effort but it missed the stumps by a couple of feet and in the end Kimber survives, but basically Mulder couldn't run because, well, he could have run, but he, he could have limped, but he'd been hit by that delivery from Sale, miss it as he tried to work it into the leg side, and uh, it was a bit of a stinger. Looks so like, yeah, missed the thigh guard. Shouts of that flesh out there, I'm sure. He'll be stinging from that left leg for the next couple of overs. He will. But he's ready to face up. He'll have a bruise. Sale. White cricket boots standing out against his black one day kit runs in and bowls to Mulder who guides it just wide of slip down to find third man for four. Lots of hands on Somerset heads out there. Well, it was a, I suppose, a perfect piece of placement from Vihan Mulder. But my word, he was flirting with disaster there. Yeah, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe went a bit finer than he wanted. But and it was in the air through about well Renshaw's watch he's standing at sort of one and a half yeah, slips and a half isn't two. he so it probably went through about two and a half three something like that uh, maybe didn't would maybe wouldn't have carried in fairness to Vianne Mulder who moves on to 18 and certainly it was close enough for one or two oohs and ahs out there sale is in again to Mulder full looking to drive times it nicely but it's a bit too straight uh, from to get it away through between mid off an extra cover and it goes smaller straight to mid off and there's no run going to be an interesting matchup i think here with sale he looks to have a bit more pace than the other three who've bowled so far so maybe that'll make things easier again for the leicestershire batsman but it does come with maybe a slightly more heightened risk factor Probably sale fair head 
poles, full driven for four. I suspect, I don't think the sweeper's going to get their scrambles up, but uh, it is so quick out there. It was too full. It was a bit of a half volley from Sale. And Mulder tucked in gratefully, moves on to 22 off 25. Kimber 27 off 36 and uh, approaching the 50 partnership in decent time, beginning to look a little bit more promising for the Foxes. Definitely picking up with this partnership. These two have looked much more confident, much more sure of themselves at the wicket. Some said they'll be looking to break this partnership and especially the wicket of Vian Mulder would be the one that they'll be talking about. How do we get this guy out? That would really put a, a big hole in Leicestershire's yeah. innings as Kimber back pointing towards the sky, faces Ogborn once more and it's full of a length and great stop at extra cover by Rue. Stops them from coming through for a single. They've been good in the field so far, Somerset. They have. Might have been more if you hadn't got that. It would have been a horrible long chase possibly for mid-off down the slope probably no chasing it really no chase at grace down <laughs> no, the hill grace no. road it's gone Os Ogborn is in past umpire adnan and bowls top of the stumps length and it's blocked into the offside for no run perfect day for a cricket coach as they stroll around past the indoor school shorts on Working on the suntans, work, trying to walk a wicket, perhaps. Well, they've gone round to the left. It's always right for runs, left for wicket. So, they've obviously gone with the old superstition. I didn't know that. Is that right? Right for runs. Okay, so anti-clockwise from the pavilion for runs. Yes. Okay. Ogborn in once more. It's full of a length to Kimber, who puts down the ground, and it's well stopped oh. by opening bowler Brooks down to his left, goalkeeper style. Gets a tap on the hand from his captain, Green. They all count, backing up your young bowler, 19 years of age, at 38 years of age. Double his age, he's got down and done his young left arm seamer a favour. Thanks, veteran. As Slip comes out now to mid-wicket to the overseas via Mulder and pushes deep square leg slightly squarer as he trots in shirt untucked full of a length and punched into the offside by Mulder for no run just thought they didn't come to me at 12 o'clock did they wouldn't at the top of the hour did they come to me they would miss something important that's going on they perhaps forgot yes who knows more important than this I don't but, know but what could exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, maybe sun come. gleaming down and no drinks break yet. The players must be slightly parched after an hour and 15 minutes play as Ogborn comes in once more. It's full of a length and driven into the offside and they're pushing hard, looking for two, but misfield and they will come back for two. The good throw and it looks like he could be oh. gone. He is! Run out, Vian Mulder. Would you believe it? A misfield out at deep cover by Casey Aldridge, but it popped up into the air, almost straight back into his hands. And the throw was perfectly over the top of the stumps and Mulder. The inform overseas pro has got to go for 23. Disastrous bit of running there for Leicester. And just as they were looking to get back on some sort of parity, they've lost their, their inform player. Oh, that is a shocking dismissal and a huge, from Leicester's point of view, huge bonus for Somerset Aldridge involved ag again there. Well, they never run on a misfield. It applies in county cricket just as much as club cricket. It bobbled up, grabbed it, as you say. It, it, it didn't have to sort of scrabble around for it, did it? It's bobbled up nicely for him in a way. Yeah. From, the, from yeah. failure to take it first time. Could not afford that, Leicester, so you, you feel. For Leicester, yeah. They were playing really nicely together. And to lose a wicket like that, it's going to take some coming back from. Be a, a disappointed changing room. Oh. Watching Vian Mulder walk off, run out. Put on 49 for the fourth wicket, but not enough 
dragging himself off. Mulder cannot believe what has happened there. But a great piece of work in the end by Aldridge. The throw got him out of trouble, didn't it? I think they have seen a couple of throws from Aldridge and he's got a strong throw, he's got a strong arm, but it was perfectly over the top of the stumps just for Davies to whip those bails off. Him. Huge bonus. Well, Harry Swindles, Leicester's wicketkeeper, comes to the wicket now. So, if you like, the first of the all-rounders, in a way. And uh, he's been in absolutely no sort of form with the bat at all, yet to score a run in this competition. Two dismissals uh, without scoring for Swindles, who struggled also a little bit in, uh, in red ball cricket as well. So, desperately in need of some runs be interesting to see how he goes about it. Lots of time left, whether he gives himself that opportunity as he faces his first ball from left arm at Osborne and he prods forward. Just getting some bat on it before it wrapped him on the, the knee roll, but that's the end of that over in Leicestershire, having lost Vian Mulder, run out at 67 for four. What can they hope to get from here? 31 overs, you, they've still got to hope to get sort of 250, yeah. something like that, yeah. haven't they? And, give the bowlers something to bowl at but an awful lot now on Kimber's broad shoulders he won't be phased as I say he's <laughs> nothing, nothing much seems to phase him uh, at all really. very pleasant young man indeed I think they'll just be talking about partnership again you know that saw how quickly things changed with that partnership between Kimber and Mulder if they can build that again, they'll, they'll give themselves a shot at, at 2.50, like you say, if not more. Ollie Sale, he reminds me of the former Warwickshire all-rounder, whose name I've forgotten. Controversial young man. <laughs> Can't remember his name. It'll come to me. Comes charging in and bowls to Kimber, who leaves outside off stop. Did a little bit of swing away to the right-hander. What era are we talking? 80s. Involved in all sorts of uh, shenanigans. Was it Dermot Reeve? No, no, it was that era though. Who was the uh, Dermot? Was his captain? <laughs> long, long hair. Tweeting, I'm sure. Yes. Yes, do tweet or uh, at Fox's Cricket 22 as Sale bowls and just dropped out into the offside behind uh, the. Stumps by Kimber. It was a fraction late on, on that one. And Davis himself feels. Are you on Twitter? Or do you no, no, I don't do Twitter. Wisely no so, social probably. media for me. Wise man. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, <laughs> snake pit sometimes. Yeah, it just wasn't bringing too much positivity, so let other people get on with that. Sale turns down the slope bowls to Kimber who flashes and thick outside edge that bounces down to find third man for four through about second slip probably would have been above second slip but went at it very hard hands thick outside edge no great reaction from the Somerset fielders if you're going to flash etc etc and Kimber picks up a boundary somewhat fortuitously doesn't look like he's going to curb his natural instinct Kimbers to hit the ball, take the positive option, which is always good to watch. I'm sure there's a few hearts in mouths as that flashed past the slip region, but four more nonetheless, and he moves on to 32. As there's a meeting of minds between Captain Senior Bowler Brooks and Ollie Sale. Do we post a what? Slip, slip again, awesome another wicket bolting. now to get Kimber now. They would really be confident bowling Leicester out for sort of less than 200 possibly. Absolutely. But no change to the field. Sale is in, Kimber smacks Great. him high oh. over long on for a huge six into the car park. I hope that hasn't hit my car which is in that vicinity <laughs> but what a lovely pickup from Louis Kimber. I think we can safely say he isn't, as Ned said, going to go into his shell. Absolutely, what a fantastic shot. I think he just gave himself some room almost. And T20 style, bottom hand, clean as a whistle over the marquee there, the hospitality marquee. And maybe they've targeted Sale and said, if we can change momentum, this will be the man to do it to. It's almost a languid swing of the bat, doesn't it? Yeah, it has such, such timing. 
Slightly open stance as Sail is in. Full toss, doesn't time it. And he looked to, it maybe was a little bit straighter than he thought it was going to be thick inside edge. And it uh, fortunately, perhaps for Ollie Sale, who was probably looking for the Yorker, worked it out towards Jack Brooks at mid on instead. Sale under some pressure after being hit for a few boundaries. I deep square leg. It's a long boundary out there. Wondering whether we'll see a first bounce through of the day, maybe. Just to yes, show some aggression yeah. back towards the batsman. No bounces. Sale is in. Bowls full outside off stump. Kimber drives, but only as far as extra cover. Where Renshaw threatens the stumps at the non striker's end, but doesn't throw. Ollie Sale, headband on. 22 runs from his 11 balls bowled so far, so as you say, perhaps he's the one who's been picked out by the Foxes. Sale down the slope, bowls. That's a better delivery. Comes back in perhaps a bit to Louis Kimber. Comes off the pad, bounces out into the offside. The nascent appeal is choked off by the Somerset fielders, but a decent comeback from Sale. But Nonetheless, he'll be smarting a little bit, certainly with that clean strike, the way he picked up that six. It was very impressive. Kimber, 38 off 46 balls, 79 for four Leicestershire at the 20 over stage. And Somerset, I suspect, having won the toss and chosen to bowl first, would certainly have taken 79 for four off 20. Yep, they've bowled really well. Every bowler has come on and, and hit their straps, maybe by Ollie Sale there, but some nice shots from Kimber to put him under pressure. But the young, youngster Ogborn here got hit for four first ball, and since then he hasn't given too much away as he's going to continue from the pavilion end as he comes in and bowls to Swindles, still hasn't registered a run yet, lets it go outside the off stump through ankle height to keeper Steve Davies. The other one has always sort of kept a, a little bit low from this end, hasn't it? Just just occasionally. I don't mean today, I mean generally yeah, at, general. this, at this ground. It's a it looks, yeah, a touch slow, a little bit, well, like you say, a traditional Grace Road pitch. Their one-day wickets do tend to be, to be pretty batsman-friendly, so Leicester should possibly need to, to get a partnership as left arm Ogborn comes in, and he's got through. Swindles has hit him on the pad, but nothing. Beat him all ends up. And there was an appeal, a choked appeal. I think it might have clipped his pad on the way through, but it was just sliding across the stumps. But he looks to be, yes, just a slightly bit out of form. So just give himself some time, get in will be the name of the game here. But Yeah, it's bad on ball <laughs> yes, get from Kimber Harry's on point of view for at the moment. As he taps his bat. Looking for that one run, that nice feeling of getting off the mark as Ogborn comes in and he beats him once more. That is great bowling, good length. Forward defence beats his outside edge through to keeper Steve Davies. I wonder if they're thinking about another slip here. Swindles on no run. Could they bring Swindle, up the man and yeah, extra cover? Yeah. I guess they will be aware of his form or lack thereof. I don't know to what extent they will study individual batters in this competition. The stats people, the analysts. Ogborn up the hill, passed on by Adnan, and short of a length and punched away nicely by Swindles, who does manage to get off the mark to Aldridge, who picks up cleanly this time and delivers the ball back into the wicketkeeper. Harry was one of those who's mentioned earlier benefited from sort of batting with. Um, with Marcus Harris last season in particular, yeah. time at the crease. And Harris was usually there when he came out <laughs> to bat at six or seven, you know, or, or even eight, and very calm presence. And he benefited from it. Ogborn in once more, it's full of a length, full toss, and jammed out by Kimber, who can't get it past the mid off. He made a very good, uh, big century at. Taunton against Somerset in the Bob Willis Trophy, Harry. But this season it's been difficult for him with the bat, red ball and white ball. He's still a young man. Very, you know. yeah. 
you can have one season of real high class stuff and then another season of struggling before you find a consistency as Ogborn with the last ball of the over, bowls and Kimba blocks the ball to backward point for no run. Some Leicester supporters feeling in the circumstances that Lewis Hill could could keep wicket as well as captain the side and bring in another batter if Harry's really struggling, but they've shown faith. I, I think it's man. important. And as well, Lewis has had such a great couple of years. You don't want to take away from his batting. Too much of, of the keeping adds an extra burden. He's been one of the outstanding batsmen for, for Leicestershire and in county cricket for the last two years or so. So whether you want him to keep wicket and, and do that and captain at the same time would be would be tough. So I'm glad they've stuck with Harry and hopefully he can repay that faith with an important knock here as he's going to face Holly Sale for the first time. That doesn't sound like the Vuvuzela, so I don't know what that... Uh, perhaps it's a Somerset instrument. Sale down the slope to Swindles. Bowls, full toss again, clipped away through mid-wicket, just punched away, and that could go the distance. A lot of work for Aldridge to do. No, he's going to get there. Good work by him. Big throw, throw. from the mid-wicket boundary. Almost gets to Davis on the full. Davis could have run out, possibly, and made it look even better from Aldridge. It was a good 80-yarder. But as you say, strong right arm. And a three to Harry Swindles. He moves on to four. 83 for four. Again, Sale under pressure. First ball of his over. Wouldn't have wanted to bowl at Kimber again, but here he goes. Bowls and Kimber is uh, playing firmly out to Brooks at mid on, who stays at mid on and having made the stop, examines his right palm a little ruefully. It bounced up, bobbled up. The outfield at um, Grace said, well, I think the drilling was was from your time, Ned. So it was a good five or six years ago for drainage, and the holes have never really no. closed fully. It's definitely better than when I first started. It was absolutely petrifying, to be honest with you, to stand at the boundary. At, the ball would go all over the place, but it's dry as a bone. In goes Sale and Bowles. Turns his wrists on that again, full delivery, looking perhaps for the Yorker and the, th the throw from mid-wicket from uh, Matt Renshaw. Well, it was kind of a little bit unnecessary. He missed the stumps, but fortunately for Somerset, there was somebody backing up, but there was only one person backing up, so could have got nasty. Burst of music in our earphones indicates it's coming up to updates time on BBC Radio Leicester. Yeah, from them in a moment. Sale in bowls again full again clipped away on the leg side this time by Kimber but only as far as Aldridge pretty much straight to him in front of the old manual scoreboard sadly I always think a bit of Dave's scoreboard but sadly Dave Goldaker no longer with us single taken Kimber onto 39 84 for four here comes the update Yeah, Somerset still on top down here at the Upton Steel County Ground. They've picked up the fourth wicket of the innings, potentially a really big one as well. Vian Mulder, who was batting really nicely, the South Africa international in prime form at the moment. He'd gone on to 22, was turned looking for a second run. The fielder juggled with it, but then picked it up neatly and got a very good throw away. And Mulder was run out, really unnecessary wicket after a partnership of 49 with Louis Kimber for the fourth wicket. Kimber is still there, though he's 39 or 51 balls. He's hit Ollie Sale for a huge six over long on. If Leicestershire are going to set a challenging target, one feels that Kimber may have to go on two, three figures. He's been joined by Harry Swindles. Swindles on four, Kimber 39. And Leicestershire, after 22 overs, are 84 for four. Back with you on line. Ned's going to have a break and Anthony Gibson going to come back in alongside. No drinks yet. I guess they'll, they'll probably have them at the 25 over, over mark. I know they're going to have drinks, a, a special drinks break in the Premier League, I believe, uh, this weekend. Running around for 90 minutes in this heat. No joke. 
You've been sitting outside, Anthony. You've been. I had a walk. I had shade. a walk around the ground, and um, I was in pole position to watch the uh, the run out. And uh, very, it was well. He he lulled them into a false sense of security. Did uh, Casey Aldridge? Here comes Ogborn in a bowls, and that's runs off open face down to Andrew Mead, who slips over on this very um, burnt outfield. They take a single 85 for four to just can't demonstrate have the value. Can't have been moisture. Yeah. <laughs> it. It, it just dem that run out demonstrated the old value of the old Nostrum never run on a misfield. Yeah, indeed. Because it was a, was a misfield, and they thought, ah, we can steal another one. And Aldridge recovered remarkably well and absolutely inch perfect throw. Huge bloke for Leicestershire. Ogborn to Swindles, who's watchfully forward. Harry Swindles in his 14th List A game. You've probably given all of this, have you? 10 innings, 222 runs, 24.6, 250s. I was recalling his impressive 150 plus. Did he get 180 in the end? I can't quite remember. At Taunton against yeah, Somerset in the Bob Willis Trophy. Isn't that a dull? <laughs> well, it was a. It wasn't a good wicket then. It just it uh, died and went to heaven. Ogborn bowls to Swindles. is beaten inside the off stump. He's bowling really well. Is uh, Alfie Ogborn? I yes, like. I said is. to Ned, I like to see left arm seamers bowling over the wicket and angling the ball across the right handers, right handed uh, batters, and just getting the odd one to hold its own and come back in. I think that's that's how left arm seam bowlers should operate. Unless you're Neil Wagner, hmm. you know, when you can go around it, go round the wicket and bombard the uh, the right handers, but. It's not a gift that is uh, given to many. Ogborn in bowls. This is driven, but uh, we cut off by James Rue at extra cover. The men out. We've got a deep mid wicket, uh, deep cover or deep backward point, really. A long leg and a third man. Springsteen Cricket on Twitter has come to my uh, rescue. I was trying to think of the Warwickshire all-rounder Ollie Sale reminds me of from the 80s, quite a controversial young man. Paul Smith, he says, yes. And he, just in appearance, I don't need <laughs> for a minute in character. Is Ogborn in the bowls and Swindle's looking for a single, but Rue is quickly onto it. Yes, you probably, uh, Ollie Sale missed the whole of last season with a uh, back injury. He was being... Um, Groomed, if that is the word, to be, be careful with that word. Well, these I know. Days. <laughs> 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 <Not in laughs> he was being groomed as Somerset's death bowler in T20 okay. cricket, a role for which, in my humble opinion, he's quite singularly unsuited. But, um, yeah, he's good. He, to see he looks to be a there. sort of man who, who who likes to bowl wicket-taking deliveries, not necessarily looking for. Exactly, his uh, in the bars. Again, putting a really good line is uh, Alfie Ogborn slanting the ball across the right handers, making them play just in case he gets one to uh, come back into the stumps. 85 for four at the end of that over, which was the 23rd of the innings. I like, I like Sale's names. Cricketers have good names. Oliver Richard Trethowan Sale. Trithowen, yes. Brilliant. Although he was born in uh, Newcastle under Lyme, Staffordshire, he's essentially Dorset educated, Sherburn, hence his connections, I assume. Yeah. The Somerset yeah. set up. Yeah. Went he's up to amazing. Newcastle University, where Ned has been living of late. We have some spin from the Bennett end. Lewis Goldsworthy is going to. Alfie Ogborn's bowling figures are worth giving him six overs, no maidens, none for 22, and only his second top level appearance for yeah, Somerset. It, it, it kind of sounds sort of unremarkable. There have been a lot, rather, much better actually than those figures suggest. Mm. He, after he got hit for four from his first delivery, didn't he? Just over pitch, right. but since then he's been very, very impressive and uh, unlucky not to pick up a wicket. Goldsworthy, left armour, comes in and bowls to Kimber, who hasn't been seen much of the strike of late, gets a foolish delivery outside off stump, just leans forward and strokes it out into the desert in front of the Upton Steel stand alongside the meat, the famous old meat. 
Friends of Grace Road will be purveying their cakes later in the day. 86 for four. Kimber on to 41. It's got a splendid corrugated iron roof, hasn't it? I hope it's iron. In <laughs> goes Goldsworthy and uh, Bowles. Forward goes Swindles. A little suspiciously working the delivery with a closed face of the bat no, out towards mid wicket. That, that, that strange building. Goldsworthy tosses one up, Swindles is down the wicket, chipping it in the air down to mid on, down towards long gone. He did get to the ball on the full but didn't really know what to do once he'd got there and he took his bottom hand off the bat. It came from the Aylston Road ground, from the, uh, which is now the electricity ground, uh, only about sort of half a mile away to the west. Kimber goes back and strokes the delivery from Goldsworth out into the covers. Renshaw is the fielder and there is no run in the fairly shortly after the war in fact full again from Goldsworthy worked a little bit too straight on that occasion and Kimber is able to work it through the vacant mid wicket area across the one of the few green parts of this ground at the moment the square of course which is kept reasonably well watered out towards Aldridge who's had a hand in all four wickets it's using his feet well this time is Harry Swindles two goals where he gets to the pitch of the ball and just plays it firmly through the gap at mid on cameraman moves his chair that's the noise you're picking up in the effects mic alongside the, the Burroughs Terrace along here which is open to the public and affords a very good view is flawed with a sort of F-L-O-O-R-E-D <laughs> I, I, I quickly add with a sort of iron Grid. grid, but uh, it, it is Not very suitable noisy. Not for high heels, no. notices, uh, no. flat uh, shoes only. Yeah, it doesn't specify whether they're high heels as worn by ladies or men, the notice, but it just says high heels. Not We're suitable. End of the over, 89 for four. Let's just milk that over quite successfully from you know, Goldsworthy. Yeah, I expect Ben Green put him on just to see if there's anything in it for the uh, for the spinner. He's coming on himself now from this pavilion end and swinging a miss from Swindles, who's uh, taking his time to find his range. Is Harry Swindles been out there? That was his seventeenth uh, delivery. Always look on the bright side of life. Also got the Paul, my Paul Smith uh, failure of memory. Thank you for that. Green bowling over the wicket to Swindles, takes pace oh. off that and again there's an indeterminate prod outside the uh, off stump from Harry Swindles. I had a look at the, I'm going to get something from my car and the car temperature said 28, so it's not that's quite as murderously hot as they said it was going to be. By mid-afternoon, I think yeah. it might be a few degrees more. Green bowls and a solid forward defensive shot on this occasion. No sign of the uh, Leicestershire batters really taking the bowlers on just yet. It was just that huge blow from Kimber, wasn't that beautifully picked up over it long was. gone? It was a free hit, wasn't it? Was it a free no. hit? No, it wasn't no. a free hit. Oh. Yeah, I don't think we've had a no ball yet. Green in a bowls, and this is floated up and hit hard into the offside, but straight at Lewis Goldsworthy. But um, Kimber is a man in form, and when it's a sort of bit of a half volley on the leg stump, it was in the slot. So in a way, and, and mid on is up. It, in a way, it was a bit of a free hit. <laughs> we've had one no ball so far. Two wides. And one ah. leg by. Green to Swindle, short down the leg side. And he must, must just have flicked his pad as that went through to uh, Stephen Davis as it's not given as a wide. He stepped inside it a bit, didn't he, as well? So it might just have gone over the stumps. A good couple of feet over the stumps, I hasten to add. But yeah. uh, it's a fairly innocuous delivery, just got it wrong. This is turned into the onside and 
can't see the ball against the, <laughs> the increasingly white or certainly pale straw coloured outfield but it's just a single and another economical over from uh, Ben Green who has bowled four overs no maidens none for 13. Casey Aldridge the uh, star performer for Somerset thus far three for ten in six overs and uh, those figures do not exaggerate how well he has bowled. Jack Brooks also very accurate challenging five overs for 14. Ben Green have just given you half your ball six overs for 22. Holly Sale the most expensive three overs for 26 and he was the one who bowled the no ball. Uh, the goal just the one over. The players take a very well-deserved drink. It must be horrifically hot out there. There's no yeah. gentle breeze, just enough to stretch on the far side of the ground. Yeah. Maybe we're getting it down there at ground level. We're feeling it nicely up here, on top of the pavilion. What are we, about 25, 30 feet high, something like that. It's uh, it's 38 steps, I can tell you, up on the top here. <laughs> no, I haven't counted them yet. I haven't quite. Elsewhere, uh, who else are in our group? Uh, Gloucestershire against Durham. 160 for one. Reminded Gloucesters in the uh, 27th. Uh, Is that a Bristol? Uh, uh, there next um, Wednesday. No, it's a, it's a Chester Street. Yeah, okay. Chester Street, Gloucestershire. Uh, Middlesex against Knotts. Middlesex, 173 for one in 25. After being put in. And that's being played at Grantham. Uh, I haven't actually, and it's not far from here at all. It's only about, I'd say, about 30 miles away, maybe 35. A town made famous by a certain prime minister. Warwickshire against Sussex. Warwickshire 152 for one in uh, 28 overs. So they're going pretty well. So everyone's going pretty well in this group, except Leicestershire. Yeah. 90 for four. Wow, that power play, 18 for three off the first 10, very hard to recover. So halfway stage, 90 for four, can they, they have to target 240, 250 yeah. to, to have any one field. I think that's still one, well one field, compass, if they don't lose wickets. If, if Kimber hangs around, then I think it, it's possible, but after Swindles, who's struggling, well, Aaron Lilly may or may not come off, Tom Scriven is a useful bat and more than useful bat as well young all-rounder Roman Walker scored his maiden uh, first class half century this season Goldsworthy is in and bowling and uh, advancing down the wicket is Swindles but then defending the delivery out towards mid wicket there's no run he bowls from very wide uh, Goldsworthy in he goes, bowls, and forward goes Swindles, not using his feet on that occasion, or not skipping down the wicket anyway, just leaning forward, taking the step and pushing the delivery off off stump out into the covers. Goldsworthy is in again, Swindles using his feet, playing through mid on this time, scrambled across and tried to make the stop Ben Green, put in the dive in fact, good effort from the skipper brushes himself off a little ruefully must be like diving on sort of hairy concrete at the moment out there and it ran down to long on for one goldsworthy is in kimber playing firmly through mid off on this occasion and almost exactly the same thing happens renshaw this time dives across to his right but he can't get there either and long off comes into field single taken kimber onto 43 swindles Bends at the knees and goes back, tries to force a slightly short delivery back past Goldsworthy, who almost gets tangled up with Kimber there. You would imagine that in those circumstances, Kimber would be the one who would be uh, the survivor of the two. Goldsworthy at least a foot shorter. Tosses that one up nicely and rather does Harry Swindles in the flight. He was looking to drive thick inside edge. Oh he mistimed there. it. I was just ground, about to say, we've, the got a, we've got a sub on and he's going off. Oh, well Jack Harding, go. just relieving um, Matt, Renshaw. Matt Renshaw, who, who might very well back. have been relieving himself. <laughs> with, his, uh, with his maroon Somerset 
Sun Hat. News on the Somerset website that uh, Marchant de Langer yes. is leaving to join Gloucestershire. To join it. Well, how will people feel about that, do you think, big Marchant? <sighs> I'll come back to that. I'll just yeah, deliver okay. it from Ben Green as it's uh, defended 92 for four. No, not he's a lovely, he he's is a a lovely, lovely bloke, is Marchant de Langer. Yeah. But he, he's honestly been a bit of a disappointment. He hasn't uh, won g many games for for Somerset in the time that he's uh, been with them, and uh, Gloucestershire are in dire straits in terms of losing their best players. So it's been rumoured for some time that he would be going up to Bristol. And this in. is lofted down the ground, and there's no one there, and that is six by uh, Louis Kimber. Just hit that sweetly through the line, moves on to 49, didn't try and hit it too hard. I was looking hopefully down towards Long On, but uh, Jack Brooks was uh, up inside the, the fielding circle at mid-on. 98 for four. Beautiful piece of timing again from Kim, but effortless almost. It's uh, Ben Green to Louis Kimber on 49 who's going to get the single that brings him his 50. Well batted, uh, Louis Kimber, 50, 59. Six fours and two sixes. A good controlled, controlled aggression from Louis Kimber, knowing that uh, Leicestershire can't afford to lose another wicket at this stage, but equally taking his opportunities when they arise. 99 for four. Green bowls to Swindles, who will bring up, no, he won't bring up the 100 as Matt Renshaw is quickly around to his right from a short mid wicket position. Swindles having it, finding it all a bit of a struggle at the moment. Out yeah. There. It's a story of his season to a certain extent, but if he can spend a bit of time in, in the middle in this game, lend support to Kimber. Eight runs from 28 deliveries. Green bowls to him. Takes pace off that one. And Swindles defends. Back up the pitch. What's the um, what's the calibre of the batting to come? As I say, there's the experience and power. A uh, clean hitter is Aaron Lilly. If he gets in, hasn't really fired so far this season. But he, if he is in for the last sort of 15 overs, he could do a lot of damage. Green to Swindles, and uh, Swindles again content just to play that quietly. Back up the pitch, brings that over to a conclusion. That's the 27th of the innings. 99 for four. Kimber on 50, Swindles on eight. Tom Scriven is an all rounder of, of some promise. And uh, as I say, Roman Walker can certainly bat as well. Buren and uh, Bjorn Hendricks, that is, and, and Chris Wright, no mugs either, but they wouldn't necessarily be taking an attack apart in the way that the likes of Lily might. So there is batting to come, but not much as Goldsworthy is in back goes. Kimber takes his bottom hand off the bat as he forces that one away through the offside. There is a misfield, but no, <laughs> says well, Harry Swindles. We won't do that again. The, uh, throw comes in from the deep it is not easy fielding out there so that's uh, Alfie Ogborn out there and Ogborn did manage to pick it up not quite as cleanly as uh, Aldridge slog swept by Swindles that one and that's gone down towards deep backwards square for four and there's a, a real cheer for Harry Swindles his first boundary <laughs> did just stray it in direction a little bit but he did fetch it off the stumps Rather, but he timed it well enough, and it was in the end, I guess, a safe enough shot because Aldridge was out there at deep mid wicket, nobody at deep backwards square. Swindles moves into double figures on to 12, 104 for four. Matthew Cleave on Twitter says, There's no end to your talents. This is a reference to us being on TikTok. You're going viral. <laughs> Are we? I don't know. Is that good? Is that bad? Is we're, that yeah, good. we're going viral. I'm not sure that we are going viral. <laughs> the, the youngsters on TikTok, what, what is this they're saying? <laughs> Who are those two old fools? <laughs> Chuntering about cricket. 104 for four. 
YouTube and uh, TikTok. I wouldn't be surprised if Leicester don't go after Lewis Goldsworthy. He's, he doesn't really turn it. It's pretty innocuous stuff. He is in down the wicket to go Swindles, crashing it away through the offside, straight to Ogbourne, who's uh, the sweeper out there on the offside when the bowling is from the Bennett end. Slightly surprised that Ben Green has given him a bowl, given that um, he could bowl all his own overs with the uh, seam bowlers. Sale left. has gone for a few, hasn't he? So, apparently, as you say, just wanted to have a look. Bowls to Kimber. Goldsworthy there. Kimber goes back and strokes it out through mid off. Renshaw sprawls to his right and, having failed to stop the ball, sort of lies there disconsolately for a while with an expanse of bare back showing there. Ever the drama queen. Breeze gets up as Goldsworthy is in to Swindle. That's a decent delivery. And Swindle's looking to work it out into the gap on the offside. Gets a thick inside edge. And he, he bowls quite well in T20, does, um, does Lewis Goldsworthy. He's quite effective, or has been. Steps in and bowls. This time it's a little bit fuller, and Swindle's is able to drive it out into the offside. Born is quickly to it and gets a good throw away the diminutive young left-hander good throw into the gloves of Davies end of the over Swindles keeps the strike by picking up that single he moves on to 14 Kimber has 52 107 for four 28 overs have been bowled 22 remain six seven and over they certainly can be thinking in terms of 250 plus will that be enough if they get there put Somerset under any sort of pressure. 107 for four. Yeah, it's a, a slippery outfield, isn't it? When when grass gets really dry, it, it does get slippery. It can, it's obviously slippery when it's damp as well, but when it's really dry, hard to keep your feet out there. And one or two bad bounces as well. This is floated up from Green, and they're going to take a quick single, which is slightly risky because James Roo was coming across from short extra cover. And if he picked that up, you have only have been three or four yards away from the stumps at the uh, non-striker's end, but he didn't pick it up, so they completed the single comfortably enough. 108 for four, Swindles 15, Kimber 52. Ben Green in his sixth over. Bowls to Kimber, who Ooh. plays and misses. And the ball outside the off stump. He's, he's looking to come down the pitch at uh, Ben Green. Fancies standing outside his crease Stephen Davis staying back not wanting obviously to give buys away and I, I owe you fast an outfield. and the listeners an apology underneath it was a free hit that first six that Kimber hit you're perfectly correct Fango Fox points it out Green in and bowls and this is turned into the onside and Alfie Ogborn will do the fielding what made me think it was but was uh, the long uh, uh, time that it took before the uh, free hit ball was bowled with consultations with captain and senior pro Jet Brooks and then he bowled one absolutely in the slot which was smashed down the ground 109 for four green to Swindles who goes for a big hit and gets a thick edge which races down the ground to the advertising boards in front of the sports center on the far side of the ground Bennett end of the ground giving Andrew Umid who's at a conventional third man position absolutely no chance fortuitous but they all count 19 swindles 113 for four maybe it's a sign his, uh, his luck is changing yeah, through the kitchen sink and the dishwasher at that last one this is pitched up and it's driven away through the offside and Casey Aldridge they won't take any liberties with Casey Aldridge's arm after what happened to Vian Mulder I must say I was, was as I say I was watching it from, from square on and it, it was it was tight the decision but brilliant brilliant piece of fielding Green to Kimber, who works this away down to the long leg, where it's fielded by Ollie Sale, who's got a very, very bright white pair of cricket shoes 
on one or two of the Somerset fielders have got uh, black cricket shoes on to match the uh, colour of their their kit. End of that over, 29th over, 115 for four, 20 to Swindles, 54 to Kimber, and these two have added 348 for the fifth wicket thus far. Goldsworthy, 14 runs from his three overs, is going to continue from the Bennett end, steps in and bowls. Kimber, as he says, won't, goes back and tries to force it away through the offside. This time, Renshaw diving to his left, is able to make a clean stop on about the third bounce and sits there rather pleased with himself. Oh, it's a good stop for a moment, it really was. Quite easily run away to uh, the boundary for four. Goldsworthy is in, Kimber is down the wicket, driving very firmly through mid off in the air, bounces twice before. Sale feels at long off. He takes one. Now, Ned has told me about this walking round business, something that I didn't know. If you walk round clockwise, it means you want runs. And if you walk around anti clockwise, it means you want wickets, apparently. I didn't know that. Goldsworthy is in reverse swept by Swindles, but he's reverse swept it straight to the man on the 45, essentially at short third man. Who's doing the walking round? The, the, le the Somerset coaches. So they are look, walking around in the direction that, that requires a, a wicket. And, but I didn't realise that. Didn't know that. Yeah. Goldsworthy is in, looking to drive thick inside edge from Swindles. And for a second, he genuinely has no idea where it's gone. Sees it's gone slightly wide of green at mid wicket. And I think it responds to Kimber's call as much as anything and picks up. So one. which way are they? Which way are they walking round? So they're they well, they've just come back in now. So, <laughs> but they were walking round in the in the wickets way, right. if that makes any sort of sense. So clockwise. Goldsworthy is in, and again Kimber goes back, and he's playing him pretty well at the moment. He's just going back, playing him off the pitch because, as Anthony says, it's it's not really turning for Goldsworthy who uh, Anthony says isn't a big turner of the ball necessarily, playing him off the pitch and, and punching him away uh, into the gaps. Only for once, Goldsworthy is in. Swindles it looks a little bit sort of tangled up there as he plays it firmly towards long gone, but it's intercepted en route by Midwicket diving across uh, and handing then the ball to Goldsworthy because it's the end of the over. 118 for four. Swindles has 21. It's a couple of good shots in there, just the odd sign for Harry Swindles that he's starting to see it a little bit better. Louis Kimber, a man in form, and looks like it. He's on 56 off 67. 30 overs have been gone. This is where you traditionally double the score, isn't it? But Absolutely right. 236, 240, they'd, they'd, they'd want a few Somerset, more than that. Somerset would settle for 236, yeah, 240. Yeah, I bet they would. Yeah. But I think Leicester will be targeting 270, something like that. This could be a, a pivotal moment. The destroyer is back. Yep, three for ten, six overs. He's going to be bowling to Louis Kimber. Field spread. And this is worked into the onside. There should be two here. Uh, oh, it's Ogborn takes his eye off the ball and is going to give away. No, he, yes, he is going to give away another run. They come back for the third. Alfie Ogborn moving around to his left, just watching the batsman momentarily and failing to pick up the ball cleanly. Well, something that we've all done many times in the course of never, our cricketing never. careers. <laughs> <laughs> just getting a little bit ahead of yourself. 121 for four. Aldridge to Swindles, who plays that way firmly through the offside. It's going to be cut off by Casey Aldridge, who's doing a fine job in the deep for. Oh, no, it's not Casey. I was going Aldridge. to say, be doing a heck of a job in those circumstances. <laughs> it's George Bartlett. George Bartlett out there. It was the it was the arm the elasticated arm guard that fooled me. And of course, that's where Aldridge has been fielding. But yeah. he's got ball in hand. He's in to Swindles, who took two runs, and this is worked into the offside, but Goldsworthy will pick up 123 for four, 23 to Swindles, 59 to Kimber. These two have added 56. He missed the 50 partnership. 
Should be an update coming up from BBC Radio Leicester, after which Ned will be uh, back I'll alongside you, Anthony. I'll just hopefully, we'll hear. I'll listen uh, out for the queue, and, and then I'll shut up. As Aldrich bowls a full-length delivery, which is worked up to Jack Brooks at mid-on, they decide straight away that there's a single there, and there was. 124 for four runs coming rather more easily now for the. Uh, for the Leicestershire Foxes. As Aldridge from this pavilion end is in bolts to Kimber, who works that down to Andrew Umid at third man. And they think about a single, but it's not there. And there's a good throw as well over the top of the stumps to uh, Stephen Davis. Somerset fielding has been pretty good on a difficult outfield it's very fast it's quite slippery the only real blemish the catch that uh, ben green put down early on but the uh, the wicket of Mulder run out crucial blow aldridge bowls and this is turned into the onside again for a single 126 for four as uh, richard will provide his next update Louis Kimber's best in this competition. I think it's the 85, was it he scored last season? Did score 68. Yeah, it was, it is, yeah. At uh, Radlett, as I've mentioned. Here comes the update. Yeah, innings in the balance, rather, at the moment. 126 for four off 31. Kimber, Louis Kimber, that is, uh, the young batsman who's really emerged this season. He's holding things together for the Foxes. He's on 60 off 69 balls. He's hit two lovely sixes over long on crucial. If Leicestershire are going to get to total 250 plus, which is the sort of total they'll need to challenge uh, Somerset, that Kimber stays there. He hits high again, and that is going to be another six. I think it was very, very near. And Jack Brooks has only got three to bowl. So may, maybe Ben Green in a mixture. But then that implies taking Brooks out of the attack now. And I'm not sure that's wise. Into Swindles. He moves across his crease and clips the ball away down to fine leg on the bounce and a long barrier and a throw in from Ollie Sale just keeping Leicestershire to one run. This is where they're missing um, Peter Siddle, his experience at, at the death. When he bowls, he's become a very effective death bowler in, in 20 over cricket. Peter Siddle bowling Yorkers. Yeah, very accurate yeah. Yorker. Yeah, yeah, very good bowler at the death. But it's up to Alfie Ogborn at the minute as he comes in round the wicket to Kimber in full of a length and it's punched down the ground, long on, catches it, Matt chest Renshaw. high. Matt Renshaw with his third catch of the day and Louis Kimber having just gone to 100 has gifted Somerset their fifth wicket. Crucial breakthrough at a crucial time for Somerset as Leicestershire were just looking to put their foot down and now Kimber has to leave for 102 in Leicestershire, 182 for five. And that is Alfie Ogborn's first wicket in senior cricket for Somerset, and only his uh, second appearance. One for 40 in 7.5 overs in these figures. But a fine innings from uh, Louis Kimber. Just didn't quite get hold of it, did he? No, and good captaincy as well to bring up the 45, put out that long on, going more defensive, more T20, death fields, and Kimber just couldn't get it over the boundary for another maximum. Does bring the dangerous Aaron Lilly to the crease, who won't die wandering, I wouldn't think, in the next four or five overs. Yes, Lancastrian, born at Tameside, wherever that is. What is it? It's, a district. <laughs> it's 
part of Manchester. East Manchester. East Manchester. Thank you. Richard. Played for Lancashire from 200, uh, 2012 to 2018. Very handy white ball cricketer. Big hitter with the bat, bowls his off spin later in the day. It's going to come in with 13.1 overs remaining here. and He's got a crucial role to play. Get himself in and try and push that score as close to 300, if not past it, as they can. As Richard Ray is going to come back and join me for Aaron Lilly's innings as he taps his bat hard on the ground and waits for Ogborn around the wicket still and it's appeal for LBW but stifled too high good over though from Alfie Ogborn who has bowled nicely today and has now figures of eight overs one for 40. They could have done with another lesser shirt that is four or five overs of uh, Louis Kimber there but well he'd hit some lovely shots over long gone and one or two that had only just cleared fielders and that one more or less straight down the throat of Renshaw who's made no, no mistake when the ball's been in his uh, catching vicinity in this innings his third catch can Lily sort of take Leicestershire somewhere close to to the sort of 250 you feel is the minimum they need I feel the minimum they need to have a sort of chance here Jack Brooks is in, bowl short, pulled by Swindles out towards deep mid-wicket. Aldridge has a, beg your pardon, is it Aldridge out there or is it actually? Who's out there at the moment? It is Aldridge out there and he gets a throw away well. So just a couple, two Swindles, who's, who's begun to sort of play himself into some sort of form. Yeah, as you can tell, he's, he's found his timing as, the, as the, his innings has gone on. Brooks is in again it's short again it's pulled this time <laughs> having said that he doesn't quite time it and it, and it runs fairly gently out uh, towards mid wicket there's no run yeah we're seeing a few more short balls here which I was expecting a bit earlier in in proceedings along square boundaries if you want to take on the man so be it Brooks in bolts oh good bouncer <laughs> and Swindles just just gets his head out of the way of it. He has had a few struggles in the early part of his career. He's still in his early part of his career. But uh, last season in particular with the short ball, Harry Swindles, and uh, only just got his head out of the way of that one. In that time. was a good one. That was Jack Brooks rolling back the years. He meant it, didn't he? He's bowled nicely in his comeback spell here, Jack Brooks. Runs in and bowls and swindles. Tries to flare it away at outside off some doesn't get anything on it. He thinks he's been a little bit unsettled perhaps by that bouncer. Oh, that series of bouncers, Brooks showing. As Ned said, that he's still got plenty of fire about him. He's fielded really well as well. He, he can see why they've given him another year, really. Jack Brooks, who is in and bowling again, a little bit short and up on his toes, Swindles dropping it out towards backward point. Initial shout was yes, but then quickly realised that Goldsworthy was closing in on the ball quickly at backward point, and Lily wrapped out no, sent him back into his ground. Wanders down to have a word and uh, the obligatory touch of gloves. Crucial delivery this to get out the over, looking like a maiden. Puts pressure on Aaron Lily on on zero. Brooks is in short, pulled over mid wicket. Well, he's going to concede at least to Aldridge. Gets to the ball around about a foot inside the ropes at deep mid wicket. Swindles takes a couple. Moves on to 41, 186 for five. We've had, what is it now, 38 overs. So the run rate only fractionally below five, which suggests that 250 is, is, is a minimum, but they have lost five key wickets. That was very good bowling, Jack Brooks. He's come back and, and shown the way as the experienced bowler from the Bennett end, looking to pepper the middle of the wicket. And Swindles managed to get one away at the end there. Only for two runs off that over. None for 30 from eight for Brooks, but he's bowled an awful lot better than those yeah, figures suggest. And he's built a good partnership here with Ogborn, 
We've got the crucial wicket of Louis Kimber as he comes into Aaron Liddy around the wicket and full of a length. He clips it into the leg side and good fielding by the captain Green at mid wicket. Apologies to those listening and watching on this stream. It did go down for a few minutes, but uh, hopefully all is well now. Quite a few minutes, actually, <laughs> but I don't know why. Well, they're back for the crucial finishing stages of this Leicestershire Foxes innings as Ogborn left arm changes his pace and Lily pushes down to mid on Renshaw throws it goes all the way to Steve Davies but Lily off the mark he's done pretty well this year Aaron with some, some innings crucial innings at times he can not very consistent with the way he goes about his business but he can be destructive if he if he gets going he can he can and it's kind of frustrating, I think, for a lot of Leicester supporters. He's, he's, he's promised an awful lot at times without quite making decisive contributions. Now, Ogborn stays around the wicket to Swindles, who squirms away into the leg side and scampers through for a single Yorker length ball from Ogborn. He's looking to finish off his spell. Some tidy figures for a 19 year old in just his second game. He's doing a very, very handy job. You like that he's going around? Yeah, I think it just cuts down the angle now to the offside. He can kind of take away one side of the wicket and be a bit clearer in what he's doing. And he comes into to Lillian Bowles at the stumps and he blocks the ball into the offside for a single. Looks like he's just starting to change his pace to going slightly more Maybe death in his thinking, thinking more about saving runs than, than taking those wickets. They come with their slow balls and everything like that already, don't they, as they come into the team? I suppose you have to these days if you come into a white ball team, but he's not learning necessarily learning on the job. He is, but you know what I mean. As he comes in once more, swindles, blocks into the offside and turns out good fielding, good intensity there from, from Rue. That extra cover, saving a single. Every run could be crucial as the Leicestershire Foxes get towards the, the back end of their innings. What I'm saying is that they emerge from the academies and second team cricket with, with rather more weapons than they might have done five or ten years Definitely. ago. Definitely, and we're seeing him produce them here, which is great as the fielders for the last ball of the over retreat to the edge of the ring. So he comes in once more to Swindles, who knocks it into the leg side to Green at mid-wicket on the ring for a single and another good over from Alfie Ogborn. Who hasn't made it into the who's who this year, but uh, he will next year. So we'll have to wait for Anthony to come back to give us his, back, his background. He looks a prospect. Left arm seam as a, a well sought after, as we've seen in, in one day cricket. You know, in England, they like having an array of left arm, left arm bowlers. Every team's looking for them, and Somerset have got a, got a good one here, and hopefully he can keep developing. Statistics suggest that they're harder to get away. Are they more economical with their bowling, or just I, the options? Just the options, I think. Just change it up. I think they are, especially if you can have an opening bowler from left arm, and they can get the ball to swing swing early the way Topley has for England you know David Willey has especially at domestic cricket Ollie Sale is coming back on who Anthony tells us is, has been groomed he used the word not me <laughs> by Somerset to be the death bowler in white ball cricket he's got a bit of recovering to do down the slope he comes and bowls to Swindles who hits him over the top of extra cover doesn't quite time it though so Ogborn out there on the boundary can run across and uh, field and it'll be just two to Swindles who moves on to 45 I hesitate because the board can be quite quick when it's in the mood and it had already anticipated his uh, his couple there 45 off 69 for him 192 for five. Paul Smith was the uh, Warwickshire all-rounder I was trying to think of um, earlier. 
Sale is in and bowls up into the ribs of Swindles, who's not a tall man, gets up on his toes and just turns it around the corner towards backward square, takes one. Yeah, I wonder whether we'll see more of the same from Sale that we got from Jack Brooks. Shorter bowling. It's always worth it with to Lily because sometimes he doesn't look like he and he's entirely comfortable with it with, with pace bowling and um, uses his feet well. He usually makes room, backs away a little bit, but uh, it can discomfort him. Sale being asked to wait by uh, umpire Mustard. Changes to the field. He's ready to go now. Sun Clinton in his blonde thatch runs in and bowls to Lily, who steps across his stumps. It is a foolish delivery. It's going down the leg side, goes into the pads, turned or attempts, attempts to turn it down to uh, long leg, doesn't get anything on it. It trickles out towards sort of short, fine leg. Long leg runs into field, claps his hands. Having uh, done the fielding, Ogborn it is down there. 194 for five, but good so far in this over from Sale. Just the three runs conceded from the first three balls. Charges in and bowls. Swindles, defends. Delivery on middle and leg out into the offside. Out into the covers, no run. What's the, the next four batters looking like for Leicester if they were to, to lose a wicket here? Are they mainly bowlers or are they... I suppose by by definition they are. That said, Tom Scriven is a genuine all-rounder. Yep. Look, looks promising. And has just made his debut for Leicestershire's first team in this competition, getting his chance. And he looks capable. He's bowled really nicely. We haven't really seen him get much of a chance with the bat. Outside off stump on that sure. occasion from Sale. Driven firmly out towards deep wow. extra cover and across the boundary. And that is 50 for Harry Swindles and the cheers from the Leicestershire balcony in front of the dressing room sort of tells you what that means. He's really struggled this season and that's an important knock for Harry Swindles. His 50 has been hard earned. It's come off 72 balls, but it's been very important in guiding Leicestershire or helping guide Leicestershire towards what may or may not prove to be a competitive score. Gets a chant from the faithful. <laughs> Sale is into him again down the leg side and he lifts his bat out of the line of the ball. It's taken by Davis and signalled wide, of course, by Phil Mustard. So, yeah, after Scriven, it is um, it is the bowlers, but, well, I guess you know as well as anyone, Chris Wright can is no mug with the bat. Three and a half thousand first-class runs yep. he's got. Can hang around. And Buren Hendricks has proved, like a lot of left-handers, he's got a good eye and... and He's batted for quite a long time without necessarily scoring a lot of runs, but he gets into line. So they should get through the full allotment. In goes Sale, bowls just outside of Stump. Swindles dabs it down towards backward point. Dab being the operative yeah. word, it takes a long time to reach backward point, and they take the single that brings up the 200, and it's all very symmetrical. 200 for five, or 40 overs. So even we can work out that is five and over. <laughs> that basis, don't need the scoreboard. There's a few to tell out there that. I've played a lot alongside who would not be able to work that out, don't you worry? I'd be glad that it's up on the scoreboard telling them for sure. Plenty in the commentary boxes as well. <laughs> 200 for 5 off 40. Well, maybe 260, 270. I maybe think they'll be looking more. for more, yeah. I yeah. think it depends on whether these two can stay together for the next three or four overs to give them a real platform at the end. Missed off Roman Walker from those to come. He, he got his first, or his maiden first class half century this season, so... There ain't no mugs with the bat no, anymore, are there, no really? No, there aren't, you're right. Are there any number, genuine number 11s still around? Can you I think of many? I can think of a few. I've, I mean, Chris Rushworth at Durham isn't... But he's, he's always entertaining to watch, and we've moved into the last 10 over, so there is now five men on the boundaries. Ogborn, who is going to finish his allotment of 10 here, has a fine leg, deep square leg, deep mid-wicket, Deep cover and third man looking to get the Leicestershire players to hit out to the long square boundaries. It's probably quite good from Green and Somerset, isn't it? Not to expose Ogborn to the sort of last couple of three or four whenever it's bored, trying to be hit to the boundary. It just gives him a, 
a modicum of protection at this stage. Absolutely. There's a slight change as deep mid-wicket comes to regulation mid-wicket and a long on goes out to Aaron Lilly around the wicket. Ogborn full of a length and he wafts, I would say, outside the off stump looking to carve the ball through the offside, which is Aaron Lilly's style, but no connection. He's done a very good job coming back at a, a time where Leicestershire were really motoring. Swindles and Kimber were together, picking up boundaries. Yeah, and they and have picked just up the key wicket as well. Absolutely. Lily tapping his bat hard as he waits for Ogborn down the track and he gets himself into a muddle as the ball goes through to keeper Davies and just hasn't got himself going yet, Aaron Lilly. He'll be looking to up his strike rate quickly. You feel there is something afoot. There could be a big six or there could be a sky coming. You get a feeling that Lily is itching to, to find a boundary. Ogborn wearing number three and he bowls and he's carved outside the off stump and it's unlucky. Squeezed it away down to third man for four more. That raced away. Aaron Lilly just getting a bit of bat on something outside the off stump and he does find the boundary he's been looking for. He's been a little bit unlucky uh, at times. After the there's been a few that have gone fairly fine down to third man off him. He'll be looking to close out his 10. Only gone for 49 so far as he comes into Lillian short of length and he pulls away and he's bowled he's dragged it on the youngster 19 years old has got his second wicket Lily looking to drag the ball into the leg side can only find the bottom edge on to leg stump and just as Leicestershire again looked the putting their foot down they've lost a the wicket and it's Aaron Lilly who's got to go as it 205 for six Leicestershire face another setback. Yeah, another disappointment for Lily and, and Leicestershire. And it is going to be the bowlers who are going to have to, well, one all rounder to come, Tom Scriven, inexperienced. So he hasn't had too many opportunities with the bat so far. 9.1 overs remain. Swindles isn't really the sort of going to thrash sort of 20 off and over, I don't think, at any stage. Walker might. He's big, strong. Yeah, I expect these, these two will be looking to, to employ smarter cricket more than, than power. You know, looking to run well, deflect the ball well into, into gaps to find their boundaries, but you think they need a, another partnership of three or four overs to, to get them in a position to look for 250, 260 and allow the likes of Walker to come in and, and play his game. So a lot riding on, on Swindles especially, using his, his cricket now to, to get them up to a good total now. In as much as a... What is he, 21, Harry Swindles? I can't quite remember how old he is. Not much more than that, I'll just check. He had a lot of cricket now, but they play a lot of cricket early, don't they, these days? So yeah, and fingers hopefully. crossed he's learned from, from guys around him. I'm sure he has. Um, but we'll see as Tom Scriven faces up from Ogborn around the wicket again. He's hit on the pads from around the wicket and the finger goes up. Scriven, first ball, stuck on the crease. Skidded through from Ogborn, who's taken two wickets with his final two balls of his spell to really put Leicestershire behind the eight ball here at the Upton Steel County Ground. Scriven playing across the line, couldn't get any bat on the delivery and has to make his way back for a golden duck. Next side ish, looking at the replay. But umpire Adnan left no doubt. He raises his finger really high to the uh, to the sky. It isn't just a, a 
apologetically pointing at the batsman. And he's a little bit unlucky, I think, there, just looking at the replay, that's all. It, it, it looked, it might just have clipped leg stump, I suppose. <laughs> Difficult angle to get an LBW, you're right. Young Alfie Ogborn won't care a jot. No. He's bowled really nicely in that spell, taken three crucial wickets to really peg Leicestershire back as Roman Walker. Strides to the middle, big man, powerful guy. They'll be hoping that he can find the boundary on a few occasions to get this first innings back on track. Difficult for Walker though now and for Swindles. Still nine overs and they're in danger, Leicestershire, of not using their allotted 50. They were bowled out in very short order at um, Sussex on Sunday. 120 all out off, I think it was 30 overs in the end. Maybe even less. They can't afford to be bowled out for 220, 230. You don't feel anyway. It does look like it's got slightly easier to bat. Somerset will be feeling if they can take Swindles in the next couple of overs, they've got a chance of really restricting. Ollie Sale trying to do just that, comes in from the Bennett end, not with that sort of delivery that's down the leg side, and although Sale hopefully raises his hands into the air, trying to influence Phil Mustard, imply that it might have flicked the thigh pad. It didn't, and uh, Phil Mustard not fooled. And you say that Mustard is a sort of different character as an umpire to, to that that he was as a, as a player. Yeah, he's been very good as an umpire. He was a great player, obviously, but he was known for, for he being... He was quite eccentric, wasn't yes, he, as a and player? And you know, kind of a joker in yeah. the changing room. Sale is in and bowls fuller this time. Swindles waiting in his crease can only push it back down the pitch to Ollie Sale. But no, he's umpiring. He's yeah, on the field slightly more straight faced um, as you can expect. But he's been he's been very good in the games that we've had with with Phil. And he's done Durham a few times then. Um, yes, yes, he's know. done Durham a few times um, up at the Riverside and in various places. I think this is the first time we've had him. Sale charges in, Swindles steps right across his stumps, gets a ball that's lifting up towards him, turns it towards square leg and with sufficient power, i.e. not too much, <laughs> manages to pick up two runs as Sale charges towards the ball at backward square and long leg comes uh, running up and neither of them can get there, Aldridge that is, in time to prevent the second Swindles, just what Ned was saying, sort of using his now, so he's not necessarily going to clear the boundary each time, but he can pick up, making ones into twos, and they add up quickly. He moves on to 54, 208 for seven. Yeah, good cricket. Just using the dimensions of the ground to his advantage to, to pick up a couple of runs. Burgle a couple of runs, really. Sale is in again. Swindles is stepping on again. He's just dropping it out towards square leg this time with uh, insufficient pace to burgle that second. Sale himself sprints across and puts in the slide. That will not delight the groundsman across the square, although there's plenty of uh, extra grass on the pitches that remain to be used only after this 11 days of cricket. Oh, first, well, first team for cricket for. Leicestershire's men on this ground left this season. The first of the four Royal London Cup games at home. And then just two more champos. Not much. I'm sure the groundsman is very thankful for that. <laughs> they have a lot of cricket to prepare and not always an abundance of pitches. Sale is in, bowls very full outside off some steered down towards third man by Harry Swindles. And he's going to take on the arm for the second and make his ground fairly comfortably actually in the end. Walker, I beg your pardon, uh, in the end, of course, it was steering it down to wide third man. I thought he looked a bit taller than Harry Swindles. <laughs> he's a Gets big man, isn't mark. he, Roman he Walker? He is, yeah, he is. I'm sure if he gets one clean, they don't tend to go anywhere but over the boundary rope. He's got a splendid uh, sort of 
dragon tattooed on his on his leg in honor of his homeland. Sale is in to him. Good length of delivery, slightly short of a good length perhaps, and Walker, no real foot movement, plays it off the pitch back down. The pitch to Ollie Sale. 211 for seven. One ball left in this 40-second over. A lone goal circles the ground. At one stage we had about, there must, we were absolutely invaded at Hove. There must have been 300 on the ground and the players looking particularly uneasy. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> As Sale is in and bowls down the leg oh. side and that's going to be four leg buys, I believe. Came off the pad, it bounced over the gloves of Stephen Davis down to the fine leg boundary for four. So a bit of a bonus for the Foxes there, 215 for seven after 42. But they were after flying ants, we were told by the right. locals. So that's hence the presence of so many of them. But uh, yeah, they were, yeah. And they didn't sort of, you know, they, they're quite big animals, oh, big birds, I should say, they know, are. those a, goals down there. When a cricket ball comes towards them, they scatter in all directions. So you end up trying to chase a, a seagull instead of the cricket ball. <laughs> Makes you look rather silly, but that was a bonus for there for, for Leicester. There's not much, Davies could have done with that behind the stumps. He's probably glad that his teeth didn't get in the way of that. As the skipper is going to bring himself on to bowl. Ben Green at the pavilion end. Ockbourne's figures three for 49 off his 10. He can be very proud of that. Absolutely. It's ben Green stays with the same field of Fine leg, deep square leg and deep mid wicket and a deep cover and third man looking maybe to go into the wicket to Swindles if he comes and slower ball and Swindles knocks into the leg side but doesn't get the angle on it to get any more than a single to mid on. Some of Leicester's pads, there's <laughs> only a couple of the pairs but they're, they're, they're a different shade of, they're a sort of really lurid green and uh, Walker is sporting a pair. They don't they're not the same green as the as the kit. You feel like if the ball hits it, the ball will change colour <laughs> immediately. <laughs> You'll be able to pick it up, that's for sure. Green, way number 54 up, and slower ball again to Roman Walker, who defends down the wicket for no run, or cut off. Umpire Adnan just telling Roman Walker to stay off the wicket as he sets off for his run. Not too many spinners to actually worry about in this game, to be honest. So They must have had instructions this season about that because they've been very keen on that, the umpires. Here comes Green outside the off stump and it's caught the outside half of the bat and goes to third man for Walker and a single. As the throw comes in from Andy Amid, who's been quiet in the last 10 overs or so, not had much work. Leicester should move on to 217 for seven. Umpiring thought thereof ever sort of floated your boat in particular or not particularly i think it's a tough job it, it is a tough job as green once more to swindle short and he bunks it away just by and on the leg side and should pick up two runs he does again good cricket again from harry swindles finding different ways to keep the scoreboard ticking especially with the advent of the stream and everyone watching you know the scrutiny they do a good job and physically as well, four days standing out there is hard, hard work. It is, it is. Uh, if I'm not in the middle batting, I'd watch from a distance. Swindles is playing a handy role here and he needs to carry on in that vein if Fester shall want a good total as Green comes in and finds the outside half again and they get a quick scampered single. Is it going to turn into two? It doesn't, good fielding. From Andy Amid at third man, keeps them to just the one run. Did Leicestershire, do you get the feeling they targeted white ball more this year? or? I think inevitably they thought it was their best chance of success. Uh, depth wise, yeah. they struggle a little bit, continue to struggle a little bit against the red ball. And I think what happened in the T20 was you know, added to the disappointment oh, on, that, imagine, yeah, on that basis. Green is going to bowl the last ball of the 43rd over here to Swindles and it's punched, sorry, Roman Walker. He punches it down the ground. 
to long on for a single. Not a bad over for Leicestershire with some good running and some cheeky singles. Moves into 2 2 1. Just for Somerset Sport as well, where Leicestershire won the last five in the T20 but didn't qualify for the playoffs because um, they committed another couple of level one offences and they had a suspended sentence hanging over them from last season that those offences triggered, which means they lost uh, two points or two points were deducted from their score, which meant they couldn't actually qualify. But in terms of what it cost them, whether or not they'd have qualified for the actual finals day, they would have played Surrey away in the quarter-finals and uh, in front of a roughly approximately full house at the Oval. They would obviously got a half share of that gate, that's how it works, plus, you know, potentially a share of finals day. But even if they hadn't qualified for finals day, it's estimated that uh, decision and that those committing those offences, if you like, triggering that suspension cost the club at least uh, a quarter of a million pounds which is an awful lot of money for Leicestershire. Aldridge is in bowls, thick outside edge of Roman Walker's bat. Skews off, rather, out into the gap uh, in front of point down to the man fielding on the... Uh, or towards the man fielding on the offside point boundary. So what One did you do taken. wrong to um, earn this sanction? Uh, there was... Naveen Ulhaq, who again finished as the top wicket taker in the competition for the second year running, bowled a uh, waist high full toss. In goes Aldridge and bowls, swindles up on his toes, blocking out in towards square leg. Thinks about the possible, took the first one quickly, but uh, no real chance of a second on that occasion, which is an automatic these days level one offence. Any such a uh, delivery is an automatic level one. I don't think that alone would have been enough to trigger the suspension, but unfortunately in the practically in the following over, which was the last over of uh, Northamptonshire innings, as Aldridge is in down the wicket goes Walker, but he saw him coming, Aldridge there, banged it in a little bit shorter, and all Walker could do was work it into the offside. Aldridge himself fielded in his follow through. They got uh, involved in a spat with Jimmy Neeson of, of Northamptonshire, and uh, Lily, who has previous in that regard, came running in and gave him a, a, a mouthful as a send-off and uh, was reported for another level one offence and that was sufficient to trigger the suspension hanging over them from the previous season. In goes Aldridge, whipped away off his legs nicely by a Roman walk, a nice piece of timing, but more or less straight to the man at a deep backward square. But and just a single, so they have earned themselves to blame. In, in a way, yes, but you know, they knew this, the situation. Um, and, uh, you know, yes, the heat of the moment, etc., etc. But, you know, you would imagine it had been drummed into them, especially regarding dissent. But uh, Lily couldn't restrain himself. And it cost the club, by their standards, a fortune. Aldridge is in, Swindles is making room, backing away, again he's followed by Aldridge, bowling well and all he can do is uh, dab it down towards third man off the bottom, I think bottom edge of the bat in the end, takes one, moves on to 61, 2 to 5 for 7, one ball to come. I missed in the, the two um, Alfie Ogborn wickets. Bold and LBW. Lily was, was bold, trying to pull a delivery. Might have got a bit of a bottom edge onto it, onto the stumps for six and the very next one in goes Aldridge and Bowles. Walker just strokes it out into the covers, who's back on the edge of the circle. So, one to be taken there means he keeps the strike. Tom Scriven was a little unfortunate to be given out leg before, looked as though it may just have slipped down the leg side. But two in two meant Ogborn finished with a three for 49 from his 10, and which is saying how proud he can be of his efforts. Absolutely. Absolutely. Two to six for seven after 40. Four. Should be an update any minute for BBC Radio Leicester, I'll, but I'll uh, you, you crack on. We'll, well see I what was happens. Just gonna say, I, they I, haven't I, always when Ned remembered was on today. Commentary, I, I questioned the wisdom of, of giving um, young Og Ogborn another spell, and uh, he's proved me categorically wrong, and Ben Green categorically right for giving him the chance to show what he can do. And the timing was good. We were saying on air that it was good that he was bowling then, not now, for example. Yeah. Well, that said, there are seven down, so they're having to be reasonably circumspect, I think, Leicestershire. But those two wickets probably 
crucial in terms of yeah, slowing really Leicestershire right down. Really s set them back on their heels. Here's Ben Green in the bowls. This is turned into the onside but straight to James Rue by Roman Walker who as I was saying earlier always conjures up visions in my mind of a, a Roman centurion marching along Hadrian's wall he is of course Welsh well, it should, it should be is Offa's Dyke or somewhere like that wouldn't it be for, <laughs> for Wales that's not Roman though is it that's pre-Roman yeah that's right always oh, oh. bold uh, in uh, most peculiar shot to, to a ball that didn't really bounce very much as uh, Walker was looking to turn that into the onside I think and uh, was late on the shot and his stumps are in a mess 226 yeah. for 8 didn't get up at all did it well that will dismay Leicestershire but not necessarily the bowlers Walker himself might be hoping for similar sort of bounce or lack thereof when he comes on to bowl himself yeah look there's George Bartlett and one of the other Somerset uh, it's uh, Lewis Goldsworthy just examining the the spot where that ball pitched and uh, when he had in had Paul Roman Walker and didn't know quite what was going on in danger this innings of rather fizzling out Big Bjorn comes in ahead of Chris Wright. I haven't seen Bjorn before. When did he join? At the start of this season, he's, he's struggled. You know, obviously his his primary role. He has played a Test match. Took five wickets in in an in innings against England in the in his solitary Test match. And he, he's quick, but struggled a little bit with the red ball. And in the end, was left out of the side after five games. And has only just got back in um, into contention. They've, they've decided he can be a factor in this. Royal London Cup and he did take four wickets in his first match in the, in the first match at Surrey looked really lively he bowls at a very lively pace and it'll be interesting to see how he gets on today but he is useful as a bat he in his first game he batted out 26 overs to save the game for the as he and Hassan Azad with nine down Batted out 26 overs to save the match against Kent. Well, he's on strike now as Green is in and bowls to him. And he strokes that nicely away through the offside. It'll be cut off by George Bartlett. So, oh, and who takes his eye off the ball, as I did as well. <laughs> as I assumed he was going to pick it up cleanly and send the throw in. And that's a very poor piece of fielding by George Bartlett. He always has a slightly languid air, but um, it's usually masks a fierce determination but on that occasion it didn't mask anything first first Langwood piece of really poor looked yeah first piece of really poor fielding by Somerset in the entire innings really 230 for eight Hendricks off the mark with a, uh, a four that he shouldn't have had and he's done it right in front of a little knot of Leicester supporters who um, who are notoriously vocal and will uh, <laughs> so we might get the Vuvuzela out for that one as this is played down the ground but cut off by Jack Brooks we haven't heard it I don't think Stench has brought it today maybe yeah, maybe it's it tooted its last it a couple of times oh have you early okay. on yeah early on but I haven't heard it um, that would normally as you say normally that would occasion a piece of fielding like that by the opposition certainly occasion a toot or two 2.30 for 8 as Green bowls to Hendricks plays this into the offside well fielded well stopped by Lewis Goldsworthy it was hit hard in his direction and he got everything behind it it's a uh, it's a noise that's greeted a few Eckersley centuries on this ground over the years that's for sure <laughs> lots of uh, comment on Twitter about uh, Alfie Ogborn grumpy get saying Alfie who well done a Ogborn Esquire Yet another quality youngster. Yeah. He certainly has looked that way as Green is in and bowls and uh, Hendricks up on his toes, just running that down to third man for his fifth run. Leicestershire's 231st run, and it's the end of the 45th over, so just five overs remaining. So 250, you would have thought, well within Leicestershire's compass, but. Yeah, we're going to have to go some. Swindles is going to have to uh, to play some big shots if they're going to get up to 270, 280. That's the problem, isn't it? 
a whether he he can afford to take the risk because it would be a risk for for Harry. He's not that sort of batsman really. With just two wickets left, two tail enders in in, in Hendricks and Wright. You know, all they can really look to do is work ones and twos and hope for the occasional really bad ball. There haven't been many of those really. Certainly not from Casey Aldridge. Three for 33 from nine for him. He's going to go round the wicket to the left-handed Hendricks. Down the slope he comes and bowls slightly short of length. Hendricks, though, has a very good eye. Goes back and just neatly works it away through square leg and, and jogs one. He looks a very capable and occasionally graceful left, left-handed bat, as, as left-handers so often do. But he, he's no fool with the bat. Big Buren. Gives the strike back to Harry Swindles on 61. And I think they clearly have forgotten again. <laughs> BBC Radio Leicester as Aldridge is in. Bowls to Swindles, who's backing away. He's followed slightly by Aldridge. He waits for the delivery and works it into the leg side on this occasion. Relatively unpopulated leg side comparatively with the men out, rather. So one is available on that side of the ground. Swindles on to 62, 233 for eight. I must say, those spectators over in the yellow seats in the full glare of the sun must have extraordinary constitutions. Aldridge is in, and Swindles wants run. If the throw hits, he dives back in. Aldridge runs down, picks up the ball, but doesn't hurl it back at the stump. So Swindles, having dived back into his crease, lies there, probably feeling slightly foolish almost, but uh, he wasn't to know that Aldridge wasn't going to let the ball go. And uh, Ben Green just having a word with his bowler there about whether he should have thrown or not. Aldridge <laughs> calculating that there was a real danger of overthrows as mid-off and mid-on were converging. Aldridge is in to Hendricks, who's turning that one down to find leg for four. Poor ball from Aldridge, a rare poor ball from him that uh, was short down the leg side and Hendricks stepped inside it and very competently and calmly turned it quite fine down to find leg for a boundary much needed boundary as far as Leicestershire are concerned that swindles diving back in like that and then the bowler not releasing always makes me smile it would call an incident playing club cricket when our uh, spin bowler bowled and their bat batter danced down the wicket had a huge m mo missed it and then just sort of kept kept going walking off towards the pavilion in goes Aldridge and bowls on to again the legs of Hendricks who turns it out to mid wicket for one this time but as he as he w went past him the spin bowler said keepers missed it and um, the, the batter without sort of turned on his heel and flung himself full length into his crease to see the stumps being rearranged but the, the wicket keeper having sort of obviously taken it cleanly and, and wiped out the bales and everything That's like that and everyone looking very naughty. surprised at him five run penalty these days isn't it <laughs> in goes Aldridge and uh, a bouncer that Swindles tries to hook and uh, I think his hand slipped because he, his bottom hand came off the bat. It was one of those, it was just quite funny, really. It was, uh, you know, he wasn't sort of, <laughs> it just made him look a bit of a, a bit foolish, really. Everybody laughed, as they say. Plenty he had to be there. Yeah. I won't tell that story again. 2.38 for eight. Plenty of runs around the country. <laughs> Warwickshire 2.97 for four against Sussex in... 48 overs. Gloucestershire going well against Durham. 3.28 for 7 in uh, 46 overs. Glamorgan 2.21 all out against uh, North Hats. Middlesex 3.21 for 6 against Knotts and that just leaves Derbyshire and Hampshire. Derbyshire 2.25 for 6. Here we got Ben Green to bowl to Hendricks turns that into the onside won't get a run as it's picked up that mid wicket 238 for six here with one ball less than four overs 23 in balls the innings. if they can get 40 off to, oh, that's a lot isn't it 40 off 23 in these circumstances 30 off 23 would be decent 260 270 it's something to bowl at isn't it it is, and Somerset have not been in great form with the bat, with the exception of the man who's bowling now. Who gets this one to duck into the left-hander. 
and you can't do anything with it except play it quietly into the offside picked up by James Rue. Good runs against Durham with Green 150 and 157 and 80 odd deliveries, yeah. Very nearly snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. He's in and bowls to Hendricks, who's down the pitch, swinging this down the ground for four. Crowd appreciating that. Good full blooded, meaty straight blow. hit. Nothing particularly classical about it. But it was on a good length from uh, Ben Green, which meant that uh, Hendricks coming down the pitch had it right in his slot. 2.42 for eight as Green bowls. This has gone up in the air. Sale is coming around underneath it, but he's not underneath it. He takes it on the first bounce. It wasn't a, a chance. Top edge on that occasion from Hendricks, who picks up a single. 2.43 for eight in the 47th over. Somerset will be reasonably pleased with this, I mean, it'll all be put into context when Somerset go out and have a bat as to how good or bad a score it is. As Green is into Swindles, who's going for a big swing, it's given us a wide, and they trot through for a single, so that's two runs. 2.45 for eight. Adam Lythe has been suspended from bowling. They've decided his action's a bit iffy. It seems fairly late in his career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think when I lost with a lively bowl for Yorkshire at Taunton. I don't think he did. I remember Ben Mike hitting for a six off the last ball in a T20 game to win it uh, here at Grace Road about three or four years ago. Green to Hendricks, who digs out a, a Yorker. It comes off the inside edge. I was looking for that in, in the extra cover area and it's gone down to long leg. 246 for eight. Still, so he's doing his job. His, uh, Buren Hendricks, 17 from 13 deliveries. Last ball coming up of the 47th. Green to Swindles, bowls, full toss. And that is, again, doesn't really go where the batsman intended. So it's just a single 247 for eight at the end of the 47th over. How many boundaries have we had? Uh, not, we've had 1, 10, 13, 17, 18, 21 fours and four sixes. All hit by uh, Louis Kimber, the sixes that is, of course. All over long on, I think, as well. Or, or mid, one sort of wide mid wicket. And then the fifth straight into long on's hands. Oh, and, uh, it comes. Broxy Ferret back into the attack, as he used to call himself on Twitter. Three for 40 for um, Casey Aldridge. So he too can be pretty proud of his efforts. Didn't mean he conceded 30 from his last four, but uh, different circumstances. Three for 10 off six. Three for 40 off 10. Brooks. He deserves a bit of reward in his final two overs. Comes in and bowls two. Swindle slightly short, clubbed out towards mid on, who doesn't take the catch. It goes through him. He dived forward, didn't get his hands underneath it, didn't get anything on it, I don't think, and it seemed to just sort of go through him. And the runs out to long on boundary for four. Well, Ollie Sales. Ollie Sale. Yeah, it was. Well. Dived forward. He seemed to see it a little bit late. Tried to get his hands underneath it. It is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, those sort of potential chances or chance. Didn't get anything on it and concedes four. Brooks is in. Swindles is hopping across his uh, stumps looking to ramp it. Brooks sees him hopping across his stumps, follows him. And uh, in the end, he just sort of bunts it out into the offside from about three feet outside off stump in the end. <laughs> almost off the cut strip, but well bowled, uh, Brooks. Too old a hand to uh, be fooled by that one. Single taken. Swindles on to 68. 250 up for the Foxes with that four that uh, Sale let through the previous delivery. So 252 now 
for eight, 12, 16 balls, legitimate deliveries, that is, left to be bowled in the innings. Brooks into Hendricks, who's also trying to ramp. He's hit in front and his leg before wicket. And Brooks has his wicket sounded uh, quite wooden, but pads do these days, and it's certain he was bang in front. Hendricks goes for a more than useful 17 of 13 or 14 balls, I guess it would have been in the end. 252 for nine. And again, Leicester in danger of not using up their allotted overs here. Chris Wright, who will be on strike when he comes in, has a job to do. Yeah, I was just going to say that's an important wicket because uh, Hendricks had the capacity to do some serious damage at the tail end of the innings. And what happens in the last two or three overs of the first innings can very often determine the, the momentum as the sides go into the uh, second innings. And if Somerset can mop up these uh, last two wickets, without too many more runs being added, they'll go into the break with their tails up. Right job to get Swindles on strike if he possibly can. I'm sure he'll be aware of that. Played an awful lot of cricket, Chris Wright. Yes, he's played for Leicestershire as his fourth county club after Middlesex, Essex and Warwickshire. Championship winner, of course, with Warwickshire and played a pretty big role in that uh, championship winning side. He and Barker were the opening bowlers, weren't they? And yep. very effective they Barker's were. Barker's still going strong down at He his is. Absolutely he is. Bowler reborn. It's Keith Barker. Having a terrific season with Hampshire. Bowling with our friend Mohammed Abbas. Brooks is in to right, looking for the orchid. Dug out by right, only as far as mid on. No chance of a single sail. The fielder. Fourteen balls left in the innings. Right waits as Brooks is in outside off stump, cut away nicely in front of point, out to the fielder on the uh, point boundary. Who is sub? It's Rue. No, it's James Rue. James Rue yeah. out there. It's been Ogborn at various times, but uh, he's down here now in front of us at, uh, at long leg. And another left arm thrower, Rue. Single taken by right, 253 for nine. Swindles will need to look for one off this final ball of the Brooks over. Brooks is in short, just turned into the leg side, well played by Harry Swindles. And uh, without any close fielders, of course, on the leg side, comfortable single taken. Brooks himself runs across and feels 254 for nine. Two overs to go, Swindles on 269. Jack Brooks' his figures, nine overs, no maidens, one for 35, which is pretty good. He's 37 if the scoreboard's to be believed. Bowling figures are... You're quite right. Are there? Absolutely right. It's a newly... I don't know what you think of the scoreboard. It's been newly designed to a, a specification from the Leicestershire scorer, Paul Rogers. He thinks it looks like a... A manual scoreboard now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. fine, yeah. Green in and bowls to Swindles, who's going to pick up at least one. One is all it will be, as Green himself does the fielding in the onside. 2.55 for nine. 11 balls remaining in the innings. And I, th I think Somerset will be reasonably happy with this. I I'd agree if they can. I wouldn't say they're miles ahead in the game, but slightly ahead. Well, these days, sort of 300 is almost sort of par, isn't it, really, on, on most pitches? I thought so. I mean, it, it kind of feels a bit that way on this. The odd one is kept low from this end, but. Green to right, who swings this down the ground Ooh. for four. No long on. Looking for Matt Renshaw down there, but Matt, Re Matt Renshaw was up inside the fielding circle, so good blow from 
Chris Wright, who moves on to five, 259 for nine. Somerset do not want to let Leicestershire get away in these last couple of overs. Green to right. This is in the block hole and played hard into the pitch and back to the bowler who doesn't field it cleanly with his left hand. He's looking to pitch the ball right up. Bowl Yorkers is Ben Green. Big, tall, strong Devonian. He looked absolutely shattered when I interviewed him at close of play on, on Wednesday after having come so close. Oh, shattered mentally as much oh, as physically. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. He's in and bowls to right, who goes for a scoop, and it's fielded. Oh, no, it's not fielded. Oh, it's poor Ollie Sale again. Oh, dear. Ben Green scratches his head. How and Ollie Sale is having a bit of a nightmare out there. He tried to get everything behind it. He was almost on his knees, wasn't he, trying to get... But it, I don't know how he managed that. Well, that's... Eight runs he's conceded in the last couple of overs, and his five overs went for 41. So it's not a return to Somerset colours that he will remember with any affection. 263 for nine. Still 10 balls remaining. The first. Yes, Yorvich. Is it question coming on? Green is in and bowls, and this is swung away into the onside. Rue is coming across, and he can't stop it either. So this is a, um, a poor over for Somerset, a very good over for Leicestershire, and who knows how much influence it may have on the final outcome. It's gone for 13. 13. One to Swindles and three boundaries to Chris Wright. So last ball of the penultimate over, green to right. He gets this one in the block hole, but again, they can take a single. So 268 for nine at uh, the end of the 49th over. Swindles on 70, but it's Chris Wright who's on 14. He'll have to stroke. Oh, no, no, no. Can they drag it up to around about 275, 280 and give themselves a, a chance? I think generally we would suggest that some of them probably favourites from, from this point on, but you never quite know. They're going to need early wickets, Lester, you, you feel, with the, with the, the new white ball quite hard. If batsmen get in yeah, to exert scoreboard pressure, it's not really enough in that respect. Five and a half runs per over. Brooks, to finish things off from the Bennett end, is in to right, who is pulling a delivery, almost stepping onto his stumps. And a little wristy pull that runs out slowly towards backward square. Aldridge jogs in and fields. Right takes one. He's done his job. Got Swindles back on strike. 15 off eight for right. Swindles 70 off 89. He's sort of guided the tail, kept the innings going pretty effectively in the end, Harry Swindles. Can he get it away for these last five balls? Brooks looking for a second wicket. Short run comes in and bowls short, slugged out to mid on and caught by Swindles, and that is the end of the innings. And it's say, is it? No, it's not Sale. Sale. It is Sale who yeah, takes the catch in the end. Uh, so good, well done for him. He managed just to come back a little bit, a couple of fielding nightmares, but he would made no mistake with that one. Two hands pointing upwards, round about chest height. Hit it fairly cleanly, Swindles, but straight to Sale, standing at mid on on the edge of the circle. So two late wickets for. Jack Brooks means he finishes with two for 38. Leicestershire finish on 269 all out from 49.1 overs. Five balls that they didn't use. Will they come to regret that? Swindles is gone for 70. He gets applauded by Chris Wright. 270 will be Somerset's target to win the game. And it's a target that they will feel they ought to chase down. But in order to do so, they're going to have to bat as a unit very much better than they have done 
so far apart from Ben Green's 157. Their batting has been mediocre at best and very poor as, as against Nottinghamshire at worst. So they're going to have to put all of that behind them, play solidly through the first 10, 20 overs while the, the white balls are still reasonably hard and doing a little bit off the seam and then take have wickets in hand for the last 25, 20 overs. Uh, so and and without getting too far behind the uh, the asking rate, that's the recipe. Whether they can do it, we will find out in around about half an hour's time. You might, you might, and I stress the word might. Just hear me do an update for BBC Radio Leicester at, uh, in a couple of minutes' time. But otherwise, suggest you uh, have some lunch and uh, rejoin us here at the Upton Steel County Ground in around about 35 minutes. Time.
Welcome back to Steel County Ground here at uh, Leicester. Day day. We're just about to come in the second part of this Royal London Monday Cup match between this and uh, Somerset. Match US out in the final over for 269, leaving Somerset 270 to win. I'm Anthony Gibson from Moving Radio Somerset, and with me is Ned Eckersley, former Leicestershire, former Durham, yes, batsman, wicket keeper. Yeah. And uh, very much offended here. Yeah, uh, yeah, from that they might be quite linked to the 70. So, this new ball count will be crucial. But the Bjindrix here with the ball in hand, they'll be looking for him to get them a few wickets. He's going to be bowling to the Somerset new boy, Andy Umid. Right epic batsman, with a reputation solid, solid team. <laughs> He's uh, he scored one of the slowest centuries of, of all time when he was playing for uh, Warwickshire. But, uh, he's joined Somerset just recently, uh, signed a contract, and uh, he scored a few runs in Somerset's warm-up games against uh, Devon and Cornwall. Product of the South Asian cricket uh, development programme, isn't he? That's Here's Hendricks in a bowl, so this is turned away into the onside for the first run. Yes, he's uh, yeah, he's been very much involved in that. Yeah, which is good to see. Getting his chance at the top of the order, wearing number one. Interesting that Somerset have gone with um, Steve Davis and uh, Andrew Umid. I'm not surprised to see Umid opening the batting because that, I think, is his natural position in the order. But the thought that Stephen Davis having kept wicket out there in blazing sunshine for 50 overs could have done with a little bit more of a rest. <laughs> and he's on strike now to... Oh, he's bowled! That's the end of Stephen Davis. Well, it was a lackadaisical sort of defensive push. He was late on the shot and he's had his middle stump ripped out. Somerset losing their first wicket from the third ball in the... The second ball, rather, of the first over. Davis has gone bold first ball by Buren Hendricks and Somerset one for one. Bit of a nothing prod outside the off stump from Steve Davis. You know, not known for his flamboyant footwork. Would he be disappointed with that? Well, he's having a miserable time, is um, Steve Davis. I'm afraid that follows. He got nine against uh, Durham. 18 against Gloucestershire and just six against So whether he will survive for Somerset's next game or whether the Gloves will go to James Rue, who knows? Because but Somerset haven't actually got very many um, batsmen in reserve. It's <laughs> just <laughs> scraping the bottom, what with injuries and 100 commitments, they've lost nine of their players to the 100. I think um, a player of Davis is class, you'd probably stick with him. I think there's runs he around would. the corner. He's, he's a bit like James Hildreth, I'm afraid. You know, they've, they've neither of them got anything like the runs you'd expect from them in the last two of them. That's really three. And um, some is now in ability. You know, which had to be a good player to play to watch. So that and they fell over. Henry Bolton and drops me on nine. First time I've, first time I've seen Hendrix. He's a big lad, isn't he? He is. Um, we played against him in the four-day game at the start of the year up in Durham. And you feel this is more suited to his, his skill set, the white ball stuff and hitting the middle of the wicket, heavy ball, as we'd say. And like we say, for the Leicestershire point of view, to get them off to such a good start, give them that energy boost at the start of the innings in the, in the heat has been just what they needed. Left arm over the wicket into bowls. Two goals where he was beaten outside the off stump. Goes through to uh, wicket keeper Harry Smalls. Yeah, not a big swinger of the ball. So he'll look to hit the wicket. Bit of pace, bit of extra bounce with his height. What does it, what sort of pace does he bowl at in, in miles per hour? Mid 80s, something like that? Probably just below, maybe uh, early 80s. Probably mid 80s if he gets himself going. But that was. Sharp enough, that last ball that yeah. sort of bounced nicely away from Lewis Goldsworthy there. Well, Somerset need to turn this around. They can't afford to lose this game. 
as Hendricks is in and bowls to Goldsworthy who jumps into a defensive shot. Keeps it out. That's the end of the first over. And a much happier over for Leicestershire, as you'll gather from the applause around the ground than it has been for Somerset. The wicket of Stephen Davis and at the end of it, one for one. Yeah, perfect start for Leicestershire Foxes and another reliable, experienced bowler coming on from the Benetton now in Chris Wright. Looking to back up the work of Buren Hendricks. He slots himself a short fine leg and they're going to have two slips to start to Chris Wright. See if there's any movement there. Bowling from down the hill. Is there actually much of a slope on the ground? Yeah, you definitely feel that bowling from the Bennett end is down the hill and pavilion up the hill. There's many a bowler whose job was just to run up the hill all day and it <laughs> caused them great distress, but here comes Chris Wright. Up past umpire Mustard and outside the off stump with a hint of swing for the first time today as keeper Harry Swindles takes the ball in front of Aaron Lilly at first slip. I wonder where Matt Renshaw was going to come in. I was in. just going to ask that. Very yeah. interesting. I mean, normally, normally um, George Bartlett would come. Well, it has been James Hilton, but he's not playing. So George Bartlett, perhaps at four. And uh, Renshaw probably at five. Right, once more in. And balls, and oh, it beats Andy Amid. Looks like it stayed a bit low. Back of a length ball that just reached Swindles on the bootlaces, but... Plenty of things happening here for Leicestershire. Been a good start from their two experienced bowlers and some said they're going to have to dig deep to get off to a, a good start and put a partnership together. Yeah, they just need to, to build some sort of a platform, Somerset. That raised the mead weight to Chris Wright as he comes in and bowls and it's off the leg, down the leg side of Swindles. Hits the stumps with a shy, but the mead back in his crease comfortably. Yeah, I'm sure... I don't know whether a bit of protection for Renshaw, they know how crucial he's going to be for, for this lineup. Slightly inexperienced, especially losing, losing Steve Davies so early. You feel like Renshaw might need to score the bulk of these runs. They can wait till the sort of 15th, 20th over before he arrives. As Wright comes in once more, short of a length. Pushed into the leg side, no run. Steve Davis actually got 61 against uh, Leicestershire when these two sides met down at the County Ground in Taunton last season. Leicestershire in the end winning quite comfortably, chasing down 326. But George Bartlett got a century of that um, in that game as well. He made 108. Looks a good afternoon to batting, so I'm sure there's a few Definitely. Somerset batters who are ready to stick their hand up as the experienced right comes in and bowls full of a length with more swing outside the off stump, left alone by Andy Amid. It's definitely a batting day, isn't it? Wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be fielding out Absolutely. There I think if this was a championship game, the toss would have been well spectated by <laughs> both sets of players. Yeah. Slaps on the back for the victorious captain. Andy Amid, very traditional setup, very side on. On one from seven. As Wright comes in and bowls, and he's blocked nicely, solid enough. To finish the second over, a maiden. And you meet, uh, born in Glasgow, he's 26, so he's been around a bit. Played for Warwickshire off and on between um, about 2016 and uh, 2017. Just played one this day game before this, and that was for Warwickshire against West Indies A back in 2017 when he made 28. So not a great deal of form behind him. But has a reputation of being uh, limpid-like, hard to shift. And Somerset could do with someone like that, as Hendricks is in a bowls of bouncer to uh, Goldsworthy's good choice. Goldsworthy was uh, subbed off as a con concussion substitute. He, was, he ducked into one from Shane Snater at uh, Chelmsford. Snater, skitty sort of fast yeah. bowler, and didn't get up as much as Goldsworthy was expecting and he ducked right into it, took a nasty blow and played no further part. Tom yeah. Banton came in and scored a century. Well, there <laughs> that's you a, go. That's a concussion sub. <laughs> <laughs> First century by a concussion sub. We understand. Hendricks bowls and 
Goes really. It's one that uh, comes back into a little bit from outside the off stump. Lewis Goldsworthy is 21. Born in, uh, in, in Truro, although he comes from just outside Camborne. But it's called Beacon. And he has done well for Somerset in this form of cricket both last season. And he, uh, when he topped the averages with 381 runs in seven innings, averaging 63 and a half, and again this season. Hendricks bowls to him and ooh, he fences at that without moving his feet as the ball was angled across him and it didn't again bounce perhaps quite as much as he was expecting. There is just a little bit of uh, inconsistent bounce in this pitch. Goldsworthy is down there giving it a, a prod. Yeah, it looks to have just gone a bit low, which will be a good sign for, for Leicestershire fans and their bowling attack. But maybe a slightly different style of bowling might be just exaggerating a bit more from Duran Hendricks. Hendricks, big, strong, tall, left arm seam, and that's jabbed down to third man. I don't think he knew a huge amount about, about that to, to Lewis Goldsworthy, but ran away along the ground through Gully down to third man. So he's underway. Two for one, Somerset in the third over. The one being Stephen Davis, who lost his middle stump to Buren Hendricks to the first ball that he received. Hendricks strong got a good backside on him for a fast bowler this is, this is turned by Umid into the onside for a single three for one I think you can already see the difference in the way Buren Hendricks is going to bowl a couple of bounces already pushing the batters back compared to the Somerset bowlers who look to pitch the ball up and hit the stumps a bit more I think that's because he's coming from South Africa, playing on flat wickets, and the guy who doesn't swing the ball, this is his his go-to, his stock is is just to hit a hard length and see if anything happens. He's there and bowls, and this is down the leg side, and will be signalled as a wide by the umpire. Yes, he, he, he'll, be, he'll be rather more used to these sorts of conditions yes. than most of the players in the Leicestershire side. I'm sure there's a few overseas players who woke up with a cracking smile this morning, looking outside. This is more like it. I, I stayed in the hotel last night, didn't have any air conditioning. My God, it was hot. <laughs> and you could have barely, you know, they only allow you to open the windows yeah, a little bit. Yeah, the tiniest. Yeah. Yeah. Hendricks bowls, and this is driven, nice nicely played by Lewis Goldsworthy. That was over pitch from uh, Hendricks and Goldsworthy just got, moved his weight into the shot so he didn't try and hit it too hard. Transferred his weight from back to front foot and the ball sped away through the offside. End of the third over, eight for one, five to Goldsworthy, two to Andy Umid. Seems to have been the batting that's been Somerset's downfall so far the first three games. So a solid start after losing Davies would give them confidence and the guys waiting in the change room to come and come and try their hand will we'll be able to have a good look at what's going on and, and figure it out from there. So Andy Amid, who's on debut. He's getting ready for Chris Wright's second over. He comes in and bowls full and it's edged, but it's past second slip on the ground down to Roman Walker at third man. They cross for one run. Again, the, the fact that uh, went all along the ground down wide of second slip suggests that there isn't as much bounce in this pitch as there was first thing this morning. It's changed colour. Yeah, it's, it's almost lost a green tinge. Here comes right. Pin balls full of a length and beats Goldsworthy outside the off stump. It's a full ball, a bit of swing. Chris Wright's been doing this for a long time. Settled into his rhythm immediately. 
but it's Goldworthy just not quite getting his footwork up to scratch early in his innings. Looks like he's a guy who likes to sit back. He's a small, small batter, short. Yeah, he's good, good square of the wicket on yep. both sides. Some good bowling from Chris Wright. As he comes in once more, and the ball is knocked into the offside, into the covers, and returned to Swindles. He's had one good knock so far in uh, this season's One Day Cup. Made 66 against uh, Gloucestershire. Held the innings together. Nobody else. Renshaw made 38 at the top, and uh, Pete, Peter Siddle 29 towards the uh, the end of the innings. But Goldsworthy did his best for his side at Northern Bristol. He's waiting now again. Right short for length, and oh, that's a that's an absolute beauty that bounces and leaves Goldsworthy, and Swindles takes it up around the shoulder height. So maybe slightly too paced, variable bounce. This is looking more and more difficult for Somerset in these opening exchanges. It's amazing how difficult batting looks in the first sort of 10, 15 overs of this, Absolutely. <laughs> these uh, 50 over white ball games and how easy it looks in the last 15 or two uh, overs also. So you feel this is a crucial, crucial part of the match as Wright once more hits the deck and it's nicely punched through the offside by Goldsworthy. It's racing away square of the wicket towards the fence and it reaches there comfortably a great piece of timing square of the wicket like you say a strong shot just leaning back and letting the ball come and guiding it away to the deep point boundary yeah he's only a little lad five foot six I think he weighs about eight and a half stones like <laughs> he's, uh, he's a wonderful timer of the cricket yeah, that was lovely he's got good head on his shoulders as well it's the last ball of the fourth over Right, coming in down the hill and short and punched again on the offside, but again hitting the bottom of the bat. Just not the pace in that delivery, but another over ticks by for Somerset and there's still one down, so that's a positive. Well, so I think Somerset, they need to get through the first 20 overs or so without more than, let's say, three down, which is more or less where Leicestershire were. Yeah, and I think the fact that Leicestershire only got 269 affords... Somerset some time. Exactly. If they were chasing, you know, 330, 340, you'd have to have a couple of overs consolidation, but then start the attack again. But they've got time to build an innings, and and the run rate's not going to get too far ahead of them. There isn't quite the scoreboard pressure, at least not yet. As uh, Buren Hendricks is going to go around the wicket to Andy Mead. He's up for player and me plays on a bugle. Shot, just sit down off a horizontal bat down to a backward point. Doesn't get a run. Be interesting to see what um, what part Andrew and me plays in the county championship run in. Some have got Imam Ul Haq joining them for the last four games. Be a good signing. Yeah, Pakistan. Batsman. Hendricks bowls and Mead covers up, plays it into the onside. Won't get a run. Well, if he has half the effect that the other Pakistani overseas at Derbyshire, Sean <laughs> Sood, <laughs> Sean then Sood yeah. he'll be worth his weight in gold. So. Well, in the championship, as in this, Somerset need runs at the top of the order. They just started to, just before the break, they seem to be starting into some reasonable form with uh, Goldsworthy and Banton and uh, James Rue all scoring centuries this is turned away by Umid nice into the onside and it will it will be cut off yeah. away it just a good piece of film out. it's Nick Welch out there Nick Welch they take two runs 15 for one in the fifth over. Buren Hendricks is one for ten so far. Just got the one slip now. Short mid wicket coming in to cut off exactly the shot that uh, Umid has just played. Hendricks is in the bowls and hits it to that man. And, uh, 
Aaron Lilly at short mid wicket. Won't get a run. How many people do you reckon are here? It's like to look like a thousand, maybe just over. Yeah. But it's hard to tell. There's a few in the in the boxes at the back there, in the hospitality tent. So yes, he's staying well out. The yellow the seats on the far side of the ground are, are um, the Upton Steel stand, just going into shadow now. Hendricks bowls. This is driven back down the ground, takes out in the middle stump. That's unlucky for Andy Umid. He tied that. That's a nice shot. It was. He ripped the uh, middle stump out of the ground. Could not have been straighter. <laughs> Looks like anything over pitch from Hendricks is, is what they're looking to attack. A few times he's he's looked to bring the stumps into play. He's been punished, so maybe be dragging his length back in the next couple of overs. 15 for one as Umid is in around the wicket and set Umid. Hendricks is in around the wicket bowling to Umid. The heat is uh, getting to me. It's, it is very hot. <laughs> it is starting to warm up, isn't it? It is. 15 for one after five overs. So a steady start for Somerset. I wouldn't have thought that uh, um, Leicestershire had lost a couple of wickets by this same stage in their innings. So by that yardstick, Somerset just slightly ahead. But I think this is a could be a, a close finish. This yes, I think if they managed to get through this new ball, Somerset pair and one or two down, it looked like batting became much easier in the middle overs. So can Leicester should do any more damage at the top of the innings? Well, Chris Wright is trying to do that as he comes in bowls lane. Well. Yes, and the equation is that Somerset do not bat deep. You've got Ben Green coming in at number seven, and then you've got the bowlers. Yeah. Um, Casey Aldridge can bat. The others really haven't got any any batting form at all. So it uh, it's really up, down to the top order to uh, to get the bulk of the runs. Chris Wright is trying to get rid of that top order as he bowls, and Goldsworthy blocks to backward point. Rishi Patel doing the fielding. You can tell that they've discussed this this new ball period as a as a batting group it goes against what we've seen in modern one day cricket but it's nice to see the play in the conditions well and, and adjusting yes it's, uh, certainly with, with these white balls it's very much easier to uh, to accelerate later on in the innings right from the Bennett end and he, it, I think it hit the thigh pad and gone past slip for a leg by. We'll see, yes, umpire Mustard raises his leg to signal the leg by. He raises his leg rather more than some umpires, but then I suppose he's a he's relatively young umpire. I would say, yeah, let's see in 20 years' time if he's. <laughs> Do you have favourite umpires? There's, Do you have ones that you dread? Oh, you, don't, you don't have to reveal who they are. Yes, I think I think many people do. <laughs> I think you, there's definitely guys who have favourites. I know, especially bowlers. But Chris Wright coming in one more time. It's clipped away down to fine leg by Amid as it is bobbled on the boundary by Hendricks, but he gathers it at the second attempt to keep them down to a single. It was nearly a, a dreadful misfield, but he recovered. I used to have a league table of, of umpires provided for me by Steve Pitter, um, showing the number of LBWs on average that they gave per innings, which was very, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the bowlers definitely know those stats for sure. <laughs> Chris Wright into his third over as he hits the deck and Goldsworthy leaves well alone again. He's faced 18 balls and looks to be gaining in confidence. As he gets his eye in. Umpire Mustard just looking at the footholds there for Chris Wright, edging towards no ball territory. This game is nicely poised. Can one side take advantage of this new ball? 
it's got right in the bowls and goals. Well, he's beaten on the inside edge this time. A great end to the sixth over by Wright, but not quite the wicket. Goldsworthy survives. Almost cut him in half, that one. Sh came back sharply from outside to off stump. Goldsworthy didn't know much about it. Ball still moving around when he had uh, six overs with it. Somerset just need to uh, hang in there until it loses some of its hardness. It won't lose any of its shine because they don't really have any sh shine as such white balls, do they? They don't. Especially now you use two at yeah. one at either end. Here's Hendricks in a bowls to Umid. Just drops it into the offside. Yes, it's. Um, I don't know. Do you think white ball cricket would be better if they played it with red balls, or is? is I don't think so. I think it would become slightly too much in favour of the bowlers. Yeah, I think so. It would kind of go back and back too far from yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a batsman's game limited over cricket. It is. Hendricks is in the bowls. And good ball on the stumps and defended by Umid. I don't think I'd be averse to it going back to just one ball. I think the the skill of bowling with re reverse swing that used to yeah. be a real staple of the one-day game yeah. would be interesting. I think with the ball only being 25 overs old from either end, come the end. It, is a possibility that maybe they look at that again, but I mean, I think they want fours and sixes more than anything else. Exactly. Yeah. Hendricks bowls and Mead comes immaculately forward in defence to uh, good ball from Hendricks. He's living up to his reputation thus far. And you Mead six runs from uh, 20, Goldsworthy nine from 18 balls, 17 for one. In the seventh over, 270 is the target. Yeah, no one's been able to come to the wicket and get the pace of it immediately, even Kimber and Swindles for yeah. Leicestershire. Hendrix bowls Umid, runs that down to third man. Chris Wright is down there to do the fielding. It's a single. On Twitter, usual Somerset pessimists. <laughs> uh, Clive Baker says, when Anthony says that's the end of Davis, could it be literally? <laughs> well, Holly Esquire says, the writing's on the wall. Matt Powell says of Davis, I think he's past it, sadly. <laughs> harsh, harsh. Well, I, know, down there. I know, I know. Somerset. Here's Hendricks in bowls and Goldsworthy. Defend. Sam Shane is one of the real pessimists. Like the turning of the soil and night follows day, Davies can't bat. <laughs> Ouch. Well, will sanity prevail playing Rue and another young player for experience? Well, I think, Sam, if Somerset lose this game and are thus effectively out of the Royal London Cup, we may see some experimentation with the younger players. But as I said just now, there aren't that many younger players on, uh, on whom Somerset can call. 18 for one as Hendricks is in a bowls and this is played square at the wicket by Lewis Goldsworthy. It's the end of the seventh over. Nine to Goldsworthy, seven to a mead, 18 for one. It's I think it's the same wherever you go. Okay. You know, the county loyal supporters. Absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, all, yeah. It's, it's, someone says, oh, blimmin' old Somerset, they can't bat and they can't bowl and they can't field. And yet when they win a game, oh, yeah, Somerset are the best team yeah. in the country. <laughs> Sports fans are the best. <laughs> but I think it's always difficult. You don't want to just throw youngsters into the game no. if they're not ready. You don't want to, you know, scar them with, with bad experiences when you know that they're not quite ready for, for that level. They're ready, absolutely go for it. But absolutely right. Chris Wright is bowling to Andy and me once more, and he blocks very nicely down to mid on. It's looked very solid in view of a lead tip. Can he ex his stroke by just to get that run rate ticking a bit faster? It's currently at 2.6. The 
rather county championship-esque feel to this as he's still got to slip in and a ring field on either side the fine leg and third man down the hill once more comes Chris Wright and it's in the leg side and tucked away very nicely by Amid will be pushing the two and maybe three as Hendricks comes round from fine leg and gathers and a good return stops the third run yeah, I, did, I think they could have, could have gone a bit harder there. The uh, batters put the field on a bit more pressure. Surrey are very good at that. But, you know, they they they, set, they take always take the first first run hard. Yeah, and, crucial. You know, and and it it does put pressure on on the fielder. With the ball in hand, it's Chris Wright once more. It's full of a length and driven by a mid. Then pierces the gap on the offside as Welch runs after it but there should be three he flicks back and they do touch down and come back once more and just a slight breaking of the shackles for Andy Amid in the last couple of deliveries will make him feel a little more comfortable as he moves on to 12. Yeah he didn't time that as well as he uh, would have hoped to but uh, almost brought him a boundary thanks to the uh, lightning fast yeah. outfield. All right I'll, I'll vacate as uh, Richard will come in and do his uptake. Chris Wright. 7.4 overs here. And he bowls and let go again by Goldsworthy. He seems to be playing Chris Wright with the respect he deserves and trying to get through his spell. Goes through to wicketkeeper Swindles. Kimber, shirt untucked, claps nonchalantly from first slip. Wonder whether he'll get any work with his off spin at any point today. Maybe it's his day. Maybe he'll come and have a career best with the ball too. Maybe Lewis Hill will be thinking, get him involved. It's right once more comes past the stumps and it's full of length and driven nicely by Goldsworthy. Just one or two bounces to Aaron Lilly at extra cover as Richard Ray is back next to me. Thank you, Ned. Just leap ahead just in case the update is uh, on time hasn't been so far but you never quite know first for everything still no clouds in the sky a little bit of haze away to the southwest as uh, Wright comes in and Bowles goes past the outside edge with a ball that just bounces and leaves Lewis Goldsworthy, but it does not take the edge. End of Wright's over his fourth, none for 11 for him. 23 for one off eight. Somerset chasing 270 to win. These days, a very gettable score. Well, change of bowling at the pavilion end. Just the four overs from Buren Hendricks. And he's going to be replaced by his fellow South African, Vian Mulder. Yeah, it's been a good start by the Leicestershire bowlers. The overseas pros doing the business as we speak. Seven wickets for Hendricks in the competition. Four at three, two at middle six, non at uh, but that one. Get a little Mulder right arm seam. Strong. Swing hits the pitch quite hard. Early. 70s, uh, sorry, early 80s sort of pace, runs in and bowls onto the legs of Andy Amid, who sort of plays it off the back foot as though it kept a little bit lower than he expected. And he's a tall man and just sort of bent at the knees slightly, flexed at the knees and rather shoveled it out to mid-wicket. And that Nat Bowley's on. He's uh, one of the substitutes fielders. I'm not quite sure who's off at the moment. I always look for whoever's just been bowling. <laughs> There's Bjorn, Big Bjorn, is he, out, is he out there still? I'm not sure. Mulder is in straighter this time and again he looks slightly discomforted. Umid, it maybe came back into him. Is there just a little bit of early seam with the... Yeah, I think we've seen early in this innings slightly more variable bounce than we did in the first innings. And maybe some swing from Chris Wright as well, which is which is always a handy skill to have at the top of a, a white ball innings. But they seem to be just trying to get through this opening spell to the Somerset batters. 
Mulder is in, short of its length, short of the ideal length, and he stayed on the back foot, and it just swung past the outside edge again of Umid's bat into the gloves of wicketkeeper Harry Swindles. Small wonder, then, that the slip Kimber is staying right where he is at the moment. Update is, I'm told, coming up in about half a minute's time. It's just got the feel of a rather old-fashioned kind of one-day game where you get through the new ball and keep wickets in hand. Mulder is in. Umid is playing firmly as far as Hill at mid-on, who rather scrambles to his right to make the stop, but it's a no ball. Ooh. Can't afford many of those. Leicestershire free hit time. They had real issues with the no with the no balls. Early what a this feeling season. this is I for Andy Umid. Quite a few up at Durham, actually, as I, as I recall. With the red ball, but yeah, Umid has a free hit now. Chance to just break his shackles a little bit here. No changes to the field, of course, allowed as Mulder is in and bowled short and uh, pulled off the back foot, slugged baseball style out to deep mid wicket for four by Umid. Freed him up completely there, and uh, he will feel a lot better for that. 29 for one, Umid on to 16. Goldsworthy has nine. Mulder is interned by Amid towards mid-wicket. Good afternoon, BBC Radio Leicester. 270 is Somerset's target, thanks mainly to 100 from Louis Kimber, his first in list day to go with his first in first-class cricket last month. What a prospect the 25-year-old youngster is for the Foxes. And there were 70 also for Harry Swindles. Whether it's enough... That 270, 269 is what they scored. 270 is Somerset's target. Remains to be seen. The wicket flattening out under this blazing sun down here at the Upton Steel County ground. They have picked up a wicket, the Foxes. Steve Davis, who's been a thorn in their side for both Surrey and Somerset over the years, was bowled uh, by uh, Buren Hendricks possibly off the inside edge without scoring one for one at that stage. But Andy Umid and uh, Lewis Goldsworthy have played, not without alarm since then, but they've managed to get through to the end of the ninth over without being parted. Somerset 31 for one now, needing 270 to win the game. Back with you online. You missed just one delivery that uh, Umid sort of stroked out, but only as far as mid off end of the over. It is going to be Chris Wright to continue in his opening spell as he comes past umpire Mustard and bowls! Lewis Goldworthy has dragged on middle stump out of the ground once more as Chris Wright receives five and power back team is well with well for over level fire will the two Somerset batters now have found the inside edge and had their stumps made a mess of 31 for two in the tenth over is it going to be one of those games when you never quite know, no, neither side is, establishes a dominant position until the very a, end. Yeah, there was a little partnership building. They haven't managed to capitalise, but you get a feeling that this guy walking to the wicket, Matt Renshaw, is going to play a huge role in this game. If Somerset had to go on and chase this, this target, obviously a classy player, overseas pro, test cricketer. Leicester should have the perfect combination of Chris Wright and Veard Mulder bowling to Do try and take the big scalp. Inside edges imply that it's a little bit of lack, lack of pace or something? In yeah, the, I would expect wicket. so, yeah, definitely. Um, I think the guys would probably come off and say it's maybe too paced. Yeah. Uh, some go through and some don't. But there's been a few today already, definitely, that have caught the inside edge and and gone back onto the stumps. So Renshaw, as he takes guard, experienced cricketer now will, I'm sure, have his plans in place. Hasn't really fired in this comp yet. Three innings, 65 runs, best of 38. So they need him here. 
Somerset to, to make a, a really big contribution. They do competition on the line really for Somerset here. This is what you need your overseas pro for and he's crouching his stance now, low hand. To face Chris Wright. Comes in and bowls and it's outside the end. It's fairly squash. The better good point. Again, early wickets. It's crucial. Leicestershire have managed to grab a couple so far. Still with one slip, a sort of catching extra cover. Aaron Lilly waiting for any aerial shots as Wright delivers and solidly blocked by Renshaw. That looked compact and confident from the Australian overseas player. I always forget he was, he was born in Middlesbrough. <laughs> yes, <laughs> could have played for England, that's right. Yeah, that was the, the chat when he got picked, wasn't that? Yeah. Went to uh, the family, obviously, went to Australia when he was, uh, sorry, New Zealand first and then Australia when he was relatively young. He's got that Aussie style, low hands, picks up and Steve Smith-esque leave through to keeper Swindles. Interesting to see how Renshaw goes about his innings. There won't be much spin on show, so this is pretty much the pattern of the, the next 30 or 40 overs. Yeah, this is another bowler's Tom Scriven, who's got a really nice change of uh, pace from what we've seen so far. Roman Walker. Chris Wright. Knees pumping and bowls, and oh, it's outside the line, maybe. It was an LBW appeal. Oh, I thought that was off stump. That was a big LBW just going across the stump and missing the off, missing the off start. Oh, it's a close one. It's Swing a close back one. In as well. Oh, deepers. Did it just pitch out? No. Oof. Heart in mouth time there for Somerset supporters. Leicestershire what was wrong must have that? thought they had their man, but he survives. There's one ball to go. Chris Wright's fifth over. He's got one for eleven. He's bowling really, really nicely. A good rhythm from the Bennett end, up past the stumps, left arm up in the air and let go outside the off stump. Renshaw sees off his first five balls and remained 31 for two in the 10th over. Swan back in to the left hand. Perilously close. Phil must have perhaps explaining. I don't know whether he's one of those umpires. You'd know whether some umpires will explain why they didn't give a decision, and the others prefer not to. Yeah, most of them do explain. Okay. As long as they say it confidently enough, you tend to think, okay, they knew what they were doing. Some will say, oh, I'm not sure, just didn't look right. You think, oh, great. <laughs> this doesn't give me any pleasure. It wouldn't make the bowler feel any better. No. In goes Vian Mulder squares up Andy Amid, who again sort of flexes the knees as he plays that one thick outside edge along the ground. Down towards third man, takes one and probably relieved to do so. Stand and watch for a little while. 19 to him off 32 balls. Brings Renshaw down on strike to face Mulder. So 31 for two off for the power play. Better than 18 for three as Leicestershire were. So I could say at the moment Somerset have their noses in front. Long way to go. Round the wicket goes Mulder and bowls to Renshaw. Thumps into the thigh pad as on the back foot he tries to work it out through square leg. Doesn't get anything on it. What's Lewis's, Lewis Hill's use of bowlers short spells? Mix them up or does he tend to bowl them in, in partnerships? If somebody's bowling well, he will leave them on. He, he is prepared to leave them on. I would imagine Chris Wright might bowl even a couple more, to yep. be honest. Um, tends to get him through. Doesn't like to have necessarily have him bowling at the end. But Hendricks, they will want to keep for towards the end. Mulder is in, edged by Renshaw down to the third man boundary for four. Kimber at slip fell rather than dived across to his left. Couldn't get, might have got a hand to it and slowed it a little bit, but 
basically. It was well wide of him, and it was probably short, but it was a genuine edge from Matt Renshaw and uh, slightly fortunate the Australia international to pick up his first runs in that manner. Kimber. Yeah, you feel that Leicestershire are close here. Their fielders are up and about. They feel that they've got a, a huge opportunity. Kimber's following the ball. He's gone wider. In goes Mulder and solidly behind that one, leaning forward, almost walking forward into that defensive push. Renshaw. Always a bit dangerous. You can see it going right between Swindles. There is a big enough gap now for it to go between Swindles and uh, and Kimber. They're both marking their position carefully, <laughs> so you can at least you've got some evidence. That's where you told me to I was there. Go, I did stay there. Yeah. <laughs> Mulder is in. Wrencher is turning him nicely down to fine leg delivery that sort of swung in a little bit towards leg stump. Helped on its way. Tickled on its way by Wrencher. Take one. It was worth first instant game to listen. There's um, being accused of moving, got used to <laughs> making really big marks, saying, look, that's exactly where you told me to Absolutely. be. Absolutely. Just as long as you didn't do it on me. the square, yeah. that's when you get into real trouble. Yes. The groundsman sees a big scratch on the square. You're getting a good telling off. Be a knock on the door of the dressing room. Yeah. Mulder back over the wicket to Omid, who is turning it firmly off middle, <laughs> middle and leg perhaps, but nonetheless off the, certainly off the stumps, but only as far as Aaron Lilly at mid-wicket. Lilly is, I guess, an option for if Hill wants to try and fiddle an over or two of off-spin ditto Kimber. Now Bowley's uh, jogging off now. So it was Bjorn Hendricks who, who went off, perhaps change his bowling boots or something. Change of shirt. It's always nice for a bowlers in the field. They get to just trot off after they've had a spell. The poor wicketkeeper swindles there. Can't put his gloves down and go, I'm just going off for an over or two here, please, Skip. I'm sure he's in. would have no intention of doing that, but it is Chris Wright. He's going to carry on. As Richard said, he's putting such a nice spell here with the new ball. Same field, one slip, Kimber at sort of one and a half, two. Is Wright is in and he bowls and Renshaw off the bottom of the bat. Doesn't know where the ball's gone. Where is the ball? Where is it? Is it in his pad? Uh, he's yep. in his hand. He picked it <laughs> his pad before then, so no chance of a handled ball just yet. Have you seen that ever? I have. Twice. Played I twice. I must have seen it then, have I? Sean Dixon played yes. at Kent. Yes, yes. And Very early one season. Maybe the first Champo game yeah. of 20. 13 or 4 a long time was ago now. might have been rainy mm, it was rain. it was Chris Wright he has his hand on the ball but legally and he bowls and Renshaw squirts it away and good diving stop by Rishi Patel just to keep the pressure on at backward point and then the previous one before that was at Derbyshire Chetazwa Pajara handled the ball might be an understatement he slapped it to point just in a moment of madness it's going to land on his stumps and Gave it a little right hook there, and he was well on his way. I think he walked before he was even given out. So, yeah, twice I've seen it, which is a bit bizarre. That's right. Hair flowing. Comes in, and Renshaw clips away just for the one to deep square leg. He comes in. Nick Welch. Not too busy so far out there on the far boundary as we look at it. Dixon sort of knocked it off the stumps as well, didn't he? As he as did, I yeah. Turning. Yep. Here are Hill, hands the ball back to his senior bowler, running number 31. Amid on debut has done a pretty good job at the top of the innings just to steady the ship. He's facing up once more to right, who comes in and bowls, and again a solid defensive shot. High front elbow, very classical looking player. You can just kind of feel the tension around. Both teams know this is a big game. Speaking to Paul Nixon before the game, he was excited, as you can imagine, to try and get from to three wins out to four. Just puts you in such a good position. So, 
Can they make the most of this position? Hamid just waving his bat up and down as Wright comes in and bowls. And he's beaten him on the inside and it's just gone over the top of middle and off stump. Well, they have some tough games coming up. Not that this isn't a tough game. They're all tough games. So Warwickshire, Nottinghamshire, the good sides that yep. take some beating. So wins in the bank at this stage. Especially with four home games, can they make Upton Steel ground like a fortress as Wright comes in once more and bowls and it's clipped away, but there is a man out now at deep square leg. He just picks up and delivers back to Harry Swindles to end the over. They have struggled a little bit to, to get over the line at home. Certainly not managed it well, home or away in the county championship so far. T20, in the end, they found a way. And then it was a little bit too late. Just a couple early on at home badly. Obviously, this is the first home game of the of the Royal London Cup, so dearly live, love to win in front of their own supporters. Get a big crowd in on Sunday against Warwickshire. Just a quid to come into the ground. Mulder is in to Omid, who is all care and attention. Nice high left elbow as he defends that one off stump back down the pitch to the South Africa International. Leicestershire is slightly nervous about the fact South Africa are here at the moment, preparing <laughs> for the test series. You know, yes. May just be one injury away from a call-up. And I'm assuming they lost their warm-up game today as well, so they might be looking around for some informed cricketers. This is one of them. Mulder is in fuller this time, but again, checking the drive Andy Amid making sure right behind it stripped it out to Hendricks who throws it very awkwardly to Harry Swindles that could easily have gone for overthrows and Swindles looks well gives Hendricks something of an old-fashioned look shall we say having having managed to stop it I'm not sure Harry could give Buren Hendricks too many looks there It'd be a no. very one-sided affair wide at slip as in goes Mulden bowls off the back foot looking to force but again wasn't quite there to be driven away and Mead managed to pick out fielder in the covers 39 for two Mulder keeping things fairly tight at the moment in this over anyway Hill wanders cross has a, has a word with him I think he's a, he's a, he sort of governs by uh, agreement. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He yep. He's not. He's not one for sort of wrapping out orders. In goes Mulder and bowls, and again off stump, line and length. And you heard the call of no from Umid. He dropped it out into the offside. Hendricks, the fielder. He's always had a good cricket brain, Lewis. When I played here with him, he was always a good thinker about the game and read the game pretty well. So I think they've. They've got a good one, a good person to have in charge in what could be a close game where his calls, his bowling changes and field placings could could make somewhat of a difference. Mulder in, bowls, line and length and off stump again. Again, Umid can only defend it out into the off side. Scriven, I think, is the fielder out there at the moment. Nobody else warming up, so... Right, it looks like he's going to continue. He may even bowl through. He has done it once or twice in this competition. But yeah. it's, it, in heat like this, it is that a bit different. That would be a great effort. I'm sure he would then go and well earn break himself. Mulder in. Bowls short this time. Pulled by Umid. Got on top of the bounce and uh, gets it out towards deep mid wicket. It's going to be just the one, though. There is. The sweeper out there, Nick Welsh in front of a rapidly, f well, not rapidly filling, but uh, popular seats have definitely many more people have come into the ground this afternoon. I would say the weather, because there is more shade over there in front of those trees, but green seats as well in front of the Turner Indoor Centre are reasonably well populated now. Crowd increased nicely. So maybe people have moved across a bit. A nice. Friday evening at the cricket in the sunshine. 
It's been free entry after T uh, in the county championship. Oh, nice. Which is good. Yeah. They are going to change the bowling from yeah. the Bennett end. It's going to be Roman Walker. Another tall, fast bowler. He'll be looking to attract the air in his height. Whether or not set can get top of him will be he does have pain. Can be slightly erratic as he comes in the box first ball. Taxing the legs above. with just taking a single. Aaron Lee coming in the deep square leg boundary to tie up. It's interesting with, with Walker. We've had him up here a, a few times for, for the cricket show and occasionally for commentary as well. And he said himself when he hasn't really pulled up any trees bowling for the second team and he's changed his approach slightly whether it, under the influence of Alfonso Thomas, who's, who's come in as Leicester's bowling coach from Somerset, of course. Yeah. Um, just sort of not concentrating so much on pace as, as on movement. He comes in once more and it's down the leg side and Renshaw tries to pull it away, but the umpire has his arms outstretched. Umpire mustard. It's a wide ball. They'll get an extra run for us. Swindles has thrown his glove off and is bent over. Just feeling his fingers. Think he's going to be okay. It's a nasty blow, but he's back up, glove in hand, ready to go. Oh, he's not quite ready to go yet. He's just putting Roman Walker back to the top of his mark, but he is ready to bowl now as he bounds in and coils and bowls, and Amid solidly back down the wicket to mid on. Doesn't look happy, does he? It swindles. No, but as a keeper, I know maybe sometimes if you don't, it's always nice to just show everybody that maybe that one hurt a little. <laughs> it's squeezed through you. And no man on the deep cover boundary as Walker comes in and bowls and he punches down the pitch and it's well stopped on his follow through by Roman Walker. Flings the ball to Captain Hill, who goes about. I don't really know if he can shine these balls anymore without saliva, or so we'll, he's trying his best. You're right, they're, su they're such odd things, aren't they? The, 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 whatever the white stuff is made of seems to sort of almost flake off, yep. doesn't it, after a certain The lacquer, yeah, just crumbles off as Walker comes in and bowls another good length ball, and Amid is happy just to knock it away into the extra cover region for no run. Presumably it's a sort of dye of some kind, but the leather just doesn't absorb it in the same way. No, but Chris Wright did get to swing yeah. the ball early up, which was which was good to see. And I don't think there'll be much now, so it's going to be about patience and, and consistency, maybe the odd change of pace. It's been a good start from Walker, who comes in and bowls to Amid, and he straight back down the wicket once more. Hasn't looked to up his tempo too much in his inning so far, Andy Amid. He might just need to go up the gears, maybe just one or two in the next few overs or so, just to put the Leicester bowlers under some pressure. The run rate required up to 6.3. Not out of hand, but... No, he's doing a solid job. If he's seeing off these new balls, one from each end, of course, then we know how quickly the rates can increase and the slip's coming out now. Kimber. For the last ball of the over, he's looking just to get out of the over with minimal damage. Walker, as he comes past the stumps and bowls straight, and Amid once more blocks into the mid-wicket region. Good start from Roman Walker, following up Chris Wright's opening burst. Leicestershire hunting for the third wicket. 43 runs for two losses Davies and Goldsworthy the men to go you really wouldn't want to call it at this stage would you it's uh, very much in the balance 14 overs but just the two wickets I think they'll, be, they'll feel okay in the Somerset dressing room if not particularly massively confident but they'll be okay with the way things are going with the white ball Softening a little bit, certainly the lacquer coming off it. Mulder's staying around the wicket to the left-handed Matt Roger is in and bowls entries into ground about four and a half in front of Louis Kimber. He's about 
on those third slip, standing on his own there, may, maybe second actually, two and a half, something like that. And it, he formed the long barrier in as much as he was able to, the ball going towards him quite quickly and managed to stop it, not cleanly. More of a run stopper there at the minute, the ball not carrying. Ah, it's a, yeah, an odd one. Hands on knees as in goes Mulder, bowls and closing the bat face on that defensive shot is Renshaw. Down the pitch on the on side. Mulder runs across but then runs over the ball, lets it roll through to Buren Hendricks, who puts a little bit of sweat on it and then tries to polish it in as much as he can get any polish onto the ball. There was a little bit of swing evident early, even in these conditions, not so evident now. As Mulder is in bowls and again turning the, turning his wrists on that defensive push as he walks into the delivery. Renshaw pushes it out to Buren Hendricks at mid-on. No run. One or two clouds, tiny little, tiny little clouds have appeared away sort of to the southeast, but uh, very, very little clouds. Might indeed. bring in one second's respite from <laughs> the sun. Glad we have the fan up here, that's for <laughs> yeah. sure. It goes. Mulder and bowls onto the legs of Renshaw and he's able to turn that one down wide of long leg, long chase around the boundary uh, down there. And the throw comes in, good one and it's just two. I think maybe could have picked up three. But good work down there on the boundary. Not quite sure who that is in the distance. I'd have to get my binoculars out and have a look. It could be Roman Walker down there just after his bowl is over. Probably not what he needed. Logi That's him. Logically, it's him there or a third man, isn't it? But uh, yeah, looks like Roman. He ran quite athletically. Mulder in bowls again. Renshaw is playing slightly across the line, but with a huge amount of confidence. Middles it, but he had the weight on as he turned it straight out towards Hendricks at mid on. Mulder mops his brow. Who can blame him? Run rate staying at about three at the moment, but as I say, I don't think Somerset would be too unhappy with the way things are going. Mulder is in bowls. Renshaw solidly forward, head right over the ball. No big stride, but he's a tall man and leans forward and blocks it back down the pitch. All the fields in his follow through, end of the over, 45 for two, Umid 22, Renshaw 8. Ned uh, departs briefly, we'll be back shortly, and uh, Anthony Gibson from BBC Radio Somerset reappears at my side. Microphone and head headphones in hand. Anthony, you, you should know, prefers the classic BBC handheld microphone. As, as sported by the best commentators over the years. John Arlott, people like that. Roman Walker goes past the outside bat. He half thought about trying to force it away through the offside, but bounce and a little bit of swing. Shows my age, doesn't it? <laughs> Using the old lip mic. <laughs> but I've, I've always been happier with it. I used it in the first few, but I used to, uh, at the end of a championship game, my, my right arm used to be so tired that I thought, oh. They, they I get blisters me. on my right elbow sometimes. <laughs> he goes Walker Bowles, I won't ask why. Comment um, to where it's commentator's oh, okay. elbow, you see, because you're, you're leaning your elbow on the, on the desk while holding the you have, to get, you have to get some pads or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. no. I <laughs> oh, updates time must be the top of the hour as the news comes into our headphones 45 for two saying uh, Anthony that I think the crowd has begun to fill out a little bit there seem to be quite a lot more now in the seats as in goes Walker driven pleasantly by Umid but not sufficiently for me to get past Hill at uh, mid off moves smartly to his left I think, I think they've migrated from one side of the ground to the other here comes the update 
needing 270 to win. Somerset have moved on to 45 for two. 15 and a half overs have been bowled. So they're behind on the run right. Le Leicestershire are keeping things tight. But Somerset won't be unhappy. Always easier to accelerate with wickets in hand than if you haven't. So they do need another breakthrough or two of the Foxes. They'll be hoping scoreboard pressure begins to build. The two wickets to go, those of Steve Davies, who was bowled off the inside edge by Bjorn Hendricks, and Lewis Goldworthy, who was bowled in much the same manner, but by Chris Wright. 31 for two at that stage. Off 10 Leicestershire's innings built around a century from Louis Kimber and 70 from Harry Swindles. The game in the balance with Somerset 46 for two. Back with the online. I'll finish off this over and then Anthony will come on at the pavilion end. Round the wicket goes Walker and Renshaw. Again, a little bit squared up by that one. Might just have straightened a fraction. Works it back down the pitch on the onside. No run. Yeah, I was just looking where um, Leicestershire were after 20 overs. 79 for four they were. So Somerset. Yeah, wickets in hand is within good. Within striking distance of that. Yeah. And they have the inform skipper to come. Walker is in. Bowles, Renshaw, back foot, defensive shot, off, off stump, out into the covers. There is no run. That is the end of the 16th over, 46 for two. Renshaw has eight of 20. Umid, 23 of 52. Yeah, Renshaw very restrained by his own standards so far. He does like to feel bat on ball naturally, naturally an aggressive striker of the cricket ball, like a lot of left-handers, very strong through the covers. Tall, powerful man. Doesn't like to be tied down. Andrew the... Mead, I think, is a very different temperament. I don't think he's too bothered. 23 from 52. As Mulder is in from the pavilion end to bowl to Mead. Beats him as he's forward. Comes off the pad. I think he got his pad outside the line. Off stump. Got in a good stride. Vian Mulder in his fifth over. None for 17. A successful bowlers for Leicestershire. Hendricks one for 11. Chris Wright, steady as ever. Six overs, two maidens, one for 13. Sometimes it just need to start accelerating. Not to try to rotate the strike as much as possible, especially with a left hand and right hand combination in, but that's driven straight up to Hendricks at mid off. Crowd just beginning to come to life. One or two shouts of encouragement from around the ground but it is murderously hot out there and I presume they're going to have a drinks break at some stage fairly soon it was they had a big one at 25 overs didn't they but that is a while away Mulder right arm over the wicket and this is pulled and is caught caught at uh, mid wicket and that is the end of Andrew Umid Scriven is the catch. Caught by Scriven off the bowling of Mulder for 23. And, uh, well, Umid tried to accelerate and perished in the attempt. 46 for three. A promising debut, though, I think, for, for Somerset. He showed his qualities as a solid opening batsman. 55 balls he faced. He's seen off much of the threat of the of the new balls threat in in terms of sort of swing or a little bit of movement, and he'll be he'll be disappointed having worked so hard. Well, he's obviously disappointed to get out under any circumstances, but having worked so hard to to do that, to then give it away a little bit, picked out Scriven and just just didn't get hold of it at all, and actually it was a fairly straightforward catch for Leicestershire's all rounder. Just when you think, as I say, that Somerset. Beginning to establish a decent platform. Lose another wicket. George Bartlett comes out to replace him. Yeah, George Bartlett not not having a, a great Royal London One Day Cup. He got uh, 34 against Durham and was looking good, but um, played a poor shot. He got. Uh, what did he get? He did he, he against not 
Dortmund are seven against Gloucestershire, so we need some. He's put his way handy jumping side, being preferred to uh, Tom Banton in the last game up at Chelmsford, and indeed the, uh, the game before that against uh, York. But still, he's here today. Does that need a partnership? Sort of pushed um, Kim Bolt. Not Kim Swindler. Killer in the chairs. Won't rough a mixture of bat and pad down to long leg. He's off the mark straight away. Just the edgy, both well, metaphorically and literally, yeah. the shot. The implication of the reaction of the Leicestershire players was that had there not been a little bit of bat involved, they may have inquired of the umpire whether it was adjacent, leg before wise. <laughs> Well, he does tend to play around his front pad. He's one of those who takes an off-stump guard, which I've never been mad keen on. No. But it is very, very fashionable at the I moment. I think my, my first coach wouldn't have allowed it, I don't think. No, you may not have off-stump. <laughs> Mulder going round the wicket to the left-handed Renshaw, who turns that away with a flick of the wrists, and they ought to come. No, they won't come back for the second run. As a good throw comes in from the deep. Aaron Lilly out there. Doing the fielding. 48 for three. One ball remaining in the 17th over. Somerset just falling behind the clock a bit now. They need just to assert themselves a little bit more, these two batsmen. As Mulder is in a bowls, and this is driven but straight to extra cover. George Bartlett, end of the over, 48 for three, one to Bartlett, nine to Renshaw. James Rue to come in next, and then Ben Green, the all-rounder, and then the bowlers. So they really do need a partnership, these two. Good afternoon to Robert Coe, who's escaping the sun with a family in Earl Shilton, but his dad, Jeff, is, is braving the heat. He's found some shade here at uh, the Upton Steel County ground. He's quite pleased, he says, with the total posted. And he said, and Somerset will also be a little bit tired, having had a long, hot and energy sapping few hours in the field. Yeah, you've got to, I guess, factor that in. Walker to continue from the Bennett end, conceded just the four runs from his first two overs. Matt Renshaw on nine faces. Walker round the wicket, bowls to Hitchhaw, leaves four stumps. Two round runs forward, but is told to leave it by Louis Kimber whose nickname appears to be somewhat unimaginatively Kimber. Uh, he's what they all call him, the Leicestershire players. He's a lovely young chap and uh, very popular in the dressing room. Not Kim's. No, no. Uh, originally it was... Kimber's. It, no, it's just K Kimber. So I don't know whether it's sort of related to, to Timber or something like that. In goes Walker Bowles. Renshaw is driving a full delivery, thick outside edge along the ground through the gully, down to Hendricks at third man, takes one. But he, he said he was. He used to be known as Melman after the giraffe in um, Madagascar. I think it's. I understand it's a, a cartoon sort of uh, film. A couple of them. Um, but Melman, because he was very tall, he was known as Melman. But now it seems to be just Kimber. Bless him. He's had a good day so far. Picking up his first list A hundred to go with his maiden first class hundred last month. Walker is in. Bartlett is fiddling away outside off stump. Awful shot. Um, just just may have swung away a little bit, but he rehearses the leave he should have played, but didn't. Had a really out of form looking fiddle at it outside off stump. Got a tweet from John Luxton to say this is bad news for some of followers. Looks like Craig Overton has an injury as he only bowled 5.4 overs in the Lions innings victory over South Africa. Walker is in full, he's appealing for leg before. No, says umpire Mustard. And in fairness, although the fielders went up big time, Walker didn't look entirely sure. His appeal was sort of a little bit half-hearted. Now, whether he feels that he got a little bit of a, a bat on it or it was going down, not quite sure. We might might get a replay. And if we do, I'll have another look at it. But 
certainly Walker didn't look totally convinced. In he comes and bowls to Barton, who is trying to slash outside off stump, missing, and it's called a wide. George by... Bartlett. If, if, if um, Walker wasn't convinced, Bartlett isn't convincing. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. He looks a bit um, nervous, perhaps. It's Harry like Swindles. Looks like a cat on on hot bricks on, on the a, proverbials on a hot terrace. Yes. <laughs> A cat at Grace Road at the moment, yeah. which is very hot. In goes Walker and bowls to him, and he's slashing that one down to third man. Came off the edge, but good work down at third man. Really good work by Mulder, who is an athlete in every sense of the word. Flung himself to his right, sprinted round at third man. Got there and got his throw away and uh, kept Bartlett very honest there. He turned and made for the second, but he really had to get the afterburners on. He's young and fit and was able to do so, but only just... 50 up for Somerset. 10 to Renshaw, 3 now to Big X, Bartlett. Reference that the younger generation may or may not know. Walker is in outside off stump. Slightly slower delivery. It shaped back into Bartlett a little bit, but it was too, too wide. So didn't induce the shot. End of the over, 52 for three. Bartlett has three, Renshaw has 10. 18 overs have been bowled. The run rate still below three, only just. But the rate required just, just creeping up a little bit, not uncomfortably so as far as some said are concerned. It's 6.8 now. But uh, they won't want to get up, let it get up to sort of eight or nines, then it does become a bit of a factor. Two batsmen confer in mid pitch, and just going back to Craig Overton. If anybody out there in the Twitter sphere knows anything about uh, the injury situation of Craig Overton, be interested to hear it. Perhaps they know on TikTok, but how we accessed it. I know we're uh, on TikTok for the first time. Indeed, but I wonder how many <laughs> <laughs> cricket nerds will be watching on TikTok though. It's a new audience that we're, we're I was describing we're seeking a cricket to. nerd on the radio this morning. Compliment, or do you feel you've no, complimentary? Not really. Okay. Is um, Hendrix coming back into the attack, coming over the wicket to the left-handed Renshaw? What's um, Lewis Hill up with bringing Hendrix back? Do you think? Well, perhaps, perhaps just sensing it. Well, he's having to bowl his bowlers in shorter spells. I think the heat this afternoon is if, is greater than possibly than it was this morning. Mulder had what was it three four three four overs. Um, Hendricks has had a break. He only bowled four overs in his opening spell, so three spells, perhaps maybe two or three overs now, and three at the end. It's Hendricks to Redshaw, who drives and misses. It's his favourite shot, that Matt Renshaw. He loves going after the I ball outside the off stump. I can fill you in. Uh, Craig Overton left the field in the Lions game with a back issue. Oh However, doesn't seem to be much concern ahead of the Test Series. Just a precaution, Foxy Phil tells us. Thank you very much indeed. That's uh, mildly reassuring. But whenever a fast bowler has his back mentioned, you fear the worst. This is played away through the offside by Renshaw. They ought to come back for a second run. They will do. As it's swept up, who's that on the cover boundary? It's usually Nick Welsh, but uh, he looks Nick Welshish. He was trying to hit that through the leg side. It's yeah. a thick leading edge. 54 for three. He's, uh, he's been more, more successful than most of the Somerset batsmen in this competition so far. This season has uh, Matt Renshaw 65 runs in three innings at 21.6. Hendrix bowls to him. And <laughs> this time he edges this down for four runs to third man swindles couldn't get a glove on it as he dived down to his left it went very quickly off the bat to be fair to the wicket keeper it went down as well between the wicket keeper and the slip yeah i don't think it was a catching no it, no it wasn't but uh, it was an edge 58 for three moves on to 16. yes he's uh, i wouldn't say he's struggling but he's certainly not at his best matt redshaw 
You haven't been here. This this is your first visit this season, isn't it, Anthony? The, the, is. the, the manual scoreboard was refurbished. Um, I don't know if you. Oh, yeah. yeah. They decided to. Way to our left. Keep it. Hendricks. And this time it's defended by Renshaw. Just drops it down into the offside. Yes, looking um, very smart. Clock on top. Well, there was some debate because it's one of only two left in the country now. But uh, the general feeling was it should be retained, it being the one building of any real architectural merit in the ground. <laughs> well, I, don't know. I, li I like the meat <laughs> with that magnificent corrugated iron roof. I'm not sure it can be described <laughs> as having architectural merit, <laughs> the old railway shed. They'll probably list it, you know. <laughs> it may be listing. Here's <laughs> Hendricks in and bowls to Renshaw, who hits this hard into the ground. It's very well fielded, high above his head. At, uh, backward point and that's the end of that over 58 for three three to Bartlett and 16 to Renshaw and that was the 19th over so Somerset 20 runs or so behind where Leicestershire were at the same stage but have thus far lost one fewer wicket they're squeezing nicely aren't they Leicestershire at the moment um just just keeping Somerset Behind the required rate, they've, they've got they've squeezed it up over threes now. Uh, Tom Scriven, now this, this could be interesting. Scriven has, has impressed with the ball so far this season in this competition. He's bowled 22 overs and uh, has has four wickets. Look peculiar, I feel under some pressure on, on wicket. He's shown a sort of confident, some really good changes of pace. Very much just lying his piss at the moment, the young all rounder. Ahead, another bustles into this from the Bennett end bowls and uh, driving or looking to drive, but a little bit straighter than I thought it was going to be. Comes off the inside part of the bat and rather limps out towards mid on. You'll recall Bartlett's century at Taunton last season, very much so. Yeah, that partnership with uh, George Thomas, very much so. Well, again, the only game I missed last season, I had a nasty bad cold. Scriven is in straight and squares up Bartlett a little bit. He's playing it off middle and leg out into the offside. Picked up by Lewis Hill. He started slowly in that game, didn't he? Because I was listening to you and Charlie Taylor on the. Um, I'd, I'd have to look back at my website. notes, Anthony, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm just, sure to, just to jog my memory. Some of it didn't look as if they were going to gonna post anything worthwhile at all. But um, once he got going, he really did go well. Scriven bowls outside off stump, steered by Bartlett out to Welsh as he comes in uh, off the ropes in front of the Upton Steel stand between the meat and the electronic scoreboard. The very detailed electronic scoreboard. You get a lot of information on it, it has to be said. Yeah, they've got the uh, DLS PAR, which is useful. It is, just to see where Somerset are in relation to where, according to Duckworth, those they ought to be. And, uh, well 50 runs short. Ice cream van goes down Milligan Road. Chimes ringing, hopefully. Scriven round the wicket to Matt Renshaw. Digs it out, rather. Plays it firmly out into the offside. Walker in the covers is the fielder. No run. Must be busy times for ice cream vans at the moment. You would assume they have to go back for refills fairly frequently. Gone up in cost and price. I don't know if you've seen that. In goes Scriven and Bowles outside off stump. Not getting to the pitch of it, Renshaw, but nonetheless getting on top of the bounce, playing it firmly off the pitch out into the offside. Lily comes running in from uh, not the extra cover boundary. It'd be, it'd be 80, 90 yards away from the bat. He's, he's about 20 yards inside the ropes out there. Renshaw on to 17, 60 for three. Scriven is in, Bartlett is four, just about getting to the pitch of it, fending it out into the offside, Kimber Fields. There's no run. Over, eventually, says Phil Mustard. Hands the cap to Scriven. 20 overs then. And again, actually, I think Leicestershire were sort of... Uh, pleasingly symmetric well they weren't quite there was 79 for four off 20 and uh, 
Somerset 60 for three. So in those terms, not much in it at all, if anything. Well, Somerset need exactly seven runs and over from here on. So they can just about get seven runs and over by knocking it around and picking up the occasional boundary here and there. But there haven't been many boundaries in the innings so far. Here's Hendricks in from the pavilion end to uh, Renshaw, who goes for a big offside shot, doesn't time it at all, comes off the bottom of the bat and just drops down on the offside of the pitch. We were talking about the pitch, Ned and I, maybe being a, a, a fraction, a little bit too paced or becoming a little bit too paced. It's certainly changed colour, hasn't it? And, uh, in the, yeah. the oven-like conditions. There's still a green tinge, but it, it, they're at the ends, so to speak. It may be just a little bit what cricket is called up and down. Mm, definitely from this end, for sure. Hendricks to Renshaw. Renshaw plays this away through the onside, and that, I think, is going to go for four runs away through straight mid-wicket. But it wasn't a slog by any means at all. Nigel. Matt Renshaw moves on to 21, 64 for three. I have to say, comfortably the most authoritative shot he has played in his innings so far. Good signs for Renshaw and for Somerset. Ian Shepherd, going back to Craig Overton, says I uh, had a review on the live stream. Looked to be stiffness in the back. Let's hope it's uh, no more than that. Colin Smith saying this is looking like uh, another dragging defeat from the jaws of victory match. <laughs> well, I think it's early days to say that. Hendricks bowls, and again, that's turned into the onside by Renshaw, but straight to the fielder, Louis Kimber, who is indeed a tall lad. Didn't realise how quite how tall he was when he was batting. What is he, six foot five, something like that? I think he claims to be six foot three, but uh, he's pushing his luck a bit with that. I'd say, I'd say a little bit more. Let's have a... Yeah, he claims six foot three. He well, certainly he isn't six, any less than that, is he? No, but, no. Uh, Hendricks to Renshaw. Renshaw plays a very straight batted off drive up to mid off but won't get a run. I have to say that all, all three of the brothers we, we saw together at uh, Guildford are taller than mum and dad. Has <laughs> <laughs> to be well fed in their youth. Hendricks. Another tall man, tall, strongly built. 32 years old now from Cape Town. He's in a bowls and Renshaw won't get a run this time as he's again looking to work that into the onside. Ends up hitting it straight back to the bowler. 64 for three, 270 is the target. Seven runs and over is the required rate. And Somerset need to get weaving with some boundaries as the ball gets softer. Hendricks bowls and Renshaw again can do no more than play it square of the wicket from the offside with a defensive push. That's the end of the 21st over. Four to Bartlett, 21 to Renshaw, Somerset 64 for three. Coming towards it, another update, and uh, after that, Ned will be uh, back with you. Again, impossible to call. Just a feeling this this game, one of those that could go the distance. Last year's game went uh, pretty deep, didn't it? With it did. Leicestershire picking up three or four, was it four late wickets when it looked like Somerset had, had, had won the game, essentially. That buddy comes to replace whom I wouldn't do. Well, he's going out to the mid. A scriven in, in bowl bar. Straight bar firm as far as mid on. And Mulder, I think, is the fielder. Jack Brooks appears below me with a, with a drink, perhaps, for the one of the batters, or both the batters, perhaps, at the end of the over. Scriven is in and bowls on off stump. 
pushed out into the offside again not entirely consent to our look off 12 and then he gestures with his right hand as though there's still a little bit of movement perhaps back into him some said have hit only six boundaries in uh, 20 21 and a half overs nearly and two of those were off the edge down to third man it is probably fair to say as Scriven comes in and bowls Bartlett gets one that stays very low look to be going on down the leg side to me although I'm a very fine leg and I think umpire Mustard agrees yes. well done, next time. 64 for three but there haven't been I don't think as many four balls uh, in, in terms of deliveries that the batsmen have been able to free their arms at so far so Leicestershire's bowling has been disciplined squeezed reasonably well Scriven in to Bartlett outside off stump and he has given him a little bit of room then and he has cut him down to the meat for four so famous last words first one that really wasn't worthy not of respect but with just enough width for Bartlett to get the bat to and cut him away no chance for third man to get across and a pressure relieving delivery that Bartlett takes full advantage of. Eight, he moves on to 68 for three. Scriven is in. He steps across his stumps there and then takes his bottom hand off the bat as that straight delivery maybe bounces a little bit more than he thought it was going to. Took his bottom hand off the bat and managed just to keep the ball down. Wanders down. He's loose living, George Bartlett, isn't he? He's got a slightly languid air, not quite as languid as Tom Banson. A good comeback then by Scriven. One ball to go in the over. Comes in and bowls straight again. The yeah, air pushed out into the offside. Good work by Louis Kimber falling to his left in the covers. Means it is another dot ball. End of the 22nd over, 68 for three. Matt Renshaw has 21. George Bartlett has eight. Last man to go. Andy Umid caught by Scriven in the covers off the bowling of Vian Mulder for a hard working 23. Yes, a dismissal not, not much approved of by Grumpy Git. <laughs> well, shot selection is. I, I don't know whether. I, I, don't think, I don't think shot selection was the problem, it was shot execution. It was a uh, short ball from. From uh, the bowler and uh, played the right shot, just didn't get enough on it. So, Roman Walker coming back from this pavilion end, bowling to Matt Renshaw, who aims a huge off drive at it and hits nothing but thin air. Wanders away, and those peculiar pads of his, low slung pads, barely cover the top of his knee. They're a bit like sort of wicket keeping pads, aren't they? Is it just a preference thing? I presume so. From him? I've, I've, uh, Vic Marks made the wicked suggestion. That's, this is, goes for a pull, gets something on it and will pick up four something of runs in the end. It wasn't where he was aiming. Renshaw swung himself round and just got a bottom edge down to very fine leg and score moves on to 72 for three. I think what Vic was suggesting is that because the, um, the knee roll on the pads is lower than it would normally be, you know, if it strikes the pad above the knee roll, the umpire is inclined to give the batsman the benefit of the doubt, thinking it might go over the stumps, but there's absolutely no basis for thinking that that applies to Matt Renshaw who just plays that into the offside and I tell you the other the other batsman whose pads look very like that and that's Sir Alistair Cook if you visualize Cookie at, at the crease he again has got quite a low center of gravity to his to his pads and they're say, quite wide at the top as well we don't get to see Alistair Cook at all actually we see him on telly from time to time but at Essex or we, side, see we haven't played for at Taunton and, and uh, look at uh, Chelmsford four or five seasons this is Ooh. beaten by good ball from Roman Walker again he's, he's fretting is Matt Renshaw he's fretting he's he's frustrated he wants to get a move on he wants to feel that on ball 
still waiting on this up, on this update, but uh, it should come because half past four is usually a ah, sports bulletin. So here we go. So I'll nip in ahead of Anthony, if I may, as Walker is in. Renshaw is driving, edging just wide of the wicketkeeper, and that probably was catchable. Had there been a second slip, maybe even a first slip, diving to his left would have got there. But Renshaw picks up his second boundary of the over. So he has moved on to 29. Here's the update. Walker is in. Renshaw is going to pick up uh, one down two long leg. Well, Matt Renshaw is the main man for Somerset at the moment. He's picked up nine runs in this Roman Walker over to move on to 30. But Somerset still just struggling to catch up with Leicestershire in terms of the runs that they need, the run rate required. They were 77 for three after 23 overs. Leicestershire, as you say, scored 269, so the Somerset target is 270. In Leicestershire, their bowlers have been bowling with discipline and squeezing the uh, Somerset batters. They can't afford, though, to let Renshaw get away. The Australia international is a very fine player on his day and could easily win this game for the visitors. Absolutely crucial game for both sides. Somerset must win to stay alive in the competition. Leicestershire really need to win to regain momentum lost at Sussex last Sunday. 77 for three then, Somerset after 23 overs, needing 270 to win. And up and down to deep backward square leg by uh, Matt Renshaw for, uh, by, um, it was Matt Renshaw, George Bartlett on, on strike. It's the same. George Bartlett on eight, 77 for three. Scriven in bowls to Bartlett, who just dabs that down to third man through where slips would be if there were any, and picks up a single. 78 for three. That was the second ball, I think, of the 24th over. How do you see the um, match situation, Ned? Yeah, I think Leicester are probably just ahead at this moment in time. I think this is a, a good partnership so far. Scriven to Renshaw, who plays that quietly into the offside. The required rate is up to 7.2. But batting ought to get progressively easier as the afternoon wears on. Yeah, they just look like they might be slightly stuck between taking the positive option and trying to, to save the wickets. And, you know, that run rate keeps going up. Boundaries don't look particularly easy to come by. No. So He's scriven round the wicket to Renshaw and whips that away out to uh, deep square leg where it's fielded by... Nick Welsh in front of the Upton Steel stand, which is now mostly in shade, so a good place to watch play from. Spectators have moved with the sun in order to uh, avoid it. <laughs> avoid it. <laughs> exactly. 80 for three. Scriven coming over the wicket to the right handed George Bartlett, who plays it back to the bowler who doesn't field it himself lets it go through yes it, I, it doesn't look the easiest pitch in the world to score quickly on ball's not really coming onto the bat and there's a little bit of inconsistency of bounce as well yeah absolutely and the bowlers haven't particularly got a huge amount of pace either so you've got to do all the all the work yourself as the batsman and they don't seem too fast at the moment Somerset so maybe they're pretty happy with where they are Bartlett drives, comes off a thick edge, out into the uh, onside. That's that's the sort of delivery and the sort of outcome that doesn't build confidence no, either yeah. when, you, when you go for, when you go for a drive and you see it squirting away into the into the onside. End of that over from Scribbon, decent over, 80 for three, 32 to Renshaw, nine to Bartlett. Yeah, you do kind of get the feeling watching that they are a team that maybe is lacking confidence in their batting at the minute. That's a a delivery that. 
a confident George Bartlett would probably throw his hands through and, and look to punish. Whereas he's looking up slightly tentative and just finds the inside half of the bat and goes to mid wicket. So maybe with time, like Harry Swindle's innings, he'll he'll be able to, to find that timing. But Roman Walker is going to carry on from the pavilion end and he's round the wicket and Renshaw. So up mid on. He's found in the last five or six overs. Finding the boundary on the leg side a couple of times. Got away with a couple of edges at the same time too, so. Somerset have only got one fifty and one century in the Royal London One Day Cup. So there isn't much confidence in the batting ranks. They'll be confident as long as Matt Renshaw is at the wicket and he is facing Roman Walker and he punches on the offside, but only to extra cover and it is fielded by I think it's Fian Mulder in the cover region. I'll keep him out of the game at the minute. He's a very good all-round cricketer, isn't he? Yeah, it just adds everything that you need as, a, as an overseas. We've discussed before, and I'm sure he'll be called upon again shortly by Lewis Hill. Interesting to see if they employ any spin at all in this innings. Doesn't look like it's necessary at the moment. As the Welshman Walker comes in, hits back of a length, but it's down the leg side. A wide signalled. Quite flamboyantly, umpire Adnan. Scratch of the footmarks, that must have been the reason why. <laughs> Ewan Hendricks just working on the ball, seeing if they can extract any movement at all, just to wrench a wicket this time. As Walker comes across over the drainage lines and bowls, so full of a length of wrench or drives to the offside. And be pushing for two settles for one run. Again, they're not putting the fielder under any pressure there. Yeah, it's something Mulder did when we were commentating in the first yeah, innings. He absolutely. came in immediately and up the tempo just with his running between the wickets. I mean, yeah. I know it's, it's blooming hot out there, so you've yeah, got to feel for, for the batters, but you need to make the fielder, fieldsman's lives as difficult as possible. Especially with the boundaries being difficult to find. As Walker, full of a length, and it's blocked into the offside by Bartlett, who's nine of 20 deliveries. But building a partnership to 36 with Matthew Renshaw. <laughs> Rate creeping up all the time, 7.4 now. They don't want it to get out of hand because scoring runs really quickly on this is going to be difficult against accurate seam bowling, even with an older ball. It's Walker outside the off stump and it's carved away and great stop but backward point down to his left. Rishi Patel and Bartlett wants the second. He's coming back and it's taken off by Harry Swindles. Not out is the decision from umpire Mustard and the Leicester players have Hands on head, shirts overhead. They obviously believe that was a run out. Couldn't tell from the replay. You can't see from here, but let's have a look on the replay. It was fielded by Tom Scriven coming in from the third man boundary after Rishi Patel did some great work at backward point. Well, I'll have to be criticising them for not, not, not putting the pressure on the field. <laughs> <laughs> they did exactly that. Near, with near, very near nearly fatal, fatal consequences. Decision. Oh, here we go, here we go, the replay. If we'll get a good side on view. Of if this. we'll get a side on view. The Leicestershire fielders definitely were confident that that was a run out. It was a one handed pick up. We don't get a good view. Yeah, of I can't it. Tell, can you? Walker to finish the 25th over, and it's knocked down to third man once again by Bartlett. Just the single this time. No confusion or chaos ensues. This ball. Well, all you can say is umpire Mustard is in the best possible position to make the call. Absolutely, and it's a drinks break here. As you can imagine, the players are in need of some water. With the game poised in a very interesting position. Leicester, I think, just ahead, but Somerset will no, by no means feel, feel out of the running. Absolutely. Get 
scores from elsewhere. A few, three or four, 12th men out on the field, towels, gloves, drinks, all sorts. The Warwickshire against Sussex. Warwickshire 310 for six. Sussex in reply 148 for two in the 29th. So they're well placed, you would think, or pretty well placed with eight wickets in hand. Derbyshire 246, Hampshire 112 for five in the 24th. So even Stevens there. Gloucestershire against Durham and Chester Street. Gloucestershire made 367 for eight. And Durham going well, 143 for 3 in the 27th in reply for the Gloucestershire probably still ahead there. And the Morgan, 221. North Hans on the verge of victory, 210 for 434 over. And the middle field line in reply for 152 in. So they need to get a uh, hundred out of twenty five overs, then they've got the first and Eckersley is be quite a challenge. Sure we will keep banning them up on the stage that next overs especially. But I think that the one partnership less yeah. sure the game from last over though. And then Tom Levin to bowl another from the mid end to to Bartley to his death pitch and to the onside just for a single, 86 for three. There's a tendency to do that, George Bartlett, just presumably just trying to put the bowler off his length a little bit. And yeah, he's close to being out LBW first ball with the he was, similar. He was, but he, do, he does, he takes this off, off stump guard. I'll ask you about that, Alex. <laughs> Tom Scriven in a bowls, and this is driven by Renshaw, but straight to short extra cover, who shies at the stumps because Bartlett was out of his ground. So, Mulder there. Yeah, off stump guard. Do you, is that, is, do you take an off stump guard? I think I eventually find myself on off stump. Yeah, it's a very modern thing to do. Mm. Um, I think it's a case of. What's the theory of it? It's a case of, I think, eliminating. Is Scriven into bowl to Renshaw and won't get a single? Personally, I think it's being able to leave the ball well outside the off stump, kind of trying to negate the outside edge. Um, always as a batter, you tend to try and negate one dismissal, whether it, guys who stand leg side of the ball are trying not to get LBW, guys who go that way are trying to, to have better judgment outside the off stump. So they back themselves to hit the straight ones and hopefully miss or leave the wide ones if they're not trying to hit it. Yeah. Uh, Scriven is in and bowls to Renshaw, who drives. That uh, it was intended to be an off drive. It ended up at uh, mid on. I think Nick Compton was one of the first to uh, to sort of popularise the, the off stump guard, and he he uh, used it very successfully. And of course, he played the ball very very late. Yes, he? I think you've Nick got to be Compton you've got to have right a good under his eyes. good defensive technique. Make sure you play straight of the ball hitting the stumps, um, but hopefully allow yourself the, the good judgment outside the off stump if you need to. Scriven to Renshaw, who it's drives nice nicely way shot. through off between extra cover and a deep mid off. He timed that beautifully. Did uh, Matt Renshaw played it on the up and uh, brings in four runs, takes the score on to 90 for three, and he's on to 37. That was his best shot of his innings so far. Yeah, lovely shot, wasn't it? Just pure timing, good balance, good transfer into the ball, and just a push, but it made a good noise against the boundary boards when it reached there. So he's obviously hit the ball very sweetly. Scriven bowls and Renshaw gets an edge. As, uh, he's turned round by that one from uh, Scriven. It ran off the outside edge, fielded at uh, backward point. And that's the end of the over 90 for three. That was the 26th over of the innings. 24 remain, another 180 are required. And the rate now is seven and a half. The sun just getting a bit lower, the floodlight shadows lengthening, about to reach the wicket end. And there are some clouds in the sky. Yes, there are. Some 
brief respite for the players, <laughs> maybe not, 10 seconds or so. Exactly, yeah, they're not very big clouds, but they are clouds. The sun still beaming down as Roman Walker accelerates up to the stumps, up the hill and bowls outside the off stump and it's cut away by Bartlett, but he doesn't get it in the gap past the uh, man, it's straight to him. Feel like he's missed out there outside the off You can see his body slightly disappointed that that wasn't more than just a single. Short and wide. Was there, there for the taking. Just feel with Renshaw finding his rhythm, if Bartlett can do the same, it's starting to look a bit more promising for the Somerset. Well, it'd be good to have a close one, wouldn't it? It would, and it looking if you know, Renshaw can just keep his head and keep his cool, which I'm sure he will, that could go that way as around the wicket once more goes Roman Walker, and it's full of a length. And outside the stump, driven by Renshaw and fielded. No, yes, yes, Chris Wright. The opening bowler down at third man gets down and somehow great piece of fielding using his body hands whichever part it was it must have been his he must have got his body between the ball and the boundary rope no matter how he did it he managed to save two runs so Renshaw just starting to open his arms a little bit finding the middle of the bat on the slightly more frequent occasions that's his highest score Matt Renshaw in this year's Oh, on he's inside edge one, down to fine leg. <laughs> Just as I say, he's yeah. finding the middle. He's used a different part of the bat, but they all count. That's his highest this season. This season, yeah. They need season. a few more. He didn't. Play. He was with Somerset back in 2018, but didn't play in the um, in the Royal London. He just he played uh, county championship cricket. His highest score in list A is 156 not out for Queensland. There you go, he's got previous. He needs his batting partner Bartlett to stay with him. He's 14 not out currently as Walker in and bowls and he comes forward and pushes into the offside and Patel again at point has done a, a great job in snuffing out any potential singles in that in that direction. Yeah, they fielded well this year, haven't they? Somerset yeah. fielded reasonably well. There were a couple of chances went down. Yeah, you could just there's definitely been a difference between being able to sneak singles here and there from the Leicestershire innings when they were under yeah. pressure. Yeah. Yes, these two have not been particularly good at rotating the strike. Not easy, but the field is squeezed in close, putting the pressure on Bartlett's walker balls. Off cutter and he's knocked it for no run into the mid-wicket region and pressure building now on Bartlett. But, I mean, there's a great area there around the square, the, um, the square leg umpire and he's just playing it straight to short mid-wicket. Yeah, I, guess, I think again it's confidence. I think mm. he's really feeling confident to turn his wrists on the ball into the vacant square leg region. I think he's probably just worried about keeping his wicket intact a bit too much at the minute be time just to take a slightly more positive option or just back himself that little bit more to, to get the ball where he wants it to go but he's got one ball left in this Roman Walker over and he's up into the stumps and he bowls and he knocks it on the head down to third man a very fruitful area for Bartlett so far but he only gets the one run as Roman Walker finishes his over very nicely yes he's bowled um, he's bowled pretty well as Roman Walker joined Leicestershire from Glamorgan this season he's uh, just got the the one list day wicket to his name interesting decision here spin is going to be introduced by Lewis Hill Aaron Lilly is going to bowl And Aaron Lilly will bowl, what will he bowl? Off break. Off spin, yeah. Checking bowling from the end number seven, Aaron Lilly. Media base and fast to see the way to go for decision here by Lewis Hill. Did up, but pace. Being, being by the map. Did play it. 2018. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the back seconds, he said it. <laughs> he had six men in 50s. Best 56. Needs 57 requests for 
He's got Aaron Lilly, George Bartlett has, to cope with Bartlett. Just into the for a single and only just. As there's a slight misfield at short wicket. 96 for three, Bartlett on to 16. Yeah, you get the feeling, I would definitely suggest that Somerset will be thinking that Aaron Lilly will be targeted can't just be allowed to come yeah. in and bowl his off spin. Well, Lest Leicester should targeted Lewis Goldsworthy with his slow left arm. Once they, they I think they, they let him have one over and then they went after him. Yeah. There's Lily in and bowls. Full toss, which is driven down the ground by Matt Renshaw, not taking full toll of a loose delivery. He's got away with that one. It's going to be on George Bartlett, I think, to just put Lily under some pressure. Yeah. Could get him going too, so. There's a man out at Long On. And another one at uh, sort of cow corner. Bartlett whips this away through the offside, but hits it straight to the uh, cover sweeper, who's Nick Welsh. So it's just a single. And the uh, leg side boundary being reinforced for the left-handed Renshaw again we've got a long on deep mid-wicket deep backward square leg Renshaw's driving this away through the offside for four runs a handsome shot Vian Mulder dived across to try and make the stop but to no avail another handsome off drive for Matt Renshaw and that brings the Somerset 100 up 102 for three in the 28th over Renshaw moves on to 45 yeah, another lovely shot from Matt Renshaw. Slightly full from Aaron Lilly, but punished by Matt Renshaw, who's started to increase his run rate, <coughs> definitely. And Aaron Lilly will be feeling the pressure as Vian Mulder leaves the field. <coughs> so he's grazed his arm. Leicester shall be hoping he comes back fit and ready to go. Lily to Renshaw down the leg side and it's signalled the wide. Renshaw has nothing whatever to do with it. Aaron Lily will be looking to turn the ball away from the left-hander. I don't think there's much. This is driven over the top. One bounce. Four, I think. Yeah, one bounce, four. Yeah. Moves on to 49. Long off was up inside the circle. Renshaw spotted that and hit it over his head. A well judged aggressive shot. Yeah, that and was in nice. response, long off goes back. So we've got long off, long on, and uh, deep backward square legs coming up into the circle. Lily Bowles, and this is played up to long on for a single. So that was a profitable over from the Somerset perspective. And at the end of it, it's 108 for three. And of even more significance, it's Matt Renshaw's 50 from 60 deliveries with eight fours. And it's his first 50 of this season's Royal London One Day Cup. And he's rather like Lewis Kimber. He's, I think he's looking to go through the gears. Yeah, he's played really nicely in the last sort of half an hour or so. He's managed to put the bad balls away. He's probably been given a few more bad balls than he had previously. But he's still got to hit them. And that over of 13 for Aaron Lilly. Oh, I've just given some momentum back to Somerset and Matt Renshaw. As Richard Ray is coming in beside me. As it is Vian Mulder on the field, ready to bowl from the pavilion end. Beginning to steer Somerset towards favouritism here. In goes the old and that was a clip the leg towards where we leap to get the connect to one. Renshaw to 51, 109 for three. Rate required, although the run rate has crept up to near a four now, the rate required is still sort of seven and a half. So I wonder whether the Aaron Lilly experiment. I think it'll be brief, do you? Could be brief, it could just be one over, I would expect. <laughs> Yeah, and it 
immediately started to get tweets saying what's going on. Who's <laughs> <laughs> Mulder and bowls over the wicket to Bartlett, who's back on his stumps and indicates with his right hand that there was a little bit of movement still. Might just have straightened on him a fraction. May have stayed a bit low as well. There was a big puff of dust, but that was from his feet as he went back into his crease. Update coming from BBC Radio Leicester at the top of the hour. Still impossible to call, but uh, I think Somerset have got getting themselves in a good position here. Duckworth Lewis, they're behind on, but not by half as much as they were. Mulder is in oh. outside off stump. Nerdled down to the finest of third men for four. Bit of a new from Ned, but he sort of looked like he knew what he was doing there, George Bartlett. Yeah, he did. He meant to get the ball in that, that region. Maybe not that fine, but there might be something that Leicester should have to look at. He's a very profitable area for him. Maybe he could bring mid-wicket across to maybe a second gully-ish. Just to stop that run down, because it's so fast down there, there's just no stopping it. There is a third man, and he's not. He's quite fine. In goes Mulder and bowls again, Bartlett said working it away behind square on the offside from just on or just outside off stump this time Scriven well he has to run in to meet the ball he's worked, worked it much wider so just a single on that occasion horrible bounce for Harry Swindles from the throat so who do we think Lewis will go to if Lily's not given another over Back to limited, maybe in Chris Wright. Maybe Chris Wright yeah. have to come back sooner rather than later. Mulder is in driving Fine very shot. pleasantly for four. Leaves Mulder down on his knees, but that was a super shot from Renshaw, who has started to play much more expansively now. Not necessarily bad balls, just slightly over pitch there from Vian Mulder. Renshaw put it away very straight, very correct. Very secure, very impressive. Moves on to 55, 118 for three. You can just see a slight change in his body language, Matt Renshaw. Looks of groaning confidence as Mulder is in. Bowls oh! to him, it's bowled him! It's gone through him, it stayed a little bit low. And is it the off stump that's out of the ground? I think it is. It's gone back behind him and goodness me, Leicestershire needed that. Somerset and Renshaw were beginning to go really nicely there. But on 55, Renshaw went back to a delivery from Mulder and has lost his off stump. Well, talk of the commentator's curse. Huge wicket for Leicestershire and Vian Mould is the man again to do the damage. Brought back into the attack by Lewis Hill. Got to give him some credit for getting his main bowler back on to get out the dangerous Matthew Renshaw who was starting to hit the ball really, really nicely. But as has been the story with the game so far, as soon as a partnership comes together, the in batsman has found a way to get out. He's Somerset until 118 for four. Here comes the update, perfectly timed. As you come to me, an absolutely huge moment in the game because Matt Renshaw, who's batting really nicely for Somerset, the Australia international, has been bowled by Vian Mulder, Leicestershire South Africa international, 455, leaving Somerset on 118 for four. The game is still very much in the balance. They have had 29 overs, so still another 21 overs to achieve the target of 270 to win the game. But the loss of Renshaw could be critical. That's two wickets for Vian Mulder. And absolutely Figuring this mission, the foxes on to bring their bearing position, turning on for the now 17 from a 104. The young and general has much thoughts and using side. Did you take it? Did you hear it? Took me twice and um, a couple of times. I think in the chat when I went to one of them. Ticket to come, they found obviously title winning season. Body city because to test the fan, it's the sit fan. You boy, see, they were there. Emily, this fox is can burn up in a cabas. It is great from the 10 again. George Bart down third man areas for like sliding all down to backward third region. Leicester themselves had a decent season that season. Uh, Leicester City won the, the title as, as late as August that we were in the mix for promotion. We lost that controversial game at, uh, at Worcester. 
when Joe Clark yes. was recalled. He was halfway up, he was in the shower pretty much by the time he came back out mm. to bat. Uh, left hand and out. James Rue in the middle. Something different for Chris Wright to change his line from his first ball. Slip in place, Kimber. Leicestershire feeling like they can put a huge dent in Somerset as Wright comes in and bowls, but it's tucked away nicely. First ball by James Rue, and he's pushing for the second. Doesn't get it. A magnificent throw from Roman Walker. But it's a let. But Chris Wright, who bowled such a nice opening spell, will be looking to add to his one wicket for 15 so far. Yeah, they've got to squeeze now, squeeze hard. Renshaw has given the innings momentum. Will it be enough to make the difference? I feel like it is there for the taking for one of these Somerset batsmen just to turn up the tempo. So right comes in once more and bowls to Bartlett who looks to get the ball to third man but backward point has been moved to more of a deepish gully to try and stop that easy single. It's a good move. It's Rishi Patel 10 or 15 yards behind square on the offside in his spanking white shoes. They look brand new. He's done a great job there. That's his main fielder. Swindles behind the stumps, hands on knees as Wright comes in and wider the off stump. It's outside, but Bartlett hasn't managed to get a feather on it from a Leicestershire point of view. But a dot ball nonetheless. And like Richard says, the squeeze is something the Leicestershire are going to look to do in the next few overs and try and put this game beyond Somerset's reach. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Lily again. No, good decision, I think, from Lewis just to make sure that that was didn't become a, a real momentum shift and he got Vian Mulder on and it paid dividends. Is Wright going to do the same thing as he comes in and Bartlett again looks to knock the ball down to the third man region but finds Patel once more. Let's see what he does now that easy option's been taken away from him by Leicestershire. There is space there for a full-blooded cut shot maybe but it's just going to have to Take that slightly higher risk option. The Leicestershire fielders are close, they're squeezing in, they're feeling like this is their time. As the right comes in and bowls straight and it didn't quite bounce, but Bartlett again. Defensively into the offside to end another fine over from Chris Wright. He's doing a sterling job. He takes his sunglasses from umpire Mustard and heads back down to his favourite fielding position in front of the covers and in front of the scoreboard with a score 120 for four of 30 overs. And Leicestershire at this stage were 118 for four. So in comparative terms, there isn't a cigarette paper between them, essentially. But Swindles was 21, Kimber was 56. The difference, I suppose you would say, is that Renshaw has just got out for 55. So Kimber was able to go on. Renshaw wasn't, but can Bartlett or Rue of course, the captain who's to come, Ben Green. He, one of those three, go on. Around the wicket goes Mulder and Bowler, who leans forward, left-hander. He press, slightly angled bat, slightly open face, trickles out towards Rishi Patel at backward point. And there's no run. Crowd lifted by that wicket. Sun swings away to the west as the sun is wont to do towards the end of the day. First uh, match of the season, we played Worcester. One of the days went on to seven o'clock as Mulder is in. Rue gets a delivery down the leg side, doesn't get anything on it, and it will be signalled wide by umpire Adnan and is. We had to stop play at seven, although there were still two or three overs left before because the sun actually set behind, <laughs> behind those trees over there, so it actually went dark. Um, astonishing day that was back in, in April. The good old days of April cricket. I bet the players were glad that the sun did go down at seven. <laughs> Made them get home in time for a bit of dinner and straight to bed. Mulder is in again to Roo, who is squared up slightly short of a length delivery. Maybe bounces a bit on him, thick outside edge and trickles, bounces down towards the gully. 
moving across to his right in those pristine white boots is, is Rishi Patel. Makes the stop, no run. A bit of a breeze getting up towards the late afternoon, as it, as it often does. And very ref relatively refreshing, not very refreshing. He's still baking hot. Mulder is in and bowls. Who is waiting for that one on middle and leg. And Mulder's hands goes to his head as he just turns it calmly off the stumps, but only as far as mid-wicket. Gets really a walk around there. Sorry, Nick. Seventh over. So yeah, you're probably thinking it could be his last. Maybe one more if you want to push for this fifth wicket. Two for 34, Mulder at the moment. So six wickets in the competition for him so far, along with his runs. It goes in and bowls. Rue is looking to drive thick inside edge again, and it rolls out towards square leg. Lily comes in and throws from deep backward square. Flat sideways arm throw from Lily. But the single is, of course, taken. Rue on to two. One, two, two for four. Two balls left in the 31st over. Rate required has crept up to 7.7. .7. Mulder back over the wicket to the right-handed Bartlett. Bowls, cuts, and a good falling stop away to his left by Rishi Patel, about the third bounce at deepish gully on the pretty much the edge of this, well, no, a few yards in from the edge of the circle. He's fielded really well, Rishi Patel. Obviously he hasn't got the runs he would have liked in this tournament, but providing something still in the field, which is, which is crucial, saved a lot of runs here today. Mulder to finish his over is in just outside off stump. Bartlett in a shot that's rapidly becoming very familiar, just dabs it away off the back foot, noodles it down towards third man, takes one, keeps the strike. Another good over though from Vian Mulder. Seven overs, two for 32 for the South Africa international. He said he's learnt a lot about bowling as well in English conditions, not that these are <laughs> with a white ball in, in blazing sun. It, can be sort of really described as English conditions. Yeah, he's rapidly becoming Leicestershire's linchpin in this tournament with bat and ball, which is no surprise really given his quality, but still got to go out and perform and he's doing it very well. Another experienced player now, Chris Wright, took into his eighth conference bar. Kim laid back demeanor as you say just bends down picks it up with one hand and slight clap of the hands for strolling back to position he's also a brilliant golfer of course is he he, he, he doesn't sure. play that often but he plays to I think six something like you know it's very much single figures country and, uh, mile yeah you would think it stays hit <laughs> you know, if, if he hits it but Bartlett needs to hit a few of his own that need to stay hit as Wright comes in and short bouncer and he takes it on but he misses it and it goes through nicely to Harry Swindle's reverse cup behind the stumps and he shakes his hand maybe that finger just bothering him still head to the sky but that was a good piece of bowling by Luke, uh, Luke Wright former Leicestershire player of course but this is Chris Wright coming in and bowling would you have been here when Luke started here? Brief. No, he yeah, was, was gone that, by that yeah. point. But I think, yeah, another disappointing player to let go in the prime of his career to come. Went on to amazing things, so fortunately not. But here his namesake comes in and bowls, and Bartlett does get this one into the offside, but just for a single. He just looks to be in that mood of dead. And singles hasn't been able to put the bowlers under any pressure as, as of yet, and it's slightly too easy for mine to see these Leicestershire bowlers just run up and hit an area with with no aggression coming back at them but maybe James Rue the wicket keeper will take up that mantle this is an illustration of how keen uh, Louis Kimber is on his golf after the four day game at Sussex finished sort of quite late on the Sunday uh, on the on the last day uh, whenever it was 
following morning, I was quite surprised to see an Instagram picture of, of Louis on the, on the first tee at St Andrews in the crowd for the Open. Oh, wow. So, uh, it driven up overnight, basically, or had been driven up overnight. Oh, right comes in once more to ruin. He defends nicely in the offside. They scamper for a single and they get home comfortably. Good running between the wins. Dedication to the golfing course. And maybe it's a once in a lifetime thing you can't miss, I guess. Each to their own. Never been here with golfers. Yeah, I play a little bit of bit. golf. I like golf. I don't think I would Not travel really. that length of the country <laughs> to watch. No. A bit of golf, but. Join the crowds at St Andrews. No. Right. 30 second over. Outside the off stump and played and missed again by Bartlett. It was there to hit, but maybe just a bit of extra bounce with Chris Wright's height beats him through to keeper Swindles. Been good from Wright. One for 17 from 7.5, but will Hill want to, want to keep a couple of overs back? Go back to Scriven. Walker. Beginning yes. to look as though he's going to go the distance, isn't it? Really? It does. Scriven has been warming up at mid-wicket. Wright's got one ball left of his over and he comes in and Bartlett carves away through the offside. It's another good stop by Patel. I don't know if that went on the full. They come back for two and they get back comfortably, but it was a strong right hand from Patel and he gets a slap on the hand from Welch. So I'm assuming that didn't carry and it was just a good bit of fielding again in the point region. It's the end of the over, 127 for four, 143 needed to win, 18 overs remaining. So pretty much eight and over now required by Somerset. Tom Scriven is going to be given the privilege of bowling the next over, replaces Vian Mulder at the pavilion end. Mulder pursues the younger man, not much. Mulder himself is only 24. But he's played so much cricket and sort of squeezed so much experience into that time. It's quite hard to believe, say, that, for example, that he's, that he's younger than Louis Kimber or someone like that. You, you know, Kimber having just come into the side. Mulder, who's played 10 tests yep. and ODIs and TT round the world. Using a cricket in as well. Round wicket. Scriven from the pavilion end is in to Rue, nice and straight and Rue can only defend, leaning forward, blocking that one with a slightly closed bat face towards mid-wicket, Kimber. <laughs> it's hard to, to, to describe him doing anything other than strolling when he yeah. works, because <laughs> just, the, just the way he carries himself there. Yeah, he's a, looks like someone you describe as a cool man. Yeah. Scriven is in. Rui is turning that one, which is a little bit uh, too wide on two leg stump down towards deep. In fact, Ooh. he's done more than that. He's, he's, he's placed it perfectly between Lily and Mulder. Lily, who was at deep back or deep square, and Mulder at long leg. Neither can get there. Lily was the nearest, but the ball races across the parched outfield crosses the ropes in front of the Melton Building Society family stand and that is a very helpful in terms of the Somerset calls at any rate boundary for James Rue he moves on to seven off eight one three one for four one three nine needed doesn't sound very much in the sort of context of the sort of 20 over game but wickets in hand green to come Looks like Harry Swindles is going to stand up to the stumps. Getting his helmet ready. Using his feet then, Root must have advanced towards that one. Scott Steele being shouted on. Jogs on with the helmet. Former, I was going to say former teammate of yours up at Durham, but again, I don't know whether you quite coincide. Yeah, he was you? there my first ah, year. Okay. Yep. Talented batsman. And his off-spin has come into its own at times this year, but he's yeah. found himself in and out of the side in the last couple of years, so... He has. He's got to go away to get himself in the team. So Stand up, given his run away to Rue, who draws step. Steers it firmly out to Wick Wash. Not to talk over them <laughs> in the at least. He's been out there most of the game. I don't think he's been in the ring at all, has he, so far? No, no. 
I'm not sure he has. A lonely existence. He may not be unhappy though, because he's just about in the shade now. <laughs> those trees, so everybody else in blazing sunshine still. So Rue moves on to eight. Back over the wicket goes Scriven, bowls to Barclay, who is turning the delivery off middle and leg, but only as far as mid wicket, where Walker is the fielder. He's about to throw it to Hill, who indeed says, don't, don't throw it to me, because the sun is in my eyes, perhaps. Two to come in the over. Scriven. Bustles in and bowls full, driven, thick outside edge along the ground to Rishi Patel. And has, as Ned has been saying, a very clean pair of hands at that sort of shortish, deepish gully position. I was going to say short third man, but he's a bit wider than that. So picked it up very neatly. Threatened the stumps, no run. Scriven to finish his over is in and bowls. Bartlett gets a wide delivery that he dabs down to third man. Third man is that little bit finer now, Mulder, so throws on the bounce to Swindles, one taken. Bartlett keeps the strike, moves on to 28, one three three for four. 17 overs remain, one three seven to win, rate 8.1. Fifth, I really don't know where, where this, who's gonna win this game. I still think Leicestershire in the driving seat here. One more wicket, you think? Yeah, one or two more wickets. I mean, Green to come next is a very dangerous player. Yeah. So they are giving themselves a chance. But Leicestershire will feel if they can just get one or two more wickets in the next eight, eight overs, maybe before the 40th over, that this game is theirs for the taking. It looks like Roman Walker is going to replace Chris Wright. So it is only the two overs for the opening bowler. Walker six overs for 27 runs. He's rotating his bowlers nicely, Lewis Hill, not letting the batsman settle, changing it up. Holding some experienced guys back for the back end if wired. But it is Raymond Walker's chance to get on the wickets column as he comes in ball to button. Pushes the idle look to Saffron, but it's essentially by Rue. No run there in the covers. Now the seven overs of the power play with four men out remaining. They're at deep square leg, fine leg, third man, and deep cover point. We haven't seen too many aerial shots from the Somerset batters. Will Bartlett take on the shorter straight boundaries. Walker comes in straight and he backs away and gives himself room and wonderful fielding again from Rishi Patel. One-handed stop to his right at backward point. Keeps Bartlett on strike and the amount of times he's found that man or Patel has managed to just get a mitt on one has been phenomenal. Save the, the Foxes at least 10 runs so far in this inning. So building that pressure on Bartlett once more. Walker, as he comes across the floodlight shadow, past umpire Mustard and Bowles, short of a length and dab down again by Bartlett. To third man, long barrier and one bounce throw. I was wondering whether there ought to be some sort of way of recording how many runs a fielder saves in the field, because it it's just an impression, isn't it, at the moment, you don't... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think, they're, I think, I'm sure, knowing Nico and, you know, the stats guys here, they'll be... Yeah keeping a tally of what they think and I'm sure he'll be top of the pile as we speak but Rue who's eight from nine had a good start as Walker's round the wicket and outside the off stump and drives elegantly out to deep cover point for just the single the actual wicket keeper looked busy come in and rotated the strike better than the others maybe James Rue he leans on his bat looking very content with life out in the middle. Interesting looking at the uh, the comments on, on the feed, Rob Atwood. We can't rely on Green to get us out of trouble in every match. Got to get a move on now, lads. A walker comes in and he bowls and Bartler does get a move on and pulls this away with disdain over mid-wicket for a two-bounce, three-bounce, four. 
Well, that was a much needed boundary for Somerset and Bartlett. Not Walker's best delivery, and it's punished away over the leg side. Yeah, poor ball. Got what it deserved. Yeah, there's been few and far between the bad balls, which is, they are going to happen. But to eliminate them to the amount that Leicester should have has been all well, credit to them. But what can Walker come back with? The last ball of his seventh over. And he pulls out of his run. Maybe not quite confident in what, did he, what he was going to deliver. But yeah. Next, next season. You'd be disappointed if it's not, won't you now? Five overs to come. None at the moment, efficiently less yet to sort of regard him as a... Two Bartlett, very straight, but he's up the pitch it goes. Do the young all-rounder. Bartlett, a, a product like so many um, Somerset players of Millfield School. A long list of first-class cricketers, Peterson and the like, who had that wonderful number one team, test match team. He was always the reserve batter, never got quite to make it to, to the test level. Scriven is in, back foot defensive shot firm from Roos, sticks out his left hand, Scriven makes the stop, not cleanly, but, but does stop it in mid-pitch. Hendricks has a word of advice for Scriven but he looks fairly focused out there just turns and runs in past umpire Adnan bowls thick inside edges looking to drive and again really good work this time at mid wicket by the fielder means that what looks certain to be one isn't any Louis Kimber it is there at mid wicket didn't look casual then smartly to his left and put in the dive keeps the pressure on just one ball can he come out of what's been a pretty good over well just the single from it so far in fact in goes Scriven and bowls and Rue drives and he's got that one away through the offside only as far as Welsh who's out there on the cover boundary so good over from Scriven just the two singles from it Leicestershire will very much take that. 142 for four, 15 overs remain, 128 needed, 8.5. The rate required, six wickets in hand. <laughs> it's going to be tight. It is going, looking that like it's going to be a tight one, but hopefully we get a good finish. The crowd can enjoy. For Leicestershire fans, they come out on top. Of course, Somerset hoping that these youngsters can get them on their first win of the competition. Yeah, plenty of Somerset supporters have made the journey up from the West Country. Basking in the sun. Ned uh, leaves us for now. He'll be back shortly. Anthony will come back alongside us. Update comes for Radio Leicester. Round the wicket comes and Walker. Rue drives very pleasant. Got that one through the covers. It's a long chase for Lily out to the deep extra cover bound. He gets there almost staggered. But it is going to be three to James Rue. Moves on to 13, 145 for four. 125 now needed. Yeah, they're just, just keeping it in range at the moment, aren't they? Not letting it get too much away from them. They haven't, as George Bartlett clips a delivery from Roman Walker out into the leg side and takes one. Leicestershire's bowlers, though, are squeezing or trying to squeeze the run rate a little bit, and the game is still very much in the balance. George Bartlett is 36, not out. James Rue is with him. He's 13, not out of 15 balls. 146 for four is now the Somerset score, which means they've basically got 14 and a half overs to get another 124 runs. They need to score at eight and a half runs and over, which sounds a lot, but six wickets in hand, a flat track and a fast outfield. As I say, the game very much in the balance. The Foxes need another wicket. Somerset 146 for four. Back with you uh, on commentary. That one from Roman Walker beat 
James Rue outside off some little bit of bounce and movement away from the young left-hander. Three balls to go in the over. Walker, been the most expensive of the uh, Leicester Seamers so far. None for 38 from 7.3 overs. The Welshman turns, runs in past umpire Mustard and bowl slightly short, pulled away, uh, whipped away almost down towards deep backward square by Root, but Welsh gets quickly to the ball and it is just one. We're still getting the uh, footy news in our earphones. There it goes. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Back in the studio and ladies. 147 now for four. Not that Leicester City news wasn't interesting, but uh, things are getting fascinating here, Anthony. They are. Yep. Some of just, as I say, just keeping, keeping it in range. Side off stump from Walker, chopped away off the back foot by Bartlett, but again he's picked out Welsh uh, on the boundary, sweeping on the offside to the right-hander. One is taken. But they do need to take full advantage of the next four and a bit overs when there are only the four men out because after 40 overs, best I can put an extra fielder out. It'll be just that little bit more difficult to score quickly. One ball left in the 36th over. Walker is in. Rue is maybe just held that back a bit, Walker, there. Rue was forward, had to wait for it and uh, blocked it out towards... Patel at backward point, end of the over. 148 for four, 14 remain, 122 more runs needed. The rate required is getting, creeping up towards nine now, 8.7. Bartlett 37, Rue has 14. But as we know, these days that is very, very achievable still. Yep. That's, um Back on uh, Wednesday, Somerset lost their eighth wicket on 195 at around about the same stage in their innings, 36.3 overs. They looked absolutely dead and buried. Still 148 runs short as Scriven is in to bowl another over. And this is turned into the onside by Bartlett. Pressing. And after it was a bit of a slow burn from uh, Ben Green. He took his time getting to 50, but then he just exploded from there on. So if the same happens here today, then Somerset are in no problem at all. But lightning doesn't often strike in the same place. So these two just need to up the rate a bit. Scriven falls to Rue, tucks that away into the onside. He's a busy little cricketer, is James Rue. Not that he's that little. He's the best part of six feet tall. And strongly built, red-haired. He's a very good sweeper. Academy product. Yes, yeah, he's been, um, been with Somerset for uh, since the age of 10, I think. At King's College in uh, Taunton, which also produced Joss Butler and Tom Banton. Scrim and bowls, and this is whipped up to a deep fish mid on. The throw comes in very quickly. And uh, George Bartlett, uh, James Rue rather, has to make good his ground very quickly. Lewis Hill with the throw, the Leicester skipper. 150 for four. The general consensus is that this is 50 50. Yeah. <laughs> all, all round Leicestershire supporters and Somerset supporters alike finding it hard to call Scriven to Bartlett plays that square of the wicket Bartlett needs to uh, to play his part he's 39 from 59 deliveries he's playing the Harry Swindles role at the moment but Somerset some need someone one of these three, either of these two or um, Ben Green to play the Lewis Kimber role go on to get a century in even time Scriven to Rue bowls driven into the offside but can't get it past short extra cover picking up the uh, fielders is James Rue. He's not a big hitter. He's certainly not a slugger. 
sweeps the ball very well works it into the gaps but Somerset need a little bit more than that the rate now up to nine runs and over required scrim bowls and Ruth goes for a big shot comes off the pad looks to uh, flip that over long leg where there is no field oh, okay. picks up a leg by 152 for four that's the 37th over so 13 remain 118 runs required to win it's a level game juggling his bowlers Lewis Hill at the moment Roman Walker is coming off again. It looks like he's going to go back to Chris Wright, who has only got, I think, two overs left to bowl. So he might be about to bowl them both. Out. Over the wicket to the left-handed Rue, who is looking to whip a deliver on his and two legs are getting right into the PR mission. Pick it up and uh, is granted. Nod from Louis Kimber. Politely underarms the ball to him. Dot ball. One for 19 from right. He's only got 11 over, 11 overs, 11 deliveries left to to bowl. So if he can maintain that sort of record in terms of runs conceded, he will continue to apply the squeeze. And he runs. Bowls, who again is working, looking to clip it away into the leg side, does so aerially. It's in the air for a long time as it bounces out down towards Nick Welsh, now in the shade of the trees uh, that line the road between the Upton Steel stand and the very, very good nets here at Grace Road. Yeah, he just checked his shot there, James Roo, to ball. make sure that it wouldn't carry it to yeah. the uh, fielder on the boundary. Took the one, moves on to 16, 153 for four. A few goals wheel overhead. As right is into Bartlett, minimal foot movement, just works it away behind square on the offside, but more or less straight to Rishi Patel. I was telling Ned uh, Anthony that when we were at Hove recently, we had a, a real invasion of goals, must have been 250, 300 on the ground, and it, it was quite disconcerting, really until we realised that they were hit they were after an invasion of flying ants. Ah, the flying ant day. And uh, they came and cleared the ground very nicely, although some of the less fielders weren't too sure. <laughs> <laughs> Getting too close, the big, big birds, some of those. Big beaks on big birds. Right is in to Bartlett, who is looking to drive, but Kimber falls away to his right at cover and makes the stop. And Bartlett, frustrated, hand and bat and go into the air he's beginning now to exude a certain amount of frustration understandably he's not getting the ball away 117 more needed off 12.2 the rate required has gone up now to nine and a half he's beginning to feel that they need green in sooner rather than later yeah. right is in to Bartlett full toss just what the doctor ordered as far as Somerset were concerned and he pulls it away to the mid wicket straight mid wicket boundary for for if he if he could have asked for a delivery I suspect that is the one he would have asked for there is no deep mid wicket Walker is a sort of fairly straight shortish mid wicket to I stop just wonder the one. if that slipped out of Chris Wright's hand it must be very sweaty out there it must be it is his first over back but just looking to see if he's drying his right hand or anything like it. But uh, poor ball, and he got the punishment it deserved. He's in again at two Bartlett. That one pitches all right. A little bit short of a good length, and off the back foot, Bartlett cracks it out into the offside to Welsh on the point boundary, the nearer of the two boundaries, square of the wicket, probably by about 15 yards or so. It's probably about 60 yards to the boundary on that side and a good 80 on the other. End of the over, 158 for four. 12 remain, 112 needed. Yeah, I think someone said they're gonna have to target that shorter of the two boundaries. Bartlett onto 44 with those five off the last two balls and Leicestershire going back to Hendricks. Back to Hendricks. 
He's only gone for 21 in his six overs. Picks up the wicket of uh, Stephen Davis with the second ball of the innings. When he inside edged it onto his middle stump. He's going to be bowling around the wicket, uh, over the wicket rather, to the uh, right handed, no, around the wicket because he's left armour and it's a wide in any case. <laughs> Getting in a terrible tank. 159 for four. Big leg side wide. So he's bowling over the wicket to the right-handed Bartlett, who's on 44, his highest score of this Royal London campaign. Made 108 in this game down at Taunton last season. Hendricks bowls, and he whips this into the onside, but straight to Lewis Kimber. Shortish mid wicket, and he's done that on umpteen occasions. And you'd have thought it wouldn't be beyond his abilities just to turn it a little bit squarer because there's a great big gap. Just wondering of the Leicestershire attack, how many will have bowled at Bartlett at Taunton? Probably only right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hendricks, big, strong, powerful, fast bowler, as he's stroked away, but again, fielded by Rishi Patel very well. At Backward point and George Bartlett fast half dozen overs. It's, uh, there's a little bit of inconsistent bounce. It's got slower under the influence of the hot sun. Ball's not really coming onto the bat. Hendrix is, is quite quick, but the other Leicestershire seamers don't really give the, uh, the bat as much velocity to work with Hendricks coming over the wicket to left-handed Rue who plays that into the offside James Rue hugely promising made his first first class century against Essex at Chelmsford a couple of weeks ago having batted very well up at Southport and Somerset really needed his runs, made 70 in the first innings and hung around for, the long, for a long time in the second when Lancashire were pressing for the win. Hendricks bowls and Rue turns this onto the stumps and that's the end of James Rue for 18, 162 for 5 Somerset and well with only Ben Green as a mainline batsman to come can't help feeling that this game may be slipping away from Somerset and with it their last remaining shreds of hope for qualifying for the, uh, the later stages of the competition. We'll, we'll get a replay in a moment but we've had plenty of inside edges on to or close to the stump so just supporting the contention that it, the odd one is keeping low or slightly to pace not quite coming on to the bat. I needed that one, Leicestershire. In Ben Green, we trust. From Marshall to Lango. You reckon? It's a Lord Lucan. <laughs> <Had a lot. laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no one more caddish than Lord Lucan, yeah, I, I right. suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so Chris Wright is going to finish off his spell. Final over from the Bennett end. He's going to be bowling to George Bartlett. In he comes. Bowls. Bartlett gets a delivery back past right down the pitch. On the very straight though. And he has to move his little for the two field. Though uh, we slightly startled to be called to. It was a very safe single. Bartlett onto 46, 163 for five. 107 of 10.5. So pretty much 10 and over now. But probably from Somerset's point of view. The right two men at the wicket, Bartlett, in that he's been in there for a, a while now and he's seeing the ball pretty well, albeit he's played the sort of swindles role, 46 off 57 and green man in form who hits the ball a long way. Right is in, bowls on the back foot, it bounces it slightly short of a length and green can only work it into the offside where Kimber is the fielder. Duckworth Lewis shows 196 at the moment, indicating that 
So I said a little bit behind on that sort of comparative basis. Well, they are. And the other thing is if they lose another wicket, then the game is effectively up. Right is in. Green gets a short ball, looks to pull it, doesn't time it at all. I was looking somewhere around deep mid-wicket. He really did go hard at that one, but hit it down into the ground and it rather bounced rather tamely towards Roman Walker at straight mid-wicket. Well, just for comparison purposes also, um, Leicestershire were 200 for five of 40. And uh, almost at that stage now, Somerset three balls short of 40 overs, 163 for five. Right is in. Green is playing this straight ball off off stump out towards mid off ball. Sounding good off his bat though. Sounding promisingly violent, if you know what I mean, from, from Somerset's point of view. He just needs to pick up the pace of the pitch there, doesn't he? Yeah. And don't I think it's one probably one of these pitches where it's quite difficult for the batsman to go in and go hard right from the start. And the other one is keeping low, as we've seen. Particularly from this pavilion end. Right is in bowls, straight to Green, who can only defend out into the offside. And Leicestershire like that. And the supporters like that. Increases the pressure. Just one ball to go in this uh, 39th over. Right's last. One for 26. The figures for the veteran at the moment. Floodlights, which are very tall here, casting shadows right across the outfield now. The west side of the ground, of course. Right is in and bowls very straight again. Green is can get off the mark with that one as he just drops it down into the offside. Patel runs in from backward point to pick up and uh, applause around the ground. Not so much for the single as for the end of Wright's spell. For the Leicestershire innings, probably the pitch was at its easiest. Well, to hear what I have to say about it in that spec after it's been a little bit short. Here's uh, Hendrick, there are two for five he has. And uh, Green's uh, stretch. Is it Pensy? It's not being hard too early. He knows that the one thing Somerset cannot afford to do is to lose another wicket at this stage. That really will put the, uh, f the f tail, with the exception of course, with the honourable exception of Jack Brooks. Jack perhaps. Brooks, yeah, it's quite it's a long tail. Oh, oh. and swinging a miss from uh, Ben Green and. Very well taken, or stopped, not really taken by Harry Swindles, but that one swung down the leg side. At right over the top of the stumps, yeah. a good couple of inches above the top of the stumps, but a pacey delivery actually. Ben Green just got one run from seven deliveries. He too will be fretting, wanting to get on with it. 164 for five, the rate climbing all the time. It's up to 11. Hendricks is in a bowls. This is driven and very well half stopped in the covers by Tom Scriven. It's just a single. 165 for five. Mind you, the rate when someone said, which is trying to chase down Durham's 342, got up to 16 and over to one they got stage. Very close, didn't they? And within nine runs well all is very far from lost then for the visitors but as I said this is a more difficult pitch on which to hit big shots Hendricks to Bartlett and it's bold it's Fantastic again, it's slower ball. slower ball he was through the shot too early and that's the end of George Bartlett's or 46 made from 6 7 three. Set of going down to another defeat, 165 for six, still needing 105 more runs and uh, only 9.2 overs in which to get them. Really good slow ball by Hendricks. Barnett trying to adjust, put it away into the leg side, bottom edge into the stumps. Not the first to edge the ball into his own stumps today. Casey Aldridge, who bowled beautifully this morning, 
Yeah, it's like a long time ago. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it was quite a long time ago. Coming out now to see if he can be the hero with the uh, with the bat as well. Well, he's a useful lower order batsman, Casey Aldridge. Five runs in the competition so far in three <laughs> innings, uh, the highest score of three. <laughs> yeah, well, but uh, hasn't had many opportu much no, opportunity, hasn't. really. His, his highest score in this day cricket is 12. But he has got some runs in a couple of county championship matches. He's batted very well down at uh, the AGS Bowl in the first game of the season. Three for 26 for Hendricks. Managed four for against Surrey. To bridge, leading edge, and uh, very many game dumps. That was a good Yorker, Hendricks, and that one almost squeezed through. <laughs> it was a very ambitious shot from Casey Aldridge. Had to whip a, the fast bowler away with a Yorker, a good Yorker, into the leg side. As Anthony said, the leading edge could have. Uh, <laughs> he wasn't quite sure where it had gone. Hendricks. To the wicket and bowls, and uh, Aldridge is underway with a single down to third man. 166 for six, and uh, that's the last ball of that over. So Hendricks has figures of eight overs, three for 28, and has bowled pretty well. Aldridge has one, Green has two, and the equation is Somerset need 104 in uh, nine overs so 104 in 54 balls that's 11.4 runs per over scoreboard is as just sometimes can happen oh there he goes it's ticked over now. i feared it might have frozen so there's an all south africa attack now for leicestershire vian mulder coming on to replace Chris Wright. He's got two for 32 from seven, Mulder. From the Bennett end, runs in and bowls to Aldrich, who gets a delivery on off stump that he works away in front of uh, the diving Patel at backward point. Works it out towards Welsh on the point boundary, takes one. That's his job. Get Green on strike and see what Green can do. He's going to take a new guard from umpire Mustard. He's got it right first time. The field is on the leg side, all retreat, with the exception of mid-on, who is on the edge of the circle. Mid-wicket, square leg, long leg, all out, of course, on the boundary. Mulder is in, bowls to Green, short, goes for the pull, comes off the body, goes behind him. Swindles, whacks the ball into the stumps, throws from short range onto the middle stump, but uh, the alert Green who wasn't quite sure where the ball had gone for a minute. Had enough savvy to get back into his <coughs> ground. Umpire Adnan comes in to replace the mess or to tidy up the mess, all of which goes down in the scorebook as a dot. Final update coming for BBC Radio Leicester in the next minute or two. Mulder is in. Green has to wait for the slightly slower delivery. Works it out towards deep mid wicket. Aldridge is interested in the possibility of a second. Green never was, in fairness. And uh, Aldridge has to retreat back into his ground. 168 for six. Green on to three. Eight and a half overs left. Still more than 100 needed. 102. Rate has uh, squeezed up to 12. Green, the bat looking very small in his hands, waits as Mulder is in. Aldridge pulls but doesn't time it out to Roman Walker at that straight mid wicket position. Can't get it away. Very well disguised, slower ball, wasn't it? Yeah. And Casey Aldridge actually adjusted quite well to it. Just completely checked his shot. And Walker's going out to deep mid wicket now. For Aldridge as well as for Green. As um, Anthony said, you can have that extra fielder out on the boundary now. As 
Mulder is in. A bouncer ducks Aldridge, the very tall Aldridge. That'll be one for over. I would assume waiting for signal from umpire Mustard. Well, it must be one for the over. Yep, here comes the update. Beginning to look as though they are the favourites now to go on and make it three wins in four games because they've taken another two important wickets. First, James Rue, who was bowled by uh, Bjorn Hendricks for 18 off the inside edge. And then George Bartlett, who'd got to 46 when got a really good slower ball from Hendricks. And he, too, could only edge it into his stumps. 165 for six. It's now 168 for six. Aldridge, Casey Aldridge that is, has to Ben Green, the Somerset skipper and all-rounder, is their last real hope of getting them across the line. He is three, not out of ten, but he hits the ball a long way. We've just come to the end of the 42nd over, just eight remain. Somerset need another 101 runs to win the game. Leicester, the favourites to go on and win from here. They certainly are. 12.6 is the required rate for Somerset. And uh, two tall batsmen, Casey Aldridge from Bristol and uh, Ben Green from Exeter, Confer. Roman Walker is going to come back from the pavilion end. And Ned Eckersley is going to come back to take up commentary from Richard Ray. Here comes Walker into bowl. Oh, it's bold. Middle stump, it was an ugly heave, that, from Casey Aldridge. And he's lost his middle stump. And uh, Roman Walker picks up his first wicket and a deserved wicket as well. 169 for seven. And um, well, Somerset subsiding rather sadly, I'm afraid, here in the sunshine. That was a real tail end of slot, wasn't it? It was. I think the last over maybe got softened up a little bit with some short bowling and... To be fair, they do need 13 and over. It's not really his job to get that amount of runs, but you know maybe the next guy in's job is just to stick with Ben Green for a bit and hopefully he can pull off a miracle for for Somerset as Holly Sale comes out. Holly Sale, I don't think he's got huge batting pretensions. I haven't seen enough of him to form a judgment. He's, um, he's only really played uh, T20 cricket for Somerset. And in the 20 over stuff, he was coming in right at you know, 10 or 11, something like that. So yeah. it didn't look to have a way that. Max Waller for Somerset, 12th then, just wandering on the pitch. Not sure we'll see him bowling for Somerset. Playing to sort of Gloucestershire, but. Oh, so not much to lose. No, I walk her in and bowls to him, and there's no run there as he plays that short extra cover. The um, Leicestershire fielders inside the fielding circle are well inside it. Try and keep sail down at uh, down at that end. Leicestershire will be looking to wrap this up as quickly as possible been pretty polished so far today and yeah it's been a very professional performance from uh, Leicestershire good all-round performance with uh, with bat and ball and in the field is Walker it involves to sail and <laughs> goes for a mm. big hit and it comes off I don't know what part of the bat that came off he's going to pick up a couple of runs actually feel the back for a third run this is the longest boundary way to uh, wide third man so Ollie Sale scores his first runs in this day cricket. Three he has, and it means that Ben Green is on strike. It's a very lower order batter way to get off the mark. They hit <laughs> the ball in funny areas. You swing the bat hard enough, yeah. I guess. You can get some reward, but it's going to be down to this man, Ben Green, to try and relight some fireworks. Walker bowls to Green, who pulls this, but uh, we'll just pick, get a single as Sir Welsh comes off the boundary in front of the Upton Steel stand, which is well attended now that it's in the shade. Single is taken, Green moves on to 473 
for seven. And then the 43rd over, Somerset still needing another 97 to win 13.2 runs for over. It's not quite such a parlous position as they were in against Durham, but not far off. As Walker bowls to <laughs> to Ollie Sale, who lets that go outside the off stump, which is a, a novel approach when you need 13.5 runs and over. <laughs> Not well left. Not well left. I mean, good bowling. We'll put it down to good bowling. Yeah, you might want to try and hit those ones with 14 and over required, but every Leicestershire bowler seem to have, when they've come on, new spell. They've taken a wicket or hit the strap straight away and Lewis Hills mixed his bowlers nicely and everything's come off. Walker to say it comes right across his stumps and smears that away into the leg side and Welsh does the fielding and I think they could have come back for a yeah, second there. Should have but, done really. But I suppose it means that well it means actually that Ollie Say will have the strike to start of the next over so it wasn't a particularly brilliant piece of cricket. No, it's the small so things like that, yeah they needed to come back for two there really. Green's got to face as many balls as possible if they stand any chance, but it's looking slim. As Mulder's going to carry on from the Bennett end. I think, it's, I think it's somewhere between slim and non existent. <laughs> I think slim has just left town. <laughs> well, don't write them off until it's finished. No. It looks like more of the same from Mulder with every man bar short fine leg out on the leg side. This could be up and around Sale's chest area. And he tries to squeeze it into the offside for a single, but doesn't manage to get off strike. And the Captain Green is watching too many deliveries pass by from the non-striker's end. Yes. Although he's, he's shown no signs yet, Ben Green, of being able to pick up the pace of this pitch. No, very what do you difficult. Think, what do you make of the pitch? Do you think it's got more difficult as the game has gone on? I think it probably has got a little slower. I think Leicestershire have probably had the benefit of seeing what worked on it when they batted, as Mulder comes in once more and takes the pace off another ball. And it's, oh, it's gone down the leg side and through the wicketkeeper, Harry Swindles, chased by Buren Hendricks to the boundary. And he just manages to save it as Somerset come back for a third. Wide is signalled, so every little helps for Somerset, and that's some extras that Leicestershire won't want to give too many away of. Yeah, I think they managed to see what, what worked when they batted and have been able to adapt with their bowling second innings. And maybe they had a couple of bowlers, you know, Wright, Roman Walker and Hendricks, who's taller, style of bowling suited a slightly more inconsistent pitch. There's Mulder, a tubey grip on both hands, comes in and bowls and Green slaps away to the leg side and it's only managed to trickle to long on. It sounded good. He did, but he just didn't time it at all, did he? And more experience, I think, on the Leicestershire bowling on side on too. On Wednesday, those were disappearing over the stands. Yes, and I mean, Leicestershire, they know how to bowl on on the pitches here, don't they? Yeah, they've done very well so far and they need to keep it up for six and a bit more overs as Mulder wide of the crease comes in and a big swing from Sale into the leg side. It's going to pick up two and well fielded Aaron Lilly, one-handed pick up and delivers the ball back to Swindles who throws the ball along the floor to Captain Hill. They just never got going in this innings, have they, Somerset? Never been able to... Nope find some, some momentum, apart from Renshaw for maybe four overs, four or five overs. Yes, it, it, when he drove that uh, straight drive down the ground, I thought, oh, here we go. And then <laughs> the very next ball he was yeah. rolled. And with him, I think, went some of such chances. Once more, Mulder, and it's into the leg side and backs away sale, trying to get it past short third man but doesn't manage to do so but they do get a single to bring Green back on strike rests his bat against his left leg sizing up challenge ahead taps 
the pitch. Can he muster some more heroics for Somerset? Coming towards the death of this innings, Mulder, South African overseas, comes in slower ball and again mistimed by Ben Green into the leg side. They're looking for two and they do come back. That's better running between the wickets as Lily retrieves, but they get back for the second. One ball left in the 44th over and fortunately for Green, he's probably got to go for the boundary rather than try and keep the strike. First game at uh, Chester Street, Durham needing 36 in 13 balls to overhaul Gloucestershire's 367 for eight. Gloucestershire favourites, you would think. Last ball of the 44th over. It's more short for length and pulled away and it's up in the air. Can Hendricks get in? He can. A fine leg. Ben Green going for the hook shot to the long boundary. Can only find Buren Hendricks on the fine leg boundary. And Fiat Mulder gets his third wicket. And Leicestershire now surely, surely victors in this game. Yeah, he did his best, uh, Ben Green. But... Um on, on this pitch, not easy. Hitting, hitting shots across the line because of the variability of the bounce. And that one maybe bounced a little bit more than he was expecting, took the top edge and uh, very comfortably caught, running in from, from uh, long leg. Yeah, not much for Ben Green there. To be disappointed about, clever piece of bowling, long boundary, had to take it on. Fortunately for him, early managed to get the top edge on the ball and it brings the opening bowler. And veteran of county cricket, Jack Brooks to the middle with his nice black gloves. I'm sure he won't go down without a fight or a swing. But we're looking like a Leicestershire victory. Quite a comfortable victory in the end. They can just get these final two wickets. Yep, Somerset um, were never really up with the rate. They, they tried to build a platform got behind the rate and then when they tried to accelerate they lost wickets it's, it's the age old story of, of one day cricket this is driven down the ground as the pre-served design two he said to him on to mine and the matey no he's still on seven it's 184 for eight Sale on seven, Brooks yet to score. Roman Walker bowling his final over from the pavilion end. As we go through the the last actions in this Royal London One Day Cup game. Walker to Sale comes across his stumps and actually plays rather a good shot there. Out to the uh, deep backward square leg boundary. He probably played that from outside the off stump. <laughs> so he definitely uh, looks like he wants to get across his stumps and give it a good heave yeah. to the leg side. And he's split the difference between uh, fielders at long leg and deep backward square leg. 190 for eight. He moves on to 13, which is his highest score in any form of white ball cricket. Walker in and bowls and this has gone up in the air and the fielder is coming in and takes it in the end. A very, very good catch. Who was, who was Louis Kimber, I uh, think. Louis Kimber, is it? He misjudged it and was taking it a bit easy and then at the last minute he realised it was going to drop short of him and he put the afterburners on, sprawled forward and took a very good catch only inches above the turf, 190 for 9 and that's the end of Ollie Sale for 13, did his best 
but uh, as we were saying earlier on this is this is rather a long tail for Somerset Ben Green at number seven is really the last of the batsmen yeah Roman Walker's deserved another wicket you would say he's bowled, he's bowled nicely good changes of pace it's kept coming he's been mixed around all all innings by Lewis Hill bowling from different ends and you know, it's nice for Louis Kimber to take that catch they fielded well all game so to keep going till the end when you know the game's looking like it's won and staying staying focused is is good to see and it just kind of sums up the day really Leicestershire just slightly more polished slightly more confident in everything that they've done today and uh, it's reflected in the scoreboard yeah very disappointing again from uh, from Somerset who I thought bowled pretty well Field the fielding was a bit scrappy we gave away too many runs at the week and to say they got quite many up but most in the field but well to attempt everyone's but uh, we've been able to assert them to our point mm -hmm. it's very much it just a big follow through out into the covers and <laughs> he's hurt his foot in the process he's limping back to his mark now just needed the arm up in the air wheeling away like alan shearer yeah, there right. towards or jack brooks he's a good he's a, he's yes, a great he, one for wheeling away with his with does he still do his knee oh. slide or is that yes he could he'll he'll do that yep yeah right how many balls two balls left in the over 190 for nine it's walker to Ogborn swings and misses. <laughs> it's like one of my golf shots. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least he's got his, the right. He lifts attempt. his head. <laughs> if he gets hold of it, it's got a chance. <laughs> I don't have to. I have seen um, Alfie Ogborn back. He batted. He actually made three in a partnership with Ben Green of 97. On Wednesday and batted very intelligently. Did his, did his job? He did. He didn't bat at all like he did. <laughs> <Two shots, laughs> he just, just played, no. So, will this be the final nail in Somerset's coffin? Walker bowls and Alfie <laughs> Osborne does his best to swing himself off his feet as Walker produces a, a slower ball. And, and you feel that all Roman Walker had to do was to bowl a straight one. <laughs> yeah, I think that would have been it. I think many other bowlers would have been going just normal pace at the stumps if he hits you for a couple of boundaries who who cares i'm going for another wicket but he's done a fine job today finishes with figures of two for 51 from his 10 overs well done, Great catch that's his best bowling in list day cricket roman walker his previous best was one for 53 for a yeah lots of positives to come out from from leicestershire's point of view Tom Scriven's done well with the ball, as has Roman Walker. There's been no no real weak link in their bowling lineup today. As Fian Mould is going to bowl his last over, and he comes in and bowls full to Jack Brooks, who does the sensible thing to mark. No ducks for Jack Brooks today. You'll want to be not out, I suspect. <laughs> I think we know what. Alfie Ogborn is going to do here. I don't think he's going to have the same approach as Jack Brooks as Ian Mulder. Let's see if he goes for a different approach to Roman Walker. As he comes in and bowls full of a length and Ogborn. He has surprised me greatly as he knocks one to the leg side. Just the single. 78 to win sure that's going to be gettable Lewis Hill signaling I think for Buren Hendricks to bowl from the pavilion end will he get an opportunity Mulder looking for his fourth wicket of the afternoon pass mustard and comes in and swung away by Jack Brooks into the leg side they're pushing for two as he carries his bat sabre like to the non-strikers end but they do only get the one despite a interesting throw in from the boundary. Swindles sprawling 
to stop that one. Leicestershire must be fancying their chances of getting through to the quarter-final now because you've had three away games and won two of them and now you've presumably got three home games. So, yeah, another home game on Sunday, away to Gloucester and then finish with two home games here as Mulder comes in bowls and it's through <laughs> between Bat and Stumps but on the leg side as Ogborn backed away trying to give himself some room. They are put themselves in a very strong position now, I think. Three from four is a, a solid start with three more home games to go. You'd be, you'd be thinking, we're playing the, some good cricket. We've got a good chance of some, some finals cricket in this tom competition. So close in the T20s that, you know, they'll be, they'll be hurting and hopefully they can put that right with, with this competition. But Mulder, two balls left in his spell. Bowls to Ogborn who decides to take the safe option and get the single to backward square leg. Here in Hendricks flicking the ball up between hands. Not really loosening up to bowl, but I think he will bowl the next over. Jack Brooks. Fine leg up, maybe a scoop. And Brooksy Ferret. Let's see as he taps his bat hard on the ground, crouches down as Mulder comes in and he swings away on the leg side into the gap, possibly two. He will get two. Ogborn comes back and Leicestershire also settle just to keep the boundaries down and Hendricks will remove his cap and get ready to bowl 47th over of the innings. Yes. Nottinghamshire are going to beat Middlesex. Well, 318 for seven, they need 38, 25 points. And uh, they're top of the table at the moment with four, four points from uh, three games. Durham needs. No, they, they've been beaten by Gloucestershire. So Gloucestershire will go up to six points from five games. But there's nobody running away with it at the moment. Here's Walker, uh, to Hendricks, I mean, to um, to bowl to Ogborn. And uh, cut off his 6.30, 6.36, I think. And there's still got best part of four overs to bowl. Bowls this to Ogborn, who turns that away nicely. Just seems to have uh, got over his initial nerves. Alfie Ogborn is <laughs> settling down to uh, maybe play sensibly. Uh, maybe the experienced Brooks said, "Look, give yourself a yeah. few." Yeah. No point in giving it away. So moves on to three hundred ninety-seven for nine. We're in the forty-seventh over. Being bowled by Buren Hendricks to Jack Brooks, who s plays this back to the bowler. Who, is that a bump ball? Yeah, I think so. He was very uh, Hendricks was very casual about it, and uh, they take the single as he didn't field it cleanly. Fairly sure if it had been a catch, he would have patched it comfortably enough. 198 for nine. Ogborn on strike, Hendricks left arm round the wicket in and bowls and Ogborn plays this nicely away into the onside, a good piece of fielding out there as well by Aaron Lilly, keeps them down to just the one run, Ogborn on to four. Come on Bewey! Come on Bewey, that's interesting. Hendricks bowls and Brooks plays that away through the offside for another single and that is the Somerset 200. They have limped to 200 for nine. A ripple of applause, probably ironic applause from the Somerset faithful who've made the long journey up from the West Country to be here. Last ball of the 47th, Hendricks to Ogborn, who again will get a single as he plays that 
to Lewis Hill, the Leicestershire skipper, who must be very happy with the way things have turned out in this game against uh, Somerset. Yeah, everything he's he's done has come off, which is always a nice feeling as a captain when you leave the field and your bowlers and fielders have put into action what plans you, you had. And I'm sure there'll be a few areas they want to tighten up on. All positives, really, from the day from the Leicestershire side as Tom Scriven comes into bowl again and Hogborn times it nicely down to long on, but Leicestershire are rushing round trying to get these overs in before the cutoff. Somerset not much interest in throwing the bat in the last few overs. Scriven in a world. Jack Brooks does throw the bat and it goes up and it's dropped. That short third man, would you believe it, by Rishi Patel. Everything he's touched today has gone in the middle of his hands, apart from the one that didn't bounce. Shame. Jack Brooks did come down the wicket, but he's not on strike anymore. They've got a single. Ogborn is swinging away to the leg side, straight to deep mid wicket. And Aaron Lilly, just the single so far in the first three balls of this over. What's the penalty if they go over the... Um, I think you have to bowl with an extra man in the ring. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which not, I don't not think a huge hardship. Make much difference at this point in time, but I'm sure Scriven won't want to do that as Brooks comes down again and how that has missed the leg stump. Tom Scriven's got his hands on his head. He's looking for his first wicket of the afternoon. He's jogging back once more. Brooks twisting his bat and tapping away. Looking to put back to ball and he goes to the leg side again and clubs away on the leg side and it bounces. One bounce, four runs. Jack Brooks gets a four, taking the score to 208 and his personal score to 11. One ball left for Tom Scriven in this over to try and get the final wicket of the innings. Past umpire Mustard, wide of the crease and bowls and clubbed down the ground by Jack Brooks. That's going to go all the way for six. It does into the sight screen. I'm sure he'll be talking about that one for the next few weeks. It was a nice stroke. It was. Yeah, he, he cleared the left leg and swung through the line. And a powerful blow. It can happen at the end when you're rushing round and you're not taking your time to concentrate on what you're bowling. You give a few freebies away that aren't really you don't really deserve, you know, Scriven's figures now looking slightly different to what they were. They're still good, but probably deserved a bit better than, than what he's had in the last few overs. Right, Hendricks to bowl his final over. He's bowling to Alfie Ogborn, he's there in bowls, and Ogborn oh, <laughs> nearly hits his batting partner as he smashes that down the ground, where it's uh, fielded by Rowan Walker down below. A single is taken. Alfie Ogborn moves on to eight, 215 for nine. The margin at the moment is 55, uh, 54, 54, 54 to tie, 55 to win. Hendricks to Brooks, Brooks swings and misses <laughs> and didn't anyone get anywhere near that slower ball from Buren Hendricks. Very well, very well disguised. disguised. Probably not easy to see when you're looking at the sky. <laughs> And uh, Hendricks just jogging back to his mark, Lewis Hill. I'm not sure what Lewis Hill is saying to him. Hit the stumps. Yeah. Full and straight. Fast Yorker would do the, do the trick. Hendricks in, bowls to Brooks, who swings mightily at another pace off delivery from Hendricks. Makes where, no contact. Where does Somerset go from here for the rest of the competition, <laughs> you think? A few youngsters come in, more well, we youngsters, ha but... We haven't actually, we've got, I mean, there's... there's
215 for nine Somerset. It is almost all over Leicestershire within sight of their third victory in four games. Really good disciplined bowling led by the South Africans, Buren Hendricks and uh, Vian Mulder. Three wickets apiece for them. A couple of wickets late on for Roman Walker as well. 53 now needed by the visitors by Somerset, but they have just eight balls left to get those run so it looks as though foxes are pretty much over the line here at a, a delighted and sun-baked upton steel county ground here comes hendrix he's bowling to brooks oh and <laughs> that just misses the off stump as brooks goes for another big swing i think jack brooks has probably had enough of this now He's got 19 to his name, which I think is his highest score in um, List A cricket. Yes, his previous highest you, is 10 not out. He's, he's a better batsman than that. First class century to his name, of course. Wow. Hendricks in and bowls to Brooks, who swings this down the ground, but Lewis Hill will cut it off just inside the... Uh, the boundary and they come through for a single that's the end of the penultimate over and uh, Ned Eckersley will uh, talk us through the final over with Somerset on 218 for nine still 51 runs adrift on yeah, Leicester's 260. Yeah it's going to be bowled by Tom Scriven from the Bennett end. <laughs> There is 52 runs required, but it's whether Scriven can get his first wicket of the day. It's what he'll be looking for to finish off what has been a very professional, and a very complete performance from the Leicestershire Foxes in their first home game of the Royal London One Day Cup. He comes in and bowls, and Brooks swings away again. Good bat speed, but not the contact out to deep mid wicket. And Lily returns the ball into the bowler, just going through the last few balls, the dying embers of this game. Ogborn started with the ball and swings with the bat and doesn't get hold of this one. Slower ball again. They've really used the slower balls very well in the second innings here. Reading the conditions, changing the pace, changing their lengths, making it very difficult for these Somerset batters, especially the lower order. Scriven once more bowls and swung away into the square leg region. Again, finding the fielder. Can only cross for the one run. <laughs> For Somerset listeners' benefit, I'm going to be talking to Director of Cricket, Andy Hurry, at the close of play. Scriven comes in, hard. three balls to go, and Jack Brooks swings away into the leg side and will pick up another boundary. Rattles into the cinch advertising board. As Jack Brooks moves on to 25 not out from 16 balls, and Leicestershire rather gifting them some free runs towards the end here, just to take a little bit of gloss off what's been a, a good performance but definitely deserved winners Jack Brooks teapot back rested on his shoulder looking for maybe a couple more boundaries to finish off his day it's a short ball and he swings hard doesn't make contact but it's the right idea it's been an entertaining cameo from Jack Brooks. Could have done with this a bit earlier from a few of their top order, but the final ball of the 50 overs is going to be bowled. Leicestershire are going to win this match by how many? We'll find out now as it bowls and it goes over the offside and caught by Fian Mulder. Scriven does get his wicket. He's deserved that. And Somerset 
have finished their 50 overs of 224 all out. Leicestershire win by 46 runs. 45. 45 runs, you're right. <laughs> well, Somerset have been well beaten. They, they bowled pretty well uh, to restrict Leicestershire to 269, but they've always been behind the eight ball with, with the bat. Only Matt Renshaw with 55 from 63 deliveries in the half hours, and George Barnard who made 46 from 68 with just four forms and a pretty painstaking effort offering much of a challenge to the uh, Leicestershire bowlers, who bowled, I thought, pretty well, and Leicestershire outfielded Somerset as well. I think that was the other big difference between the two sides. With the ball, Casey Aldridge bowled really well up front, finished with three for 40 in his 10 overs, two for Jack Brooks for 38, one for Ben Green, and uh, Alfie Ogborn, his best figures in this day cricket, and only his second appearance, Three for 49, bowled particularly well when he was brought back in uh, mid innings, but um, not much comfort in that performance for Somerset. They've been well beaten. <laughs> and Leicestershire Foxes leave the field with a very professional win under their belt, led by Louis Kimber with his first List A 100. A thoroughly well-deserved third win from four for the Foxes. Somerset lose their fourth game in a row. Leicestershire will be back on Sunday to face Warwickshire, looking to take another step towards the quarterfinals. Yes, yeah, should be a good crowd as well. Family fun day, just a pound to get in, basically, so more or less free. Uh, just a, a token quid to get in. All sorts of attractions, including wild animals, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> the to be an indoor centre, so should be hinting bigger for two. And uh, potential, as Ed said, for a fourth win in five games, getting close to the knockout stage. It's a stage competition in one-day cricket. Leicestershire have not reached for a few years. Uh, Sodvik, a great young side, and uh, but that's the more in terms of the context of the game. There's Oshman on their part. And Gibson, who's made his particular to Ned Slips, enjoyed it. He was his first one on the first of quite a few. Foul from the Gibson's group hit in the very evening.